PKA 575 with our guest Destiny Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Blue Chew, Feels CBD, Smart Mouth, Lock and Load, the best cum pills in existence, and hats and scarves. No more sweaters, guys. Sorry. Only hats and scarves left. So if you want that, go down below, click the link, and all that good stuff. Destiny, Destiny. it's been a bit. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? So, hey, did the Twitch thing turn? Did you get banned from Twitch like ages ago? Did they ever like come to their senses on that? First of all, Twitch doesn't. Twitch is a large bureaucrat. It's like the Matrix. It doesn't come to its senses. There's like <laughs> disconnected bureaucratic entities that do what they do. And yeah, I don't have any contacts or anybody there. I just I communicate through emails, just like any random two viewer Andy would. So I like Twitch that 10 sucks. years ago when you'd be like, hey, fuzzy otter balls. What do you think? <laughs> it's definitely changed. But I mean, it's like this is kind of like the, the, the capitalist world is what happens. You grow on edgy shit. And then as you get wider, you want to appeal to broader audiences and you want to capture more sponsors so you always kind of like mellow the fuck out you know yeah one of the very top guys at twitch he might not work there anymore for all i know he's retired early but he was i did this um march madness commentary showdown do you remember this at all from like a decade ago yeah uh anyway one of the top guys at twitch did very well in it so i knew a guy at one point (laughs) when it was still justin tv (laughs) <laughs> and into twitch but yeah i yeah. met those guys or, or did you there's an asian guy right mm-hmm. was he mm-hmm. justin yes oh told me back owned. when there was I'm the original sure. like three or four t like the c-level guys would just like hang out at events and stuff because yeah it wasn't like a huge company or anything right he yeah. had like somehow he he found uh, a way to make a rooftop party he found a place in a rooftop party that was even cooler than the rooftop he like found a rooftop for the rooftop and you had to like walk <laughs> upstairs to get to him I might have been there. I, we might have been at the same party. Is that hey, yeah, wait, how long ago was this? Did we take Fucking, a picture I, where we both jumped at the same time in an effort to appear taller? It's <laughs> possible. Yeah. I won. I think you did, yeah. Dude, like all, Almost all the pictures I have with you two, you guys are doing your t- last second tippy toes thing. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't say that now. Not like I, this. I've been so, training box like, jumps. Photo, I'm like, but I'm taller than Woody. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not in this picture. I'm transitioning all my training to box jumps. <laughs> won't be outdone. Um, I'm adding weight to my squats. No one cares. I'll end it there. But no knee pain, more weight. I'm happy. Next topic. Good. Good. I know. I think. I think we've heard from our our lovely listeners. They want to hear an hour of fitness discussion. No, they, <laughs> they oh my god. Also, I've started I playing mean, Tarkov again. It's fun. That's all. Tarkov and fitness for won't four talk hours. about it. Refuse. <laughs> Have you guys been torturing your audiences with gym shit? A yeah. Bit. Do, you, do you not know what yeah. went on with Kyle? Kyle I lied. Do, yeah. He his weight is jacked as hell. Yeah, I started getting into gym stuff a lot like two or three months ago. So my audience has been getting a lot of it too. Just just hearing you bring that up, there are people of my audience that have either already tuned out Bing! or already triggered even hearing it come up as a topic. So like, oh God, no. No, I feel so like we funny. Don't doing that. You don't have to do too much of that. It's funny though that like Destiny, it actually is organic now. He's like, yeah, I've been getting into the, the fitness side of it. <laughs> Are you like doing any lifting on stream or just like sharing? Oh out? God, no! I'm sure Kyle knows that you. This is like people will backseat the fuck out of everything you do, no matter Dude. what the fuck you do for anything. No lift is good. Like you'll you'll see guys on on Reddit. Some guy will be pulling, you know, like 800 pounds, mm-hmm. and there'll be a guy on Reddit. His form is actually really bad. Like the mm-hmm. lower back is a little bit too curved. But and it's like, dude, are you serious right now? Dude, yeah. I lifted twice on stream. And Big mistake. T- no, it was <laughs> a really good experience. So oh. first of all. Me, this is practically fitness talk. In my head, I'm like, they're all going to think I don't overhead press enough. Absolutely zero people gave a fuck about how much weight was on the bar. And uh, the few that did comment on form actually had uh, useful feedback that I took to heart. Oh, and, that's good. That's cool. Yeah. So, it, uh, and I actually got a lot of positive feedback on like, I don't know. I, I get great on this wonderful, wonderful curve, which is like they're amazed that I can move at all at my yeah. age. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. The expectations are low now. enough. Yeah. yeah, for 48, <laughs> he can do a pull up. That like, guy's yeah. from the 70s. <laughs> I am from the early <laughs> from 70s. The 70s. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, that might be why that made you, you lucked to out me. Because I would, I can't imagine lifting on stream. Like, I would be like, so concerned with like how fat I looked from different angles that I, I wasn't used to trying shirt. to cover. It'd be like, like the, even if I was having a monster bench, they'd be like, haha, look how his workout shirt clings to his fat belly. <laughs> 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 it's like, shut up. You know, so, you know the one thing that I got to get under my already, skin you just a little. Started. <laughs> I see people say, <laughs> I see people say like, 
oh yeah i used to ego lift but i'm past that now and it's like yeah you used to ego lift which is to lift like as much as you can because you liked having weight on the bar back when you weren't as strong you might say yeah back when i was benching like one 75 i was ego lifting but now that i'm at 275 i don't care what anyone thinks of course you don't you jack fucking question. monster do we need to do we need to do an, another hour-long podcast during the week that's just fitness talk <laughs> should we change topics is that what I'm no saying? no I'm, i was seriously <laughs> asking no I, I wanted to do an hour-long podcast about fitness talk we should make it a live stream but, where we all lift in split screens well that's ridiculous what are we gonna do i'm, I'm going to go to the gym mm -hmm. yes please make sure there's hotties there I'll, 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 okay, that won't be awkward at all. This has sounded like more like an episode of uh, Impractical Jokers now. I feel like you're judging. Excellent show. Love that show. I love that show. It's so like it's hard to make me really cringe, but that show will do it. That show will do it. Like yeah. like somehow it seems like all of their sisters are down for like the gags. So like there's one where like the guy is presenting a video to sell some made up nonsense to a group mm -hmm. of people. His sister is an actress in that video unbeknownst to him and she's being groped pretty overtly by one of his friends yeah, <laughs> and he's having to keep a, he, he's like literally like groping her tits mm -hmm. and, the, and then the other one's sister is having her ass like basically massaged while she stands by his by the other two friends and they're having like keep it cool while they i don't know sell mm -hmm. some nonsense to like some nonsense people i love that show it's so yeah, cool. it's I want hilarious to see show. This show they do it you've never seen it woody no, oh. it, it's where right, so would it be on TV? True, it's it's uh, on true. It's the only show on True TV, and it's also on uh, Disney Plus. I think it is. It's like a oh, prank show, and except like they do what all those YouTube pranksters got wrong. Because remember when pranks were a big thing on YouTube? It'd be like, hey, I'm gonna prank these people by giving them PTSD and scaring the shit out of them. And it's like you're not pranking people; you're just harassing people. Watch yeah, me steal an obviously violent dude's phone. <laughs> yeah, like these guys do the opposite, where it's like. They're they're being funny, but they're making themselves and each other the idiot asshole. So they're mm -hmm. like making people laugh, not like making people wildly like, oh my god, is this guy about and, to assault. And it's it's a game. So there, so two of the guys are usually behind the scenes with laptops and microphones, mm -hmm. and they have earpieces in, and they're torturing the other two. Like, all right, now you got to do this. Now I I, you got to do that. I think and I've if seen they, clips of it. If they fail, then they fail that challenge. And if you fail enough challenges, you fail the whole show. If you fail the whole show, they pick a t horrible thing for you to have to do. Like, one, at, at one point, the guy's punishment was his sister got legally married to one of his friends. And they went to the courthouse and got the documents <laughs> printed and showed the documents <laughs> with their full names on them. And then had a full church wedding in front of all their families. Yeah, now if you while, go, like, he was, <laughs> while he was bound and gagged to one of those Hannibal Lecter stretchers. Uh, as uh, as the best man, that was a good one. They, they've had a lot of good punishment, like yeah, and they they do a good job of tailoring it to the individual, like Murr, the bald one. They make him go skydiving as a punishment, which for like Woody would be like awesome. Uh, free skydiving game. Yeah, don't this, throw me in the It's like pad. his number one fear Fire apparently, pad. where he's like openly like crying on on the show, like you can't make me go. Really, you we're joking, right? We're joking. <laughs> <laughs> then they make him jump out of there, and he's like openly weeping the whole time. It's it's they made each other get My tattoos. That was the worst punishment I've ever seen. Mm -mm. Three of them lost, and so one guy got to pick tattoos for all the other ones. On one guy's thigh, this guy picked a, a, a hyper-realistic portrait of Jaden Smith at about nine years old. <laughs> and it's the size of most of his thigh. And so yeah. he's just got a huge, very realistic Jaden Smith face right there. And it's like, and that's a, that's Is it a rough, real, it's a real yeah. tattoo. Yeah. It, you see it all the time. Like, you know, because they, they get, they just robe a lot. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. and I need they, to see more of this show. And very few of them are, are, are like in good enough shape to the one of them has like that particular kind of fatness where it's only belly. Like normal chest, oh, arms, legs, thighs, ass, only belly. Not even love handles, just the big belly. He's and eating so like cake or pastry in every scene. That he, guy he from um, Trailer Park Boys had some of that. Yep. Yeah. Randy. A Randy body type. Yeah. Uh, mine is, I absolutely do that. I will not get, I'll get love handles, but I don't gain any weight on my like arms, my chest, kind of my legs, but not really. But then I just have a belly. My dad was the I exact gain same it way. everywhere. It and it, yeah. it's probably the preferable way to do it. But I'll tell you, you can gain 20 pounds and lie to yourself that you yeah. can. 
Oh, you can I, I don't know. I, I, I was, I was kind of envious of the guys that gain you gain fat. 100 and lie to yourself. There's no limit to that. Because <laughs> if you gain it everywhere, I mean, like, you can fill out, like, okayly, so you look like an adult male or whatever. But if you mm-hmm. have no muscle and you gain all your weight in your belly, you will look like a stick skeleton. But yeah. you will still weigh more than you should for the amount of muscle you have. So you have the Pregnant definition of skinny skeleton. fat. You are yeah. skinny all over your body. You're weak, but you got this big belly. It like, works oh, on camera. Yeah, man, I guess, yeah. As long as your posture is okay, you suck it in. <laughs> I, I, was talking yeah, to Derek, your I was talking to Derek about diet today, and mm. I, I'm about to start that new protocol. And, and he was like, yeah, you know how to do this. You just start with the base calories and add 100 a week. And I'm thinking, like, can I just start with, like, a shit ton? What if I just started with, like, 4,000 calories a day? That's what I really want to do. I, I want to I, I want to try, attempt that, but I, I guess I won't. I guess try it's crazy. it. Just like, no, it's, you're, you're experimenting. You're learning best ways to optimize yourself. I just want to see where you go. Like it, it, you might just get jacked and it'd be awesome. I'm pretty sure if I did that, I'd just go into water buffalo mode. And oh, I'm going into water buffalo mode. Yeah, that's the, that's that's the goal. Yeah, no. yeah. Like, like like I'm gonna gain 30 pounds by the time uh, like you can February comes have around. that goal all to yourself. I, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna 30 awesome. pounds. That's going to be a blast, man. Have fun. No, it's not going to be a blast. You know what my diet is. Oh, yeah. You clean bulk. Yeah. I'm eating rice and, and lean ground beef and peppers and spinach and shit. That's so depressing. It's because like you hear 4,000 calories a day and you're like, I'm, I'm in. And then you see <laughs> what you're eating to get to 4,000 and it's a chore. It's horrific. I'm going to I've never eaten that many. I've eaten 3,600 a day consistently. Um, that's um, that's like two pounds of beef a day or something. <laughs> yeah, I probably do two thousand calories a day. You literally double me. It's it's real hard. I'm gonna try to split it up into a lot of meals that this time. That that's one thing I'm gonna do for sure. Is instead of doing four meals in a shake, do like six to seven meals in a shake. Um, it's the same amount of cooking. I just split it into smaller bowls, right? So it just seems harder to manage. I got those little plastic disposable like uh, those like, like Pyrex bowls. ones or whatever. No, I got cheap ones that I, I fuck the environment. I'm gonna be dead in twenty thirty years. That's great. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna die in a double wide casket <laughs> for your fucking delts. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. eat a lot of Paul Bears, and they're all gonna be Jack. <laughs> be like like Rich Piana. Yeah, what was his, did he have all Jack Paul Bears? He must have had to, right? Yeah, um, like twelve. So, them. what are your goals, Kyle? You're looking to get big. You're looking yeah, to get what, strong. You know, like, or you're like, looking. Never strong. I don't give a fuck about strong. Honestly, okay. if like um, <laughs> if I could stick to the same weights forever, I'd well, be you've fine. told me before that you had weight, like uh, target I mean, like, weights. Yeah, because I'm an immature fuck, right? So I'm like, we're cool if I can live like a thousand pounds, right? Like, yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, it would. But It'd I'm probably neat, not but... going to devote myself to like the goal of bench pressing mm-hmm. 500 pounds because mm-hmm. the more likely outcome is that I tear a pack or something and never weight lift again. <laughs> so um, probably just going to go easy on that. The goal is to gain as much uh, lean tissue in the next, I don't know how many months as possible. So just kind of micromanage every moment of every day toward gaining muscle as far as diet supplementation and everything I do for the next, I don't know how long, a minimum of a minimum of five months, but I might go 10 months, like like I'm just bulking. Just um, get all the way to Halloween, and then you can be any costume you want. I could be the blob at Halloween, or um, <laughs> or, I could, <laughs> or I could pull back a little early and start the cut like three months before that in like July or something, mm-hmm. and, uh, and be pretty fucking sickly ripped by, uh, by Halloween next year. But Do you no, have any just, weights that big. you're willing to say out loud? I've got a few. Uh, what do you mean, like least. lists? Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll, I'll go. I can do it really quick. I would really love to overhead press 135, two big boy plates on the side. I'd like to bench press 225. That's four plates. And I'd like to deadlift 315. Yeah. Um, You'll get those. I think. I, I guess I have similar goals, but like slightly loftier. Um, I, 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 like yeah, the overhead, I, so. I, I like the overhead press stuff. Um, two plates it always looks cool. Man, a, a 225 overhead press would be monstrous. It um, would be, but, but forget that because mm-hmm. that's that's that is nonsense. Um, I don't know. A big bench would be cool. Three plates would be uh, is pretty impressive. I yeah, know. it's three two twenty five overhead yeah. press. I can, you'd be I a can monster. Do three plates. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I have any weight goals really. Now that I think about it, because I just don't give a fuck. Like I don't care what it looks like to anybody else. Um, I, I if anything, I wish if I could wave a magic wand, I would be bench pressing one plate for like my workout so that it's so safe that if I drop it, I'm okay. Like 
having mm-hmm. to put all that weight on is just dangerous and bad for your joints and ligaments and stuff. And I'm just but you get at a point where like you don't need to ego. Like I don't care what anybody thinks. I strap on 90 pounds when I do dips, and no one has, <laughs> their opinion can be what. It Actually, will that's be. what I do care because like <laughs> I, I like to do my dips right after a normal person has done dips because. <laughs> Because they they're just doing their body weight, and then I'm mm-hmm. like kachunk. I like put my belt of weights on. Oh Dips. man, that's like the that's like when you're working out of the rack, you're squatting or deadlifting or something, and you finish your thing, and someone's like, "Can I go after you?" And you're like, "Yeah, sure." It's like, "Do you want me to take these off?" It's like, "No, no, I'll warm up." It's like, "Oh, <laughs> okay, <dude. laughs> all right, man." The, we should get off it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I wanted to know. Uh, I've added ten pounds <laughs> to my dips, <laughs> and earlier at the start of this year. I needed assistance bands to do dips. My body weight was too much for me. Now I'm adding weight to it, and it's a big uh, point of pride for me. Nice. Yeah, very nice. nice. And, and, and the I, best I wanted... part is it's a combination of you losing fat and gaining muscle that's gotten you there. It's, I it's prefer to think all muscle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely <laughs> harder to build muscle than it is to lose fat. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> destiny, so what destiny. are your, your goals in there? You're just trying to lose weight or get stronger or... Um, I, actually fitness. getting stronger. Um, I've always been like a, like a video game fucking nerd mm-hmm. and I've kind of like picked up lifting and like dropped it. The problem is traveling would kill me in the past because if I travel for two weeks, like I'm not lifting and it's just, it fucks me everything. But like this, these past, like I'd say like two to three months, I've taken it like really seriously. And, nice. um, it's really cool to like see your body and like have like some actual masculine features as embarrassing as I sound because I was like a flat, whole, and I'm still like a pretty small person but like now when I look in the mirror I'm like holy shit I'm actually like a man like I have like boobs and I've got like some arms and actually have like a little bit of feeling to them and shit and my obviously my fiance like super notices a difference in stuff um yeah, so it's a I, good feeling <laughs> My yeah, fiance sure. super notices the difference in stuff. But... Oh yeah, true. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the cloud program, but it's here. No, I mean, no, it was, and now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, th- I really appreciate that. And then, like, even just like feeling your body, my posture, like, is perfect now, which was funny because I, I go to like live debate events sometimes. So you know, I kind of have the I'm normally like sitting like this, like hunched yeah. over and stuff. But you know, now I'm like a you know, oh, seated overhead press. You know, I, I would sit like this for this. You know, I do this for like two hours, mm-hmm. and it's no problem. Um, feeling all of your like individual muscles is cool. Like sometimes when I'm in bed, I'll still like, oh, like I can feel like my that's my lat, this is my posture. That, like feeling the muscles is cool. Like I don't know, I super enjoy it. That's been a lot of fun for me. So just like getting stronger, being healthier. Mm-hmm. Like you have like all this faculty in your body that uh, some people, a lot of people, neglect for their whole lives. So the idea mm-hmm. of like building that and working on that is just really cool. So I've enjoyed all that. It was a lot of fun for me. It's got to be like the best hobby to have, just to pick up. Like it's so productive <clears throat> in so many ways. If you can do it, it's a lot. It makes you more mindful of a lot of other things, I guess. So, like, I'm more careful in real life, like, moving stuff. Like, I'm not going to be a dumb fuck who reaches and picks up a box and just hangs it off my fucking lower back because I move mm-hmm. stuff around the house. Um, yeah, just in, in general. And then you're a little bit more conscientious of, like, what you eat. You know, like, what's the difference between a simple carb and a complex? Or, like, just, like, little things you'll pick up as you, like, lift more. And all, all of I those like, things are, like, nice to me. Yeah? I like frightening small children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's- that's you more really, the screaming and the threats than the body type, though. You can really put a scare into a child if you put your mind to it. True. I'm sure you could. I don't know if you need muscles for that, but they don't forget I guess that it depends thing. on how you're trying to scare. You're just like yeah. rattling the cage at a local middle school. <laughs> 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 Go over here, kids. Yeah, I've, I have a question, and because I, I actually watched your video. Oh, man. All of our audience is going to hate us for this. <laughs> um, I, so I watched your, like, your coming out video, Kyle. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of so. I'm curious, do you ever worry that once you start, um, it's going to be like, I need more and more and more of this because oh, I'm like addicted yeah. to the you grind. Get body dysmorphia even and, and it feed into that. And mm-hmm. it could be this sort of uh, never ending cycle. Um, it, it puts me in a weird spot to like, like prove to people that that's not going to be the case. I, I feel like I have to stop being like, dude, I look fucking amazing. You don't even fucking know. You don't think mm-hmm. I know? I know. Like mm-hmm. I like it, I get pushed into that corner, but it's like, um, no, I, I I get it. Like like I don't want to be like one of those freakishly big dudes at all. Like like Taylor always talks about barreling through hallways or whatever, and everyone yeah. having to like like just run away or whatever. I don't want any of that nonsense. I watched um, the people whose diet models I'm copying and workout regimens I'm copying do look like that, but they should have stopped like eight years ago. That's the difference. <laughs> sure. Like they've been done. They're they're overcooked. Um, I I. There's a point where um, that I'm probably gonna be real close to by the, by next year where we're good. This is where we maintain. We 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 maintain right here with light exercise for the rest of mm-hmm. our life, and we just hold on to this, eat normal, and we don't need to do like any more 
silly bulking nonsense. Like, like I, I may be a year away from that or two years at the most, I think, because I don't want to be enormous. I really don't. I just okay. like being pretty big and fit. Something and that's like, what you think when you're a little bigger, like, mm. you know, a year from now, you might be like, I don't want to be enormous. And you are. I just want to be a little <laughs> bigger than this. Yeah. I mean, I see guys bigger than me. It's not like that, that don't look like freaks is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 like I, I, I certainly haven't gotten anywhere near that. that I, I that think thing. you should just become a freak. Just <laughs> become a freak. Just like I go full bore, get weird with it. I was looking at a guy who was only a little stronger than me, but he looked way thicker. Like he was bigger in the waist. And like, I didn't envy what he looked like. Yeah. You are fortunate. I think like. You have a really narrow. What what size pants do you wear? Like twenty eight or something? Twenty eight. Yeah. yeah. Twenty eight. When I wear right, children's when I, clothing, people. These are children's sizes. These aren't man clothes. Twenty eight. This is. I'm in a, this, I'm in a thirty two right now, or thirty two, thirty three, somewhere in there. All like, right. Like, 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 like eighth grade pants. <laughs> <laughs> twenty twenty eight is when I'm at a hundred and like eighty pounds. Like like I'm hundred ninety five right now. I posted a picture of me on Twitter. And I'm wearing size 34, and everyone roasted me because my pants don't fit. I haven't bought smaller pants because Trail Mix is delicious, and they might fit again someday. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, I probably belong in like a 32 or maybe even a 31. I, but what I'm I thought 34, was so, so funny about that picture is like, obviously, you're wearing these giant pants to like show the the progress you've made and stuff. No, they're literally the pants that I've owned for like 12 days in a row now. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm just ridiculous. Well, just just ta- Taylor, Taylor, this is my friend Woody. <laughs> this is my friend Woody Taylor. He's very cheap. <laughs> that's okay. That's true. Those but, but what boy say? jeans are going nowhere. I was going to say the, the size of those pants on you and the fact you're like holding like a big handful of them to keep them up and you're like jacked, ripped body. I was like, my first thought was like, Woody looks like a really formidable homeless person. <laughs> like, like, like he could handle himself on the streets. He's got, you know, abs, great cheese he on. First he, dibs at the donut dumpster. Right? <laughs> like he's, no one I, dares stop you. I cut in line at the soup kitchen. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get um, your macros. Yeah, you're cutting over and over and over. Um, what you should do is get like some of those. Look, make fun if you want, but like get get pants that have like an elastic waistband, right? Because like like as I go through this, like. I stop wearing button up jeans and switch to like my pajama jeans and like my like Adidas track pants and shit like that because my weight is fluctuating five pounds a week and shit like that. Like you've that, been off regular jeans for that, years, right? That picture, by the way, was from I've seven got days jeans. ago, and I'm still wearing those pants right now on this show. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. Well, they're way too big on you, man. <laughs> if, 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 huge. if I if I have to be around people that might judge pajama jeans, I certainly put on fucking normal jeans. If I, if I, <laughs> but but if I'm going to the fucking gas station, yeah, I'm wearing my goddamn pajama jeans. I don't care. It's time for me to put on clean clothes, really. Yeah, it's pro- probably so. All right, we got to stop the fitness talk. Again, yeah, okay. I asked you if you wanted to do an hour-long extra podcast every week called Fit Talk with with Taylor and friends or whatever. Like, 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 Ooh, like, I like uh, that branding. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Taylor and friends. And, we'll and like, have, all have you him. on the front, like arms crossed, like aha, and then like really tiny in the background. Me and me and really like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Taylor. That branding is hilarious to me. And like, who who, who fucking cares, right? Yeah. Like, 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 like if a new viewer found it, they'd be like, so is Taylor like the boss or like? Yes. <laughs> oh, Taylor, please be the boss and take all the feedback anytime there's a problem. But he's but he's the most overweight guy on the fitness show. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he the salami guy? <laughs> he's the guy who has, you know, we'll say cholesterol issues. You two can <laughs> over. I happily I do told- a fitness a fitness podcast for an hour every week. We have to stop the fitness talk. They don't like the fitness talk. We got Destiny here. We just talk about video games and yeah. internet yeah. drama. I told my and, wife and, and about politics. your cheese advent calendar, and she loved the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I love wiped that cheese advent calendar out. Did your by... wife get you a second one? No, but like by the eleventh, it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just wolfed through that. So yeah, I mean, I, I'd never had an advent calendar growing up or any of those things, and I never considered they put like treats and stuff other than than chocolate in it. So that was neat. Oh, I, I bet they have like a deli meat one too. I wish you'd buy that. We, that my wife, keep. always does them, and they're typically toys. Like a Harry Potter one uh, or a Lego one or something. Yeah. I didn't know that. <sighs> Damn. So like 25 extra days of terrible gifts. Yeah, but it, it, I don't, if you're a kid, it sort of keeps Christmas front and center. It's fun. That's you guys, true. Uh, you guys 
get anything fancy for your loved ones this year for Christmas? Any uh, any special holiday gifts? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I, I, um, my, I got my wife one thing that is a little hit or miss. I don't know. So she has been absolutely consumed by murder lately. Maybe I should be on. <laughs> maybe I should defend <laughs> myself. But but like every time I catch her watching TV, it's some sort of murder. Like, like true crime entry yeah. true crimes an example but she's like exhausted all the content that you've heard of and now she's listening to like the drunk women murder podcast and shit like that <laughs> which apparently they're fantastic i haven't heard them yet but she uh identifies with the girls on it anyway so i bought her this subscription to a like solve your murder type thing that will arrive on christmas morning and new clues come in the mail on a regular basis and she's meant to sort of decode the who done it sort of clue type thing this will be a grand slam or a strikeout i'm pretty sure but that's the one thing i thought of that like she would never get herself i think that's a really really great gift like it's funny you mentioned that someone gave a couple of those to my wife and we did one together just the two of us like six weeks ago or so uh -huh. and it is fun like it's just a bunch it's like it comes in a manila envelope and like all the the character profiles and like the the stock actors and you have to read all their their dossiers and try and put the pieces together and like if thankfully we didn't have to like use help but like if you can't figure it out they have links like hey idiot go here <laughs> and we'll and we'll tell you who stole the this green is how I do in rooms. the beginning yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think she'll like that you, you guys can do it together it was fun it, it took like i don't know i'm sure there's a million different brands of them but it took like two and a half hours to, to read through everything. I think that everything. this one, it's a six month subscription. And if I understand right, it trickles in over the next half year, like the clues. And um, I, I I just saw it. I was like, this the kind of thing she might dig. Bought yeah. It. yeah. It is kind of like an escape room. I wish those were more fun. How much was yours? Do you know? No, I have no idea. Oh, okay. I think my, my wife either bought it or one of her friends gave it to her. I don't know how she got them. Or just, it's like $185, so it should be more than just a couple of emails or something. Yeah, it should yeah, be cool. you yeah. hope so. If, if a bloody fucking knife doesn't show up, I'm going to be disappointed. You're right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, it sounds has, pretty neat. It has I, uh, like pictures of dead people. I get people gift cards. That's the way I, that's why I'm, that's why I've been rolling for a while now. You get gift cards. Amazon? Maybe. <laughs> uh, no, I personalize the gift cards because that's I, the part where I put thought in. You re gift. <laughs> I re gift gift cards. I got this for giving blood here. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, they're ten dollars. You'll find out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's seven dollars and twelve cents on this. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> uh, I was talking. Um, Derek and I were going back and forth a little bit today. He was talking mm, about um, this is not fitness talk. I prop. This is like okay. COVID talk, if anything. Okay. But um, I think they have access to this thing where, like, he said that, like, if um, if I was exposed to like COVID or something, like 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 you know, during this bulk I'm about to do, you know, that'd be pretty pretty shitty. They have this thing where they'll send a nurse to my house and like run an IV of um, some COVID uh, drugs or something like that and vitamin C and shit. It's pretty cool. I don't Did know how we that look works. at look at online? Like there was a whole like delivery service oh. for these where it was like, get this if you're hungover as can be. Get this if you yeah you know, like have vitamin D deficiency and you're depressed. Yeah, I think it's something similar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. I don't I think those came with those. a nurse. I think those would like do it at home. I'm not fucking hitting a fucking artery, a vein or anything. Like, I'm not doing that. It comes yourself. with a nurse. You could no. do it. I guess it is. I guess it is a little harder than your intramuscular injection. Yeah, see, right? I'm one of those people that gets like lightheaded when I get blood. I can't be doing that. That's interesting. Yeah, like like something about like stabbing me there. Like like it's not even seeing the blood or anything. It, it's it, I don't like them sticking that needle into my fucking vein. It's always shocking how fast your blood comes out. Real and like fast. fills up those tubes. Like oh, I remember as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Being like, oh, you're taking another tube, huh? And how <laughs> yellow it is. When <laughs> pre surgery? You need to go to the doctor. Pre surgery, I like the IV. Like I am like Pavlog's dog associating it with the is it fentanyl? What is it they give you? I'm not sure. Propofol? Whatever it is, I'm a big fucking fan of taking the edge off you know like <laughs> and now i do like drug seeking behavior i've talked about this before but it's like yeah god <laughs> i'm so nervous <laughs> anyone, anyone else here anyone else scared about this thing <laughs> so uh yeah 
that, but yeah, the IV doesn't scare me at all. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's the, it's it's it hurts a little, but there's like something that makes me queasy about them like sticking it in there. Like I, I I've got to get do blood work soon, and I'm not looking forward to it. They only it, take a tiny bit when you're doing. They take blood eight work, right? vials, eight of them, huh? At least it's so many vials. It's like a tray of fucking. They vials. need to get more fucking efficient. I have so many people that like I help with fitness stuff that and, and I'll be like, hey, man, you really should get on TRT, though. You know, you're you're 39. Like you've got like some of the symptoms like you should do in the. Oh, but those needles. I'm so, All right, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the needles. And well, you can do uh, the oral stuff, right? Or that doesn't work. Good, nah, it, 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 you, you, you want to inject testosterone if you're replacing testosterone. And yeah. you want to do it with a needle. Like, 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 obviously, I don't have any experience with those gels or the patches, but we've talked about that before. How Derek has. Orals in particular, like your digestive system. I don't know. I'm going to foul this up, but like kidneys or liver or something. Kidneys, you liver. don't want to stress them in uh, ways that you don't have when, to with the needle. Yeah, when people do oral steroids, they're doing them as like uh, a little cherry on top to like a testosterone base, and they do them for four to eight weeks, shit like that, because they are liver and kidney toxic almost. What always. about the creams? That well, that the like cream is, is people use the cream as a TRT alternative, like 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 some doctors will. Um, and Derek talked about that on the show about. I think he uh, he just thought it wasn't as effective because he can't really determine. Um, what the effect is going to be from individual to individual because you're smearing a cream rather than mm-hmm. fucking flicking a needle and getting exactly so many cc's. Do you injecting. put it on your balls? I think they put it on their gooch, actually. Yeah, oh, okay. something like that. I don't know. And balls ma- made sense, like quick. quick or, or maybe that's where the patch goes. It's something like that. Yeah. I don't like know. your taint? Is, where, where's your gooch? Exactly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Taint, taint and gooch, are, they intermingle, you know? All right. They're friends. I'm okay. going to have to shave. I guess. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 and then they put those pellets in you too. Just get a fucking needle. The needle doesn't hurt. But uh, a lot of people are afraid of giving a needle in your point. gooch sounds scary. Ah, it depends how far, how deep you go. Yeah, but there's any like, I go all the way. There's, all the way you're trying to get like a. Right are, into your aren't there like arteries and veins? Is my vas deferens there? I We're don't know. full of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you ever look on the inside of a person? There's all kind of shit. I, I used to ride bicycles a lot. And right in that tain area, there's a lot of shit. It's not good to sit on. Yeah. Well. I don't know how this came up, but um, so. it's not exactly fitness talk. I, it's, it's it's far too close. <laughs> we're circling around the, the fitness talk, even if we won't jump. That, to it. A bunch of people were like, you're going to talk about Tarkov on the show now. And I'm like, I dare not. No. <laughs> please, please. No, no, no. There's like eight. Yeah, of I am. Um... I watch Tarkov streams a lot. A lot of people. How's the wipe treating you? How's this going? Like, this is how I consume Tarkov now. Um, all right. All right, Kyle. I, I get your message. Yeah. No, I'm uh, not shutting you down. This is my way of telling you the wipe me well, treated me well. Um, oh, okay. did, did any of you guys watch any of the shows we talked about? The Witcher? Did you catch up on that at all? I finished Hawkeye. Yeah. I think that's it. Okay. I did not watch any. I recommend The Witcher to everybody listening. It, it, it turned out it was really fucking good. I had um, a Witcher question I didn't ask last time. Yeah. The first season of Witcher had some pretty good difficult to follow time travel for me fix that and yeah. made fun of it um they made fun of their own issue themselves yeah they, they like like there's a guy who's um criticizing the bard you know the guy he's like that one song the jumping back and forth through timelines i couldn't keep up and you <laughs> you really didn't even like you know say anything about it i was just supposed to know and he's just <laughs> it's like yeah if you haven't seen witcher the first season yet here's my advice it's very good. It's worth your time. However, it might be nice to do what I did, which is watch an episode, read the Wikipedia article on it. Two paragraphs, and you're like, ah, okay, okay. Because without that, it can take you a while to catch on that this is even the same person. Or that hmm. this t- sometimes the people look exactly the same, but it it's 40 years front or back. I might be yeah. getting that wrong. More uh, or less, sometimes yeah. there's like an adult and a child character and they don't make it super clear that that's the same person. You're just in different moments of time interacting with someone else who didn't change at all. It, it can be tricky to follow, but yep. worth it. Very minutes good. Minutes New season is great. Um, my, my complaints from this from season one were fixed. I'm not a book reader, so I don't care what they did with Jennifer's character. That's not mm. a spoiler to say. But um, CGI is better. A lot of monsters. Uh, they drink a bunch of those potions and shit. You get to meet more uh, uh, characters. 
because they set the stage for season three, which will probably be more of a action filled season. Is that but, is it based on a book or is it based on a game? I think the answer is yes. That's based. Okay. I think it's based on the book because I think the game makes some changes from the book and they leave some of the changes from the game and they go instead off of the book material. But I mean, if you're familiar with the game, you're going to recognize like 90 percent of the stuff. I think. Yeah, I've always heard it was a great game. Maybe I'll give it a go. I, I tried to play and for whatever reason, I couldn't get super into it, but um, it's probably just me. But I like the show. Really good. I hope Netflix lets it go to season three. That's a that's something they rarely do with good shows. Yeah. Well, they don't have a lot of good shows. Yeah, Mindhunters is great. Which one? Mindhunters. The FBI profiler show about the first FBI profilers learning what serial killers were and interviewing them oh. in prisons and stuff. Yeah, that, that show's all I right. I didn't like it. That was so good. I, I didn't get as into it as everybody else, apparently. Please. I just thought it was okay. The Please. only one that there's like that every single season has been awesome that I can remember is uh, Ozark. That's oh, a genuinely yeah. very good show. I like that one. But other than that, like, what is it? Someone I, I made the point I, last night that Ozark is the best TV show that is currently airing, and I think they're right. Uh, I think so. I like Heroes. No, is that what it's called? No, you're thinking, you're thinking of The Boys. The Boys, yeah, that is what I'm thinking of, uh, with Homelander. and. Such. Yeah. Um, no, I think Ozark's a better show. I think The Boys might entertain me more on a like minute-per-minute minute basis because it's a superhero show where they fuck. But, uh, but I think Ozark's a better show because you know lots yeah. of really strong acting and storylines. Uh-huh. Similar to Breaking Bad. I get the same vibes from it, obviously, because yeah. it's got a lot of similar themes. And last season ended with a huge cliffhanger. I think the new season mm-hmm. begins in January. I think I heard. You know it what better. I like that um, not every episode is a winner, but I always like Black Mirror. It's something like if they were to drop a Black Mirror season, I'd be very excited to get. I really talking. hated that Miley Cyrus uh, season. Miley Cyrus was in was she Black Mirror? In one episode. No, she was in one episode, but th- that whole season I didn't like. I don't remember. Yeah. I remember like the first season, the the one where the guy, where the like prime minister has to fuck, fuck a pig. pig. That's yeah. a tremendous one. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, it was great because it like it was exactly what would have happened. Everybody like let's get drunk and watch this idiot fuck a pig, and then as <laughs> soon as it gets real, everyone's like, oh, oh god, we're gonna, we're monsters. <laughs> and then, this is horrific. There's one where whole all society is run by like your social media score, and oh, like, yeah. you need popular people to like you. And I guess it's to the popular person's advantage to kind of dislike you or they like not give you the kudos you might want. And so there's this woman who's right on the edge, kind of begging to be liked by more popular people, and finds herself spiraling down and. I don't know. Something about it would just like it fucking sucks. It hurts. You can her pain was real that and made it a good episode. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where they like lost the plot in that show because like the the later seasons and episodes are just bad. Some of them are just not good. So I think I liked them a little more than you, but I do have to agree it, it wasn't as good. Did you see that the lady who uh, or the former cop that? Yes. M- mixed up the taser and the pistol. Uh, you know, it's anyone today. could make that mistake. Jeez. Any anyone <laughs> who's never touched a gun or a taser can make that mistake. <laughs> Who well, to be right to left. be fair, the tasers are very godlike. The ones that they use now, they're supposed to have them on different different parts of their body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, okay. like if you like, Glocks are not made of like metal. You don't have like a, a shiny new, brand new nineteen eleven, right? Like these are they, they feel like almost like toys sometimes. If you if you've never actually touched a Glock before, you don't touch the slide or whatever. It can feel like a toy. And the, but and the she tasers has. are the what? But she you said been. if you've never touched it, but she like you know, I, I I think you're making a strong point. If if what had happened was like someone was like, hey, go grab that gun, and they were like, in the box, and they're like, yeah, but don't show me now. Use it. Like like if that had happened, <laughs> but instead you got like a trained cop. Yeah. Um, now, I feel yeah, not- bad for it because what you know, I always go back to my sexist viewpoint. <laughs> like maybe she shouldn't have been a fucking cop anyway. But it has nothing she to do. with She clearly her sex. shouldn't have been a cop. It has nothing no. to do with her sex. Like like just watching that woman in court. Like I didn't feel like she needed to be a cop. She didn't. If if you can if you can make that mistake, you shouldn't be a cop. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think I'm tooting my own horn to say I wouldn't make that fucking mistake because I don't think any of us here would. Mm-hmm. Um, they weigh differently. They feel differently in your hand as long as you don't have gloves on. They're like, on the totally balance different. Is different. Yep. They're yeah, just say, the big colors. thing for the tasers is they're supposed to be on different parts of your body. Like yeah. the tasers are pulled from a different area than a than a firearm I, should be. I mean, I've used both of those things. Like I've used that exact kind of taser and that exact kind of pistol, and they're just to make. Does anyone know how many rounds she fired? That would matter. To me. Like if, if she put oh. six rounds in him with the Glock, then I thought I'm, she just shot him once, but I could be wrong. 
yeah. they, I, I watched her testimony and she she was just like she acted like she had blanked out the the relevant parts of her shooting this man essentially um, so so what happened she's in she's going to jail I think Five two years? counts of paid guilt? vacation two two uh, two guilty counts I think is what I heard and I think it's manslaughter okay yeah. which is probably fair she, I don't think like the the murder charges imply a certain like intent I think she just fucked up yeah mm-hmm. definitely i don't Negli- think i don't no I, planning. I, what, what's worse is, is manslaughter and like negligent homicide literally like the exact same thing like like i don't know i i feel like i feel like she she performed her job so negligently that another human being died and she's responsible for it whatever the whatever that is is what she did i don't yeah. think she meant to kill that guy though because she did mm-hmm. not seem happy with the uh with it with it you know the outcome well of course not well, she wants to I get back on the streets. Did. I'm sure plenty of cops have accidentally been like, oh, I accidentally shot him. Oh, no. I'm sure that's happened. For sure. Yeah. And it seems like there's a lot. One thing I've seen too often in my wife's freaking murder shows is that the cop is like, all right, Taylor did it. I'm so convinced Taylor did it. And then evidence comes out undeniably proving someone else did it. Mm hmm. You know, like this fucking Kyle DNA all over the place. I don't know why I'm oh, making about you guys. Not my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like have that. I, I planted it. Come on the victim. <laughs> <laughs> but but the cop is still uh, got a too much. Like could uh, I still think we should go for Taylor too? You know, yeah. and it's like no, no. We yeah. have proven that it's this other guy. And the, like all the evidence that the, the hunch you had around Taylor. There's no evidence. It makes. A thousand times more sense that it's somebody else, it's and like they don't they let it go. Their, they treat their jobs like I don't know, like it's a normal job. Like, 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 hey, 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 Woody, I noticed in your accounting work, you're off. It, it's, it's 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 just a tiny number, but you're awful. And you're like, no, nah, no, nah, that's just going to be the number now. I think, well, <laughs> let's make it that. It's like, well, razors have pencils for a, for a reason. Do you want to get shot? <laughs> like, like that doesn't happen. Like, like, yeah, but if you're I, a cop, that's how things would go. <laughs> They they just get stuck on that, or the, there's a, a parallel thing where they're like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Maybe Taylor didn't do this thing, but Taylor does stuff like that. I bet, <laughs> you know, like he, he let's could've. prosecute him for this thing because there's probably other shit we don't know. Ah, the OJ bet. method. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't so, work. <laughs> it works. Justice was found that day. Mm. Yeah. Now he's yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, um, I, I. I, I I just think most cops don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, like, like I've seen so many videos of them doing silly shit, just gun related shit. Really? That's the only thing I'm kind of semi qualified to comment on. But like, if she could get that me- mixed up, she should be a cop. I don't think. And it wasn't even like a life or death type stressful situation. Like, like we've seen so many of those crazy videos where like two cops are wrestling with a man essentially for their lives in mm-hmm. a living room. Right. Like there's a knife in play, two pistols in play, and we're all fucking rolling around in the living room. That's mm-hmm. not the scenario. We've got a guy like in his car, and I get cars are deadly weapons. They love to use that one, but like he's sitting there and they're wrestling with this guy, and we're clearly going to win. Like we, we know that at the end of the day, we're going to wrap up a W, and somehow somehow she has to like get in the middle of it with a weapon. Yeah, I don't know. She's there are definitely. From like basic gun safety things that I see from cops sometimes that super makes me wonder where it's not even like a, you're a cop. It's like, are you like a human being that's ever dealt with a firearm before? There, I remember the one with um, when co- when co- the two things that trigger me is that when cops intervene in situations where there's not like you don't need to be here right now. And then when they do it without backup. So mm-hmm. if something happens, somebody's going to die because you don't have another person there. So either you're going to feel like you need to kill somebody or somebody's going to kill you. The One of the most mind blowing videos. Did you see the cop that was wrestling or he had the collar? of a like 13 year old in a yard with like 20 other like teenagers around them or they, they, not like teenagers like big like ready just like kids or whatever mm-hmm. and the guy's got his gun out he's like get back i'm arresting like citizens arresting as an off duty <laughs> cop this kid or whatever and he ends up like firing around randomly on on accident into like somebody's yard or some shit and it's like holy shit like what are you actually doing right now yeah it's jeez i have a frustration i have and i female cops that have to use the big weapons taser or especially gun because they're female cops right if if the cop is some healthy 35 year old guy and 
He knows if there's any altercation, the cop wins handily. The perp knows if there's any altercation, the cop wins handily. There doesn't even have to be an altercation. It, it, everyone knows how that would go down. But when there's a girl involved, she has to use this gun in, in a situation that the guy could have held him down. Same's true mm -hmm. for those old fat white dudes that are cops still for some reason. It's for mm -hmm. anyone who's not physically competent enough to like deal with that with that with that job. It's the same thing we always say about firemen and everything else. Like like yeah. drag if you can't drag me out, you, I don't want you to be my fireman. And if, mm -hmm. if you need to yeah. pull out a gun anytime someone's a little bit like harsh with you, you probably shouldn't be a fucking cop. If it, yeah. it can't it can't it can't be compliance or murder. Like there has yeah. to be some so it, it's either compliance or death. You're not RoboCop, all right? There's an in-between here where we just maybe have to, like, rough somebody up a little bit, push them into a car and handcuff They should them, have right? to do, like, physical tests every year. It shouldn't be like you get on the force, you do your one physical test, like American and then Ninja it's Warrior. like, all right, boom, now time to gain 110 pounds and, <laughs> like, be totally ineffective. I, I wanna, remember, that, remember that old show? Um, it was, like, Supermarket Dash, where they, get, they gave you a shopping cart, sent you into a supermarket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Supermarket I Sweep. Yeah, I want one of those where like the cop has to like catch like multiple shoplifters. Like, like it's 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 the same premise exactly, except there's a cop trying to stop them and, and he's being graded as much as they are trying to yeah. win household goods. And if they don't pass their yearly physical, they go to jail. Sure. Jesus. I like that. I like that a lot. I think yeah. we should start locking up fat cops. <laughs> Lock up fat cops. Yeah. And skip a couple meals for on their behalf for them. It, you know, they don't I, need three square. I, I, back to my lifeguard days. We had to requalify every year. Th this will make sense to like 1% of the audience, but we did 200 meters, not yards, in two and a half minutes. If you're a swimmer, this is something that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. This would be like running an eight minute mile. Like it, anyone who's in shape can run an eight minute mile. Um, but if you're not a swimmer or if you aren't in shape, an eight minute mile is hard to get. Yep. You know? And it was just enough to sort of force a requalify. You know, I don't think that's going to happen. People. I think they're going to keep no, letting cops be fat. I feel like the cops are in charge of this. And you do know, firefighters do they have to like requalify and stuff? Right? I feel I like don't I don't know. see really fat firefighters. I know, For like, it, like, like my experience is from those environment, those um, volunteer fire departments, like in the mm. country and stuff. And those guys all take it so seriously about like. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there's a test, and where you're like timed about how fast you put your gear on and get like ready, ready. Mm -hmm. And those guys like do silly shit. Like, like there's some of them who attempt to jump into boots, like, like that instead of like sitting down and putting boots on, they want to like get a running start and like jump into their boots, landing into them as they get dressed. Mm -hmm. like, that's like, awesome. I, I've, that's I've the guy I want coming to that. save me. <laughs> right? You can't. Yeah. yeah um, they should go by job too, as I'm processing this, right? If you're a firefighter captain and your job is to like organize and make sure everyone's doing the right thing. I don't care if you can carry me out of a building. That's not your gig. That's not what he you're doesn't up need to. Legs. Yeah. He doesn't. He could do that job in a wheelchair. I prefer like, it if he did it from a wheelchair because <laughs> that would denote a little seniority and like, like a gravitas around the other guy. Maybe it doesn't matter. Throne. It doesn't matter that he lost him to diabetes. <laughs> he'll, he'll, they'll be like, they'll be laughing and he'll be like, uh, you don't laugh at a five alarm, alarm fire boy. You come, back, you come back in one of these. <laughs> like pops you got diabetes shut up <laughs> <laughs> same thing's true with the in the police world if you're a detective if your job is to like get there after the fact and mm. you know reverse engineer what went down yeah. then uh i don't need you running a five minute mile or whatever I, it is i don't know sometimes in the movies they, 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 they end up having to chase the guy and they, they can't catch him like in seven if they could just caught that guy in seven they just i mean hit they want to cut his wife's head off, you know. That's true. It would have been a right. terrible movie if they'd caught him. And, and if you think time. about it, it's Morgan Freeman's fault because Brad Pitt was like, he was definitely fit. He had that Fight Club body. It was old ass Morgan Freeman who couldn't keep up and give him backup. That's why his wife's head got Fucking cut off. Fucking Morgan Freeman's Spoilers. ruining it. Really, Morgan Freeman is the like nemesis in the show. Bit of a villain. Yeah, bit of a villain. That's he's a great horrible. movie. I haven't seen Seven in forever. That's There's a really no way good it's one. Kevin Spacey's fault because he's never done anything wrong. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah, he's. <laughs> If he had a GoFundMe, I'd ones. fucking I'd sign up. <laughs> if he had a GoFundMe for what? <laughs> Disney World? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, just, he just tried to go to Disney World every time. It's it's hurting my that would be a hilarious. If he was GoFundMe. lobbying to become a fucking Boy Scout leader, I'd buy him. Like, like, anything that man wants, I'm there for him. He's entertained me for years. I feel like the I'm Boy Scouts you. had to crack down on on the, the weirdos, right? I, think, I thought they opened up to the weirdos. I thought that was the deal. I thought there were like gay scout leaders that were like 
you can't kick me out. I'm gay. And they were oh, like, oh, I, was, I wasn't talking about gay people being the weirdos. I meant like the, the rapists. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> like the, it was this weird coincidence, Taylor. Like the, the gay people were raping the kids. It was weird. Oh, <laughs> you never well, see then that. And if that's the case, then the rapists that supersedes the gay. It was gay rape. You know, it, yeah. it wasn't female scout leaders, oddly enough. Yeah, I don't think they're allowed. Then thank God it wasn't a woman. There was a guy on Reddit recently, and he put, I guess he had sex in middle school with his teacher. And he's like, it was awesome. Let's just agree that men and women are different because I it gave me confidence through my high school years <laughs> that I that I nailed my middle school teacher. And mm -hmm. uh, he still thinks back to her fondly. <laughs> and, uh, we are sure different. he does. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, 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 we're just different. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, in middle school, you'd be like, oh, I want to fuck Mrs. Smith or whatever. Wow. But like, no girls were like, ooh, you know, Mr. Stevenson with his bald spot and his way too <laughs> heavy hair. There was a teacher in middle school. I remember like he would walk around like while we were doing work, like, you know, kind of up and down serpentining through the desks. And he would like randomly stop behind girls and we're in seventh grade. So we're like 13 and he would like you figuring that one out. And he'd like give them like a too, too much of a back rub. And like we just would joke about it and be like, oh, Mr. Dennis is a fucking creep. Did you see him? He was massaging Ashley again. Uh, what a weirdo. And it's like, like no, that wasn't cool. <laughs> he, he shouldn't have been doing that. And like he was he was actively like flirty with these young yeah. girls in a way that was even five obvious years to later. Nobody knows why. There was a girl that I'm like about 100% sure was fucking one of the teachers in my high school. <laughs> and he wasn't attractive. He, he was bald. He had long hair, with, but it was bald on top. So oh, no. it was mm -hmm. just like from the back and sides and he had, he was overweight and she was hot. She <laughs> like the expression I used as a teenager is she carries a lot of sail for a skinny chick because she had like, bazonka. what year was this? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, I tell you, she's got quite a sail. Carrying a good bit of sail around. <laughs> but it, you, it just you said that as a kid. <laughs> I, I don't know if I said it out loud, but I thought. Hey, Woody, like, get a load of this dame. Oh, <laughs> God, she, well, cause she's got quite a bit of sale going on for her. What was go, let's try to fit, nail down what year this was. What was going on in the newsreels? <laughs> this would be like 1990. But but um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So she she had like a banging body and boobs that n you would typically only see with augmentation, like the, the and because they. I don't, I'm going on and on, but they were wonderful in every way. <laughs> Tell they me more with this child's test. Uh, <laughs> they weren't droopy boobs. They were just, they were like, they were it was fresh. Like she it, was, it was like she was 16 or something. Right out of crazy. the box. Yeah. But I went to school with her. So I know that was. she got these boobs at like 12 or something. Like they weren't fake. And, uh, but at this point she was 16 and I'm, I'm about a hundred percent sure she was sleeping with this guy. They would like walk to his car together after school. It got a little brazen and I, uh, it couldn't have been just an innocent mentorship. They spent way too much time together. Yeah. Yeah, they were fucking. Out Is of she there. on I Facebook, think. you think? Could you find her now? Find out what was going on? I know. Let's see her. how those have aged. Yeah, let's see those tips. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully well. I, I remember. Uh, Sometimes you can find people by their maiden Chicken time names. bags. So you never know. Did, did you guys ever have those girls in your class in high school that were dating guys way, way older? than yep. them and they thought it was cool i remember this girl emily i was friends with we were in the same art class and so like we would sit there and we draw on stuff in like one of those big square tables and there's four of us two other girls and her and me and we were just chatting and you know she starts talking about her boyfriend and i'm like oh i didn't even know you're dating anybody someone here at school we're we're 16 she's like no he uh he's out of college he was 23 dating a oh 16 i got that year blown old. out of the park 28 28. 28? You know, saying a 28 year old Holy yeah. shit. That's yeah. what a ghoul. What a ghoul, right? Yeah, that's not that's not cool. And like to see like a 23 year old pull up to pick up or a 28 year old, I'm sure, pulling up to a high school to pick up their girlfriend, it's like that guy's a fucking loser. We all knew it then too. Like 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 even yep. in high school in 2001, we were like, what a fucking loser. <laughs> Although yeah. can't get any maybe. college pussy. Like, like maybe when we get a little bit older, we'll be like, God, he had it figured out, didn't he? At 28, <laughs> at 28, he had the world in his palm. He, was, he knew it all.
he was he was really rolling the dice and you know he i mean made they, it out the other side like he wasn't dating a 17 year old like, oh i think more or less i, I don't know either way either that way, was always weird i think 16 is legal in georgia if he's 28 we go through this a lot, but like, I really should have this on like a medic alert bracelet so I never forget. <laughs> yeah, it's your background on your phone. What year were you born? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> now, like, you can't even, I don't think you can buy cigarettes unless you're 21. Yeah, yeah, you have to be 21 now. That's wild. That's weird. Is that like a federal thing or like a state by state? Is I it think it's federal. Thing? It might be federal because like the now, you know how they used to have like the two dates on the wall of gas stations, like mm. on the register where it'd say if you're born before this date for tobacco, this one for alcohol. Now mm-hmm. it's just one or at least is in Missouri. Same it for is. vapes? Uh, Nic- I would guess so. You would think know. nicotine in general. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is that good or bad? Good. Yeah, you don't. It's good. But 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 I think it's bullshit that like uh, like all the uh, the things where like we're not sure if you're old enough to decide or not. Like we take that away until you're 21, but anything where it's like we're definitely sure that you're not old to decide or not, but it's in our best interest that you not be old enough to decide or not. So yeah, 17, 18, that works. Like, like it looks military. like it was a. I'm sorry, I thought it looks like it was a Trump thing. Zach found it in 2019. The president signed legislation making you 21. So it's a a federal thing, and Trump did it. Thanks, President no. Trump. Damn. Yeah, I think taking I, care of the serious problem. Looking, <laughs> look, taking us, take us into the future. A cleaner, so, brighter, healthier future. I like it. I'm for it. I wasn't sure if I was like the cigarette prude. And... <laughs> the cigarette prude. Nah, yeah. kids need them. <laughs> yeah, what? They, <laughs> they, they want to be cool. That, they want to be a kid in a bag. You want to be a fucking loser? Come on, <laughs> like, what? New Zealand <laughs> is banning cigarettes for future generations. Anyone born after 2008 will not be able to buy cigarettes or tobacco in their lifetime in New Zealand. If I were third, if I were me, I'd just start a whole black cigarette black markets for cigarettes to sell them to. Obviously, cigarettes. that will happen. Yeah, that happens every time. But there's like, like 50 years from now, there's going to be like a 42 year old who's buying cigarettes from a like a 59 year old. Fucking <laughs> 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 math that's up to. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Dude, imagine how popular those kids are going to be in school because there's going to be like mm-hmm. the sophomores can buy cigarettes or the freshmen can't and then the juniors can. And the soft- it's like your instant ticket to being the cool guy, basically. Yeah. Yeah, there's like going to be a couple of- Oh, no. Well, I guess actually you have to be 18. So it would be the college people doing it. But yeah. Yeah. Lots of money to be made. Black market cigarettes in New like Zealand. That. Again, maybe I'm the cigarette prude. But if they did that here, like, hey, you know, if you're born after 2008, you're fucked. I'd be, for that. I'd be okay with it. Yeah, get rid of them. Yeah. Get rid of them? <laughs> yeah, the cigarettes. Yeah. I don't know. No one can smoke anymore. You can Not give a little, take a little. Then we'll make pot legal for children. Yeah, you legalize weed for kids. And All right, let's give and take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want stone kids staggering around everywhere. That would be You, want, you want to hit them while their brains are still developing. Yeah, that way they can adjust to the marijuana. It would calm them down in school. Dude, there, there are like... Like I know that it's the meme with weed that people like are resistant to like anything negative about it, but I know personally multiple kids I went to high school and middle school with who like smoked all the time throughout those like formative brain developing years, and they are retarded. <laughs> like they're 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 genuine fucking idiots. Like they 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 stalled out for like th- those eight year windows between like twelve and twenty, and it's like all right, well you kind of just like fucked up something you're not going to get back. I have like the counter story. In my high school, there was this guy. There were like five guys. Everything about them revolved around pot. Their entire identity and self-worth was pot. Back in the day, Grateful Dead was alive for like at least part of my high school, Mm -hmm. Jerry Garcia. And, you know, they would like just everything they wore was Grateful Dead. They wore tie-dye stuff. For some reason, they always smelled of patchouli or patchouli, whatever that (laughs) fucking shit is. They reeked of it. One of the kid had bad teeth from, I don't know, I don't know why that's a pot thing, but it's not. I I can't express to you how core pot was to everything about them and what they did. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the one guy in particular that I like knew the most he grew up to be a pretty successful IT dude. And it was just like, I, I don't know how that happened, but he it's true. He's got good a wife him. and kids and a good career. And I just still yeah. high as fuck. Probably. I know he still likes Maybe. the dead. 
Oh, still listen to the same fucking songs because <laughs> they're, they're not making new ones, as far as I know. Oh man, the, I remember like when that was like a cool thing to be into, like oh, the Grateful Dead, like in you know eighth grade, ninth oh, yeah, grade, right before you were born, you, the way before. <laughs> I just remember like a couple of the cool kids would like mm-hmm. wear those like goofy shirts and stuff, and I like listened to a song, and it's it's really not a, not good music i, they I don't make like, like the three or four songs i like i, I like um touch of gray <sighs> that sugar magnolia one maybe I like that, that one that's that's 40 minutes long <laughs> and it's like they they forget they're in the middle of the song in the in the middle of it and it's a lot of crowds cheering too much treble Love um <laughs> <laughs> look it up the most long songs so, Touch of Grey, Sugar Magnolia, Casey Jones, Friend of the Devil might be my very favorite. And that's it. And Deadheads would be like, oh, you know, you only like their popular stuff. Yeah, it is clearly their best songs. That, that's why it's the most popular. Stop judging me. You like yeah. that? You like that ridiculous shit with like a 30 minute instrumental? <laughs> I went to a dead concert and this is the laziest band ever. They left. <laughs> They like what? I'm like I don't, I don't even know who's playing right now. No one sang for a long time. I don't recognize any of these songs, and I've heard their whole like every album. Yeah, uh, but just I, it wasn't about the music. It was about the scene, I guess. It's like uh, it's like watching Santana live. There's like 14 guys up there, and people just kind of drift in and out like, <laughs> on the stage, off the stage. I guess those three guys aren't needed for, <laughs> for the next couple. That's songs. what it was. They left, I, and I think did they leave to get high? I don't know what happened, but yeah. And oh my god, like nobody was. Well, I was sober. I was the designated driver at a Grateful Dead concert because I'm oh. cool like that. <laughs> but. but uh everybody was just so high and tripping and whatever it, it, it was a veteran stadium i don't know if that even exists anymore but it's a stadium and around it sort of you can walk and find all the seats people were just spinning in circles looking at the sky doing their thing and i'm like this is it is weird to me just how high everybody was and how open they were high and there were people who toured with the grateful dead mm-hmm. and uh Literally, like the, there was a chick with the George Foreman grill who just got her entrepreneur on and started selling grilled cheeses. And I'm like, I, it's like, is it sanitary to buy a grilled cheese from a hippie with the George Foreman grill? No. Well, you live once, <laughs> you know? So I did it. I got a grilled cheese. Nice. <laughs> so you, you lived the real experience. A grilled cheese from a dirty fingernailed lady in the back yes. of the van. <laughs> <laughs> she had like a bench or something. Maybe it was under an umbrella. But yeah. Is that the girlfriend we're not talking to? What, what is no, the My dogs keep barking out there. They're excited because my wife just got home. And so I'm yelling at Fozzie and Teddy to please be quiet. Because I don't want ah. them to trickle well, in stop on the mic. through the mic. Just so you know. Oh, good. Yeah. Sounds like it would be. I think the problem with weed was always when it became an entire person's personality. I don't, it's hard to tell mm-hmm. if it ever actually fucked somebody's brains up or if it was just that that's all they did. So their brain didn't have room for anything but smoking. Mm-hmm. It's always hard to tell. Yeah. What about you? Have you done weed, Destiny? Um, I've done a bit of things. Not as much as some people, but more than maybe most. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm a pretty chill person. What was your uh, your most fun drug experience? Um, My, mo- my most fun drug experience. Fun... Uh, fun is definitely MDMA. Mm-hmm. Um, it is just an unbelievably good experience. For, um, for us idiots, get, are there other names for that? Um, some people will call it Molly. Other okay. people will call it kind of like ecstasy. Um, mm-hmm. It's usually MDMA plus uh, some other upper. Um, but it's just a very, it makes you feel like very emotional, very connected. Uh, like whoever you're with, you're going to hug them a lot and be happy and everything. Makes um, concerts a blast. Yeah, some people do X and go to concerts and stuff. Um, the wor- the most memorable drug experience I would have, I would say that um, yeah, the the very first time I did mushrooms, I decided to do a, a monster dose because I'd only ever smoked weed and I didn't think that there was going to be like anything that would really happen. So my mm-hmm. experience with weed was just I would get kind of, almost like drunk in the head. It was like, oh, I'm goofy or whatever. So I did a fuck ton of mushrooms and I just absolutely like blasted my mind to the next dimension for like six hours. And that was probably <laughs> the most traumatic experience of my life. <laughs> That's a thing. So I don't have much drug experience, but I will say what I have is usually underwhelming. Like there's a, am I high right now? Am I? Yeah. Okay. I, I am, but 
I'm just 90% regular me and 10% high. Are you talking about like mm-hmm. weed? Yeah, weed's a good example. I, I was okay. kind of underwhelmed by weed. Yeah, so like this is my your this is my experience directly. So I did like not like crazy amounts, but like I could do like a 30 milligram edible, which for no, if you have no weed tolerance at all, is like an okay amount. Yeah. But like my experience being high is kind of like, oh, you know, like I just feel kind of goofy. I'm laughing a lot. You know, if I had mm-hmm. to like go out and do stuff, I probably could, you know, just kind of funny or whatever. And so um, I wanted to do mushrooms. So you're like, oh, well, mushrooms is crazy. And I'm always people say, oh, do this edible, try to smoke this joint and it'll be crazy. It's like, okay, yeah, whatever. So when it came to doing mushrooms, I ate, I think like the there, there's like, Either you do two grams if you want to have like fun and get maybe mm-hmm. a little bit, or you do 3.5 grams for like a full trip. And then people were saying you can do five grams for a heroic dose. So <laughs> I ate 3.5 and I was like, I'm just going to have a trip. And then like 20 minutes into it, I'm like, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to do some. I'm not going to feel anything because I don't even think fucking drugs do anything. It's people make shit up. So I took two more full doses. So it was like 10.5. Yeah, oh, I my oh, my God. gosh. Yes. I didn't follow. And it's too it much. Just, it, yeah. It, like, I can't. There, I have a YouTube video where I posted three hours of the trip. It's just like an otherworldly experience. <laughs> like, absolutely disconnected. For, you could have picked me up and moved me around. I would have no idea. Like, like, it's it's more when you close your eyes, you see more than when you have them open. Like, that's how mm-hmm. absolutely insane it was. But something that I learned afterwards, and I'd heard people say this, but you can't trust people about drugs ever if they do drugs because everybody that does drugs is a dumb fuck. Here's (laughs) something that I heard a lot, and I found this out, that weed after you've done mushrooms is a much more challenging experience. Like, So if I smoke marijuana now, it's Mm -hmm. like a stepping into another dimension. It's way more extreme. But I know what you're talking about, Woody, where before like, I'd smoke with friends and I would like... Um, you know, eat edibles. And it's just like, this isn't really doing much for me. I don't understand. But yeah, if you want to try, like psychedelics will definitely kick you in the ass if you're... you're Did like, you have a really bad experience? Like, were you just scared the whole time? Or were you just... Like, um, it's hard to like... I, it's hard to use words like scared or not scared. It was like another dimension of like... Because you like... To, to lose your perception of reality and to watch that kind of like dissolve and then to see what's mm-hmm. left is a very... I mean, it was scary... But there wasn't really enough of me left there to like have a fearful experience. It's really it does. It's not going to make sense to try to explain that. But like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll take your word okay. for it. I'm not going to take 11 grams of mushrooms. <laughs> it sounds horrible. The fun experience. If you ever want that or like DMT or something, we'll give you like a. It's a definitely different. It, there's nothing like it in the world that will match that type of experience. And it's weird to think that like that experience is out there if you're willing to like eat a couple of plants to get there. But yeah, I have yeah. A friend. And uh, out of the blue, he writes me this message. Now, you have to understand, this guy's a good friend of mine. We've been friends for years. But he's like an athletic guy, and we're kind of bro friends, if that makes any sense. Like, we don't typically go deep into, like, our emotions or anything like that. And out of the blue, he sends me this message about how much he cherishes our time together. And I've got it in front of me, but I don't want to read it. How much he appreciates our friendship and how life is short. And he needs to send, needs to tell me about that. And I wrote something back uh, as gay, if not gayer. Anyway, um, it turns out my man did ayahuasca mm-hmm. and it has like rewired him. And, and he's making some some life decisions and like reprioritizing what's important to him shit about like not disturbing woodland creatures and like priorities that I don't share. Um, What was he doing to the creatures in the woods before this? I'm trying not to dox him, but, uh, uh, so, um, just fucking with them for no reason. (laughs) (laughs) Harassing him. So, so anyway, yeah, like, like he's, he's rethought, his vibe on all kinds of things and it's just like dude like ayahuasca apparently messes up your normal human priorities and and has you prioritizing shit that hurts yourself i don't know a better way to phrase it Mm -hmm. so uh i don't ever want to do ayahuasca i'm pretty happy with my current sense it it, that's the one you have to vomit after you take it i think right it's it's a full Dude, day. Yeah. He's he told me all about that's it because I'm curious. He, he and I are different in a lot of ways, but I'm uh, open minded to the, our differences and I, I learn and grow from them. Anyway, he's like, I took it, didn't get anything from it. So the guy like blew smoke in my mouth while I inhaled it. And it's like, well, that okay, that's gay. And uh he's like, but that didn't do it either. So then he took eggs 
which are like the essence of life and wholeness and springing from new. And he banged them on my temples. And that's what it took to send me into my trip. And all this stuff about whether the plant deems you worthy. And th- and it's like, you, I love you. You're a little crazy <laughs> right now, bro. <laughs> Dude, I think you broke your brain with those chemicals. <laughs> I don't think there's a woodland spirit guy yeah, speaking pop- to you. I apologize. My groceries got delivered. I had to put them away. But what are we drug are we talking about? Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Oh, that's nonsense. You you fucking drink it and you drink enough of it and you get you vomit profusely and then go on a crazy trip. That's a, a terrible well, the, part. You of don't understand how the plant decides whether or not you're worthy of getting high, whether you need to vomit. The plant makes all these decisions for you. I know a lot of people who do a lot of DMT. Hmm. <laughs> Some of them, unfortunately, so. And uh, but none of them are crazy enough to think that that like there's any like anything in there they know that it's a chemical doing stuff mm-hmm. in the brain yeah i'm yeah. open to that possibility of like going to another dimension and meeting some elves or anything but i don't believe in it like like being open to something and believing something are two different things i'm open to there being a god but i don't believe in him mm-hmm. that that's a really good point actually so he's had this trip and he feels like he's now seen things with his third eye that he needs to consider Fair. i have had dreams where i will wake up and feel the emotions around them as they're real. But like, I don't, you know, I don't they, make life decisions yeah. based on, I woke up, the people are going to evaluate me based on this and I don't want them to. I woke up with a dream that Jackie cheated on me and I am hurt and angry as if that was real, but I'm not filing papers because I know it's not. Mm-hmm. I know in three hours this will pass and everything's going to be okay. I've had dreams about being unable to pay the mortgage that I don't have, about <laughs> you know failing in school that I'm not in. I don't start like studying, you know. Mm-hmm. But apparently, it's like semi-normal with ayahuasca and other psychedelics to take the trip you've had so seriously that you start rebalancing your life. I mean, it must do something to rewire you if it's like consistently making people make huge life decisions like this after they do it. Or maybe he's like an exception to the rule and most people have that more like metered out response where they have huge dreams at first of their woodland escapades and how they're going to change. <laughs> and then a week later, it's like, I'm, I'm going back to real life. He, I don't think it's that. I think it just gives you a lot of introspection. You know, it, it, it gives you, it lets you look at yourself from a from a different viewpoint entirely, um, which is which can be weird. But the idea that the plant doesn't deem me worthy is fucking nonsense. Like, he's a little um, open to that <laughs> idea more so than I am now. Like karma is a good example. Mm. I believe in karma, but more through like a what I think is a realistic way. For example, if you put out a bad vibe all the time, then likely the people who are sick of that shit will bail and you'll only have a, the people who are toxic willing, people. Yeah. Other toxic mm-hmm. people will still put up yeah. with that. People who also can't get good vibe people to hang with them. You know, yeah. and that's why karma is real. If you do something for someone you never see again, like, I don't know, change a stranger's tire. then that puts a good vibe out there and it makes the world better in some small way. Maybe that small way kicks back to you, but probably doesn't. That, that's my feeling on karma. His feeling on karma is more like it is a god overseeing and scorekeeping, and you know, mm-hmm. making sure that you get yours and you know, the good things come around to you. And that's yeah. to it's me religious. Yeah, gamblers yeah. can be like that. Gamblers can can have a little bit of that in them about. Oh yeah, well, like you, you were ninety five percent favor to win. So just know that since you lost, like, oh, you're going to get like 15 wins that you weren't supposed to get now. It's like, no, I don't think like my future gambling will be affected by how poorly this just went. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if anything, I should take note of what just happened. Today. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I should like, cut my losses. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like that. No, I don't believe in karma or uh, I, I guess I, I do believe in predetermination, but I think that's more of a astrophysics opinion based opinion than some sort of a higher power or anything like that. I'm mm-hmm. stuck on my version of karma that if you like, if you're ugly to be around all the time, the good people will leave you. Oh, I don't even know if you call that mm-hmm. karma. I just think you call that fucking life, right? Like, yeah, okay. you can't be a we see that all the time. You. you know, you see that all the time. Like, like positive people often have positive people around them. Like, like we're often surrounded mm-hmm. by people who are very much like us in one way or another. Yeah, for sure. We, we were talking about drugs and like on. <laughs> Any drug, you can find the corresponding like Reddit and all the biggest enthusiasts of that drug are there. And like 
it's people talking about like cocaine, like just in. I mean, they're excited. They're amped up. They're, they're do you they think? cocaine. <laughs> there's there's one high energy, uh, low body fat. <laughs> there, there's one called DPH and DPH diphenhydramine is Benadryl. And apparently if you take a huge dose of Benadryl, like these people are just like filling their entire palm with like 700 milligrams of Benadryl and being like, I'm going to go to a scary place, boy. <laughs> and like, and apparently the, the high off of taking a shit ton of Benadryl is one of the scariest, most dissociative things you can experience. And like all of them will be like, like some of them will be like, I don't want to be addicted to this. This is the worst drug in the world. <laughs> and the, they, they all have like, you, you talked about with ayahuasca, like the similar experiences. <clears throat> they have an experience where like they say they take enough Benadryl, enough DPH that they totally dissociate. They're confused. They don't understand who they are or what they are or how to move or the perception of time. They say things look staticky. And all of them, when they take a critical mass amount, talk about seeing the hat man. And it's a shadowy man made of static who is just a shadow and he's always wearing a wide brimmed hat. And like they'll all be like Drifter yeah, knows I, this guy. Drifter does know this guy, I bet. He knows the hat man. But it is some of these comments are so fucking funny. Like they'll they'll <laughs> They'll talk about their experience being high in a ton of detail. And someone who's really high on weed, they're like, I watched this movie. It was hilarious. It was great. Someone who was writing about being drunk. Oh, I got a little drunk and me and my friends had a grand old time. This guy's like, all right, I took all of them. And then I forgot I had taken as many and I took more. And then I started to dissociate and I couldn't feel anything anymore. It felt like I was floating on my couch. And then I got this horrible fear for a couple hours knowing that there were other people in the room all talking mean about me. And there were all these people in the room screaming at me and telling me I was evil. And then an hour after that, the hat man showed up. And, <laughs> and it's like, this is awful. None of this is the least fun sounding drug. And you don't even get a good buzz. You're just terrified for like five hours. And, and, they, and then some of these people, some of these people are like addicted to being scared. And so they were giving tips on how to get even more scared. They're like, you know what you should do? Take about 750 milligrams of Benadryl, then get some DXM. Combine that with it, and you're going to see some wild stuff, my friend. And they're like, awesome, I'll try that next time. And it's it's, it's horrible. <laughs> it's I can't imagine. No one on this sub is like, it's so much fun. They're all <laughs> talking about, like, and <laughs> they post pictures of, like, people without face, faces that don't make sense. Like, just, just things that don't make sense. It's, oh, God. It's very disconcerting i can't just do regular drugs you moron just do regular <laughs> drugs <laughs> do real drugs don't dose there's, yourself on bed and apparently so it like makes alcohol look like a bitch compared to what benadryl does to your liver and kidneys at those doses <laughs> like oh also it gives you alzheimer's uh and so Jesus like it, it, gives you early, <laughs> it gives you early onset dementia and so like some of these guys are like uh kept uh, i found five searches last night of symptoms of dementia on, <laughs> on my phone <laughs> five searches <laughs> i found them <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyway yeah don't do benadryl kids unless you're trying to you know get rid of allergies it's a micro dose <laughs> get rid of your allergies yeah. benadryl and uh cough syrup right i think are two over-the-counter things that people will abuse mm -hmm. yeah people get real fucked up on the cough syrup i think uh I don't think you can buy that. Like Robitussin, can you buy that over the over the counter? You, you have to be, be like twenty one, right? Right. I think you have to be an adult to buy that stuff because you can like make meth out of it. Oh, I feel like you're talking about Sudafed. Oh, oh you're maybe right. that Sudafed. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I've never actually There's, taken that. The pro? Oh no, I don't think I so. keep that around. I uh, I went to the doctor for whatever flu or cold or something like two years ago, and she was great. It, I've learned this term emotional labor. Are you guys familiar with this? I think so. So t uh, most broadly, emotional labor is focused on like what moms do, right? You know, like, mm -hmm. it, but also a nurse does some emotional labor. A doctor does some emotional When I had that strep throat, the doctor looked at it and really like uh, ratified. I'm looking for a better term, but like acknowledged my pain. She's like, ooh. That that hurts, and it's like, oh, thank you. I've been suffering so much, and yeah, and like those words meant almost as much to me as the amoxicillin did. And um, 
anyway, so I go to the doctor and she's like, yeah, you know, you get this drip and this pain and it hurts to do this. And I'm like, my gosh, like you're describing my symptoms better than I described them to you. And she's like, we're going to get you Sudafed, the good shit that you have to you know, ask mm. for behind the counter. And that's when I learned when Sudafed became illegal and they like, uh, not illegal, but uh, regulated mm -hmm. and they use your driver's license to make you buy it. They put something else called Sudafed on the shelves that is a bullshit, ineffective counterfeit. So if you just buy, if you think they sell Sudafed and it's out there in the aisles, that's not the Sudafed. No, no, no. You got to go back to the pharmacist and be like, I want the real Sudafed, the stuff you make drugs out of. And, and then they'll <laughs> give you the effective stuff. It's a good pro tip. Yeah. Next time so, I want to so, get high. Zach says you need your ID to buy Sudafedrine. I'm not good at pronouncing new words. And I forget what the other stuff is called. That's not what I'm calling real Sudafed. Uh, but it has another name that like they, these drug names don't mean anything to me. They're all like fake words. Yeah. Is that... Well, it's good to know if I ever need to make. Is it meth? It is meth, right? Yeah, it's meth. Yeah, you can. I thought so. <laughs> I don't need. I don't want any of those scary drugs. Well, I guess what I consider a scary drug might be different than other people. I don't want anything that I, I don't I definitely don't want to overdose on cough medicine. I know that for sure. Well, of course not. Like, so like, like it sounds awful. Zach gave us the two things. Pseudofedrine is the real pseudofed. Pseudofedrine is the fake shit that had to be have done on purpose. Yeah. I would imagine so. It is easy to fuck that up. Um it is easy to like look at the pseudo mm -hmm. fedrine and be like, wait, is that the real one? Is it which one did what he say? Yeah. It, yeah. You gotta ask for it uh behind the, behind the counter, right? Like if you want the real mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they'll take your driver's license because uh, they regulate how much you can buy. So yeah. they, there's there's some sort of schedule. It, it it's enough that a normal person won't bump into the height and into the limit. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so either. You'd have to have a, a real serious call. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I that's um how easy is it to make meth? Like 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 in my head I'm like, oh that's like chemistry, but but then everything I know is from either breaking bad, really. But 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 it seems like the people who do it don't look very bright. I agree. I, you know, and I don't know how much I've learned too much from breaking bad too. Is that percent purity even a thing? Is there better or worse meth? My guess is that you could make great meth. If you just cut it less and didn't want to make as much money, or maybe my, my guess is that ingredients to begin with, like more pure stuff. I, I got a feeling I, that maybe they settle for something a little more scary because they I'm doing have, it like, a different way. I have a feeling that like they make great shit and then mix in a bunch of sugar or something so that they <laughs> can sell twice as much. I think so. This is my bullshit. I um, I was in uh, Amsterdam um, a few <laughs> months ago, and I I think I accidentally did meth. Um, and this is what I learned afterwards, that there are some drugs that are pretty complicated and pretty expensive to make. The more complicated and expensive the drug, the more likely it is that you're going to get some other compound that is either mimicking the effect of the drug or it's just way cheaper and they'll mix it with a the drug. They'll cut it with a drug. So we were looking for MDMA and we got, I don't know if it was meth, but it was some amphetamine, but apparently MDMA is mm. a difficult drug to make. My understanding is that when it comes to like amphetamines, so like methamphetamine, um, that it, it's relatively cheap and relatively easy. So I don't know if there's like a percent purity. Um, I, like I think it all comes down to like, you, you just have to like look at the cost of stuff. You know, so if somebody's trying to sell you a pill and there's like a hundred dollar pill, there might be a decent chance that that pill is like fake or people will like fake stuff to make more money. But when it comes to like a, like a tab of LSD, tab of LSD is like five bucks and that lasts you all day. Like it's, there's not much reason to like fake a drug you're like you're not making much money so much money. that was like the rough guy now don't your mileage may vary with this but this is more or less what, what i've heard in terms of like some drugs are pretty easy to make amphetamine stuff is like pretty easy but pharmacies make it a ton of people can make it um but like more expensive like designer drugs and stuff can get more complicated and you're more likely to uh, either run into fakes or um, have people cut it with other stuff to, to sell more of it basically okay why well, slip fentanyl in meth like i don't know if people, people do that do they I don't think people do that. They they slip fentanyl into uh, like heroin. I think. To, oh, to you're for, right. I'm mistaken. Yeah. My mistake. For a cheap for a yeah. cheap kick, because uh, I think that like fentanyl is like not only 
like many times more potent than heroin, but it's also like many times cheaper. Like I just use a little bit and give some shitty heroin a kick my, is my guess. Cause nope. It, it goes back to that whole thing where people are like, Oh no, people are going to put drugs in my Halloween candy. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, people like their <laughs> drugs. They're going to, they're going to put them in their own mouths and eat their drugs. Cause that's what uh-huh. people do with drugs. That, that is right. People do. I will say though, man, the, um, uh, as much as I talk about drugs, I'm like um, opiates are really, really, really scary. Um, like there are some class of drugs that I stay away from, but like opiates are like on the, they're, they're just, man, opiates are so scary. You got to be so careful with that. Um, it, it takes a lot to hurt yourself with certain types of drugs as much as you shouldn't do them or as harmful as it can be, you know, but like opiates, man, that I, I just had a friend um, that OD'd like two weeks ago and she died. She's like 23 that I knew in California. And it was because she was up to the point where she was like doing, um, I guess, crush bags of like fentanyl, like mixing in a little bit. And to see people that are relatively healthy and young and then can do a drug like that and OD and die. Uh, oof, that's that, that's really, really scary. That's like did a, she a, look bad on the way towards OD or did she maintain a pretty normal life? Um, outwardly, I don't think you'd ever be able to tell. Really? Um, you'd yeah. have no idea that she. No, absolutely. Oh. No, I know this because I didn't even know she did opiates. I had no idea. We'd smoked a couple times, and then my fiance got a message from her mom on Instagram. She's like, hey, just so you know, this person passed away on Friday. We thought it was suicide. I thought she killed herself. Um, and then later on, a few friends reached out, and she just had a bag and mixed a little bit of fentanyl, and then ended up ODing on it. And it was like, Jesus, yeah. Yeah. I, I know someone from high school who died from uh, fentanyl and cocaine. Uh-huh. And they OD'd on it, and that's all she wrote. The fentanyl is fucking scary. Like you, you yeah. see those pictures where it's like lethal doses of different drugs and fentanyl. It's like an amount of like you could sprinkle that on someone's plate 10 times over and they would have no idea. Like it wouldn't uh-huh. shut. It's just nothing. It's spooky. Fentanyl became, and... Can I get this out? Yeah. The number one cause of death for adults between 18 and 45. Yeah. Fentanyl overdose. Jesus fuck. Uh-huh. That's insane. It's like yeah. in school when you saw the little uraniums and people were like, oh, one speck of uranium, if you inhale it, will mm-hmm. give you radiation. It was like nobody really is worried about that. But the, the fentanyl stuff is is real and available. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it sucks. And, and the one thing about opiates, it seems to pull in people who can have their shit together, right? Like, I, I don't know how to say it, but like, if you're an alcoholic, it doesn't seem to grab so indiscriminately right if people uh-huh. are drinking on a regular basis kind of signing up for alcoholism almost mm-hmm. um i wish i had other good examples but like other bad behaviors you you kind of opt into them opiates it's like your back hurts for 14 days yeah and now you're a drug addict who hmm. needs more and it's like this yeah. is a guy this was a certified public accountant right the pinnacle of careers and, <laughs> and, He's and at the he, apex. <laughs> he managed to get hooked on opiates if it can happen to him it can happen to anyone yeah i mean a, a lot of times i've always been really careful is is people like they get on those pills and then the pill supply runs out. And so they steal from their grandparents or something. I, I know someone in high school that they're still addicted to painkillers big time uh, now to this day. And he used to steal like hundreds of, of high dose, like 80 milligram Oxycontin from his, his grandma every single month uh-huh. and like sell it to people and take them. Uh, but he is like from a family with a shit ton of money. And so he's never going to go down the heroin fentanyl route. But a lot, most people don't have that money. And so they can't afford Oxycontin anymore. And so then they go with heroin or they go with fentanyl because like, it's like they still need to get high. They're still you physically never, addicted. But he might, he might anyway, right? He might be in a crowd mm-hmm. that does. He might, it, maybe enough opiates and it normalizes the idea of using heroin. I, who knows? Maybe. It, yeah. Tons of people get, wasn't it like a uh, Rush Limbaugh? He was popping those things like like candy for many years. That's why mm-hmm. I made it. Didn't it was it related to why you went deaf? I think it can make you go deaf. I don't I don't know if that's the reason he did. If he if he did go deaf, then that probably is the reason. Yeah, no, it he, is the reason. Yeah, I can't imagine for the opiates, but for um, the closest thing I can think of is MDMA, and I've read because we've done MDMA quite a few times, quite a few times, probably like less than fifteen times. But um, I, I've I've read about like what the opiate high feels like, and I will say that like after doing MDMA, 
Um, for me, who's a relatively cold and disconnected person, it is an unimaginably like when I'm on MDMA, I'm thinking like, you know what? Like if I took enough of this and I die right now, I would be totally okay with that because this is mm-hmm. just such an amazing high. <laughs> um, if you've never messed with opiates, there is, you are, you are, um, man, fuck, hold on. I'm trying not to romanticize this, but you're touching something <laughs> that is just otherworldly in terms of feeling. And I don't think people, if you've never felt anything like that before. It, like I can see how people could get hooked. Yeah. Is it They're, easy to get laid when the girls are on Molly? You can, but for a lot of, you have something called meth dick. A lot of times your dick doesn't work. So I've never had sex on that drug before. But some some people supposedly can, but my dick is pretty functional and I'm never able to do it on (laughs) On on meth. So a lot of uppers are. Wait, did I mix meth and MDMA? I think. Well, MDMA is also an amphetamine. It's meth. I don't remember what it's saying, but it has a similar effect to meth Mm. amphetamine, where meth is also you don't get an erection at all. Um, Or generally you don't. Your mileage may vary, but. But yeah, yeah people, that, those highs are insane. So what if you mix meth weird. with Tadalafil? Let them fight. It's like putting a humidifier and dehumidifier in the same room. <laughs> 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 Seeing how that goes. I mean, it might work. Yeah, <laughs> you're not supposed to mix uppers and downers for a reason, but hey, listen. If you wanna... Oh, it's, it's, it's a... It's a the vasodilator? Yeah, I'm, right. I'm close to that word. Oh, yeah. okay. Sure, right. Dude, you, if you, you, there's a meth Reddit. You go to that one, you can hear them talking all about the their their meth dick not working, and they'll be like, I smoked meth, and then I jacked off for nine hours with my not working dick. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this seems like, this seems horrible. The worst like, part is my skin is like a four and a half hour skin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to get your dick hard for hours. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a um, vast, uh, no, it's a anti-diuretic as well. I remember at one point I was standing in front of the toilet feeling I really had to pee for about two mm. hours. I just stood there and I was like, okay. And I think me and my fans were standing. I was like, we're, our legs are getting sore. I'm like, I, but the, the time will pass so quickly that like you look at the clock and it's like, it's nine o'clock. We chat for a little bit and you look like it's like 12 o'clock. It's like, what the fuck is happening? I don't even know where the time we- is going, so... We yeah, had an weird. ecstasy kingpin on the show, and he said that people would get into cuddle puddles, and they'd all just have warm vibes and sort of snuggle together. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I thought that maybe people were getting laid. I didn't. He never mentioned the meth dick. It's yeah. not really. It's it's hard to explain, but it's not really like. Uh, it's not sexual. It's just very emotional. Like you want to like like other people's skin feels really good and like uh like oh like you're hugging somebody and it does feel like comforting and emotionally warm or whatever but it's mm-hmm. not really like a sexual like i want to fuck you it's more just like i really want to hug you and tell you all the nice things i can think of about you basically very i can't imagine spooning with some girl and not feeling sexual well try mdma sometime and you'll <laughs> get the <feeling. laughs> yeah. all right touche all right we need to find the the drug that blows you away woody You've been underwhelmed by weed. We need to take you through a gauntlet. Turns out what... it's crocodile. He loves <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> that shit did not catch on anywhere but Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those pictures, though, from like 2011? Oh, yeah. where like the newest drug, like Vice was doing a story on it. Yeah. And it just showed people with like still had flesh on their hand and then like f- five inches of, of forearm Bone. bone and then back to flesh. And it's like, th- there's no way it feels that good <laughs> to to Mm-mm. necrotize your forearm yeah i don't want any uh any of that um <laughs> I, I, I i i like weed and uh acid's awesome um it, it's psychedelics in general seem like a good time but uh, and and opiates are just too scary to fuck with because like whenever i, I got that coding cough syrup i loved it so so much i didn't want anything else ever um, yeah. <laughs> it's so like good. anything else that's it's why i'm, so I'm too afraid to do any opiates uh, even try it like i don't want to know i don't want to know how great it is yeah Yeah. be steering clear of it it's like warm love in a bottle that tastes like strawberry kisses and And it hits you on like the level of your soul like you'll feel good in ways that you didn't even know you could feel (laughs) it's like an undescribable feeling of oh god yeah like you see like on cartoons you see people like rolling around on the floor like oh you're like that's so goofy it's like you will (laughs) you'll you'll want to and it'll feel that good man i wonder how much a bottle can sound on the street because I remember like a prescri- uh, like a big bottle of it with my prescription was like cheap, like $30 or something. Mm-hmm. But I think I've heard people like when I got it, somebody was like, yo, let me get that. I'll give you 1500 I think. And I was just like, first of all, this is my goddamn cough syrup that I need. <laughs> like, like <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> like, 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 but really? 1500 I think somebody offered me something like that for my bottle of coating. I didn't take it, obviously, because I wanted my fucking cough syrup. But like, I wonder Jesus if it's really Christ. that valuable. I mean... I'm- that's what they make lean out of, right? St- yeah, yeah. Because that's the the 
codeine you can drink without it. Like there's no acetaminophen in it. So it's not fucking up your liver. Right. If you say so. Um, I just remember it was coating a fucking bottle and it was really good. It, I think in some places they flavor it so it tastes awful, so it's really hard to abuse. But in Georgia, they make it taste like candy. It's so good. Hmm. Have you ever accidentally taken like too much NyQuil when you've been sick? Um, I've taken like a bunch. Probably, I just felt really spaced out and like 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 the frame rate on my life went down. Yeah, it was. I, it was like maybe five years ago. What a good description. I was feeling like <laughs> just dog shit. I had the flu or something. And I took like two of the cups of NyQuil. And I think like it was like my fifth day of being sick and I hadn't been sleeping. And I'm like, today you're sleeping, bitch. Like you're <laughs> you're going to be out. And so I took way too much NyQuil. And I remember like it's like a dissociative feeling. Like you're like you're, you're you don't know where you are or like oh, no. your thoughts don't make any sense. You don't make any sense. Like I remember like laying in bed and I, I slept, but it was more like a night terror. Yeah. Of, of like, uh, I remember I saw like a big spider looking thing. I was laying in my bed and I like was in the middle of taking too much fucking shit. And I saw like just a, a fuzzy thing. It, I guarantee it was just like a fuzz ball that didn't exist, but I saw it up there and I thought it probably doesn't know where I am. And so I, I, so I didn't get scared, but it was like the next day I woke up, like not feeling rested, feeling really weird. And it was like, that that was, that was too much NyQuil. It probably doesn't know where I am. It, my thoughts, they, they weren't making sense. Like I, and I knew on some level, my thoughts weren't making sense. Like I would, I would get up and like walk into the kitchen and totally forget anything I'd been doing. Any thought I had like walk back, like Mm. nothing was being accomplished. It was just, it was weird. I hated it. Like it dissociative is the way it makes you feel. Like That's you're really not weird. really you're not really in your body. Like it's I not like really you that. doing it. It's like you're um, watching a TV show of someone controlling you. Yeah, I don't think I want that. I want to like alter my reality, but I want to stay here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, for the most part, like like when whenever they talk about the two different kinds of DMT, like the there's the one that they make from the toad venom. Um, it's like I'm wrong, but dimethyl five oxy nonsense, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Just name it mm-hmm. fucking Blue Boy or something. Get some dr- <laughs> real drug names, dude. Like, All the like, podcasts. I can't smoke. Ma- I I haven't smoked weed in the last ten years without it fucking be- being called something cutesy. Like like mm-hmm. name your drug something cool. Um, but but like <laughs> the acid makes sense, the marijuana makes sense, but there's no way no way I want to go to like a place where everything turns white and I'm like a stick figure that doesn't know what I am. And, t- mm-hmm. and my, and my perception of time has altered such that like, maybe I was in there as a stick figure man in the white world for a year. I don't even fucking know anymore. <laughs> um, you might come back out not knowing what, not knowing enough about the real world. Um, but, but just the regular DMT, um, the stuff that they're vaping and making out of that bark or whatever the fuck in their kitchens and smoking mm-hmm. out of oil pipes that look like those crack pipes, which I guess that's what you call them. That seems like a real good fucking time because they're seeing no y- gnomes and colors and yeah. kaleidoscopes of goodness. Like that. I mean, there's like a good the time. the guy in our hangout who smokes DMT every all day. the time. Yeah, all I the was, time throughout the. That seems like too much DMT. It's not going well for him. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> he's smoking uh, too much. <laughs> he makes I don't think you're smoking. He, like, well, I, I wanted it to be consequence free for him. Yeah. You mean him smoking DMT, like chaining DMT hits five times during our hangout? And then, like, that's it not was, a good it idea. It turned out it was, a, it was that a to be okay. Hmm. Is he losing yeah. his mind? I haven't seen him in a while. Um, he just posts pictures every now and then of his face, and he's always real high. He's like, look at my high face. And it's like, <laughs> and he does look blasted, but you're like, dude, you're, you always have high face. Like, like he's always just like, <laughs> Like, this, like, the, this is the smaller one, right? Where's a nah, flat grin half a lot? No, nah, this is the big one. Yeah, oh, okay. the bigger guy. Yeah. And he's not it's not his high face on weed. <laughs> it's his <laughs> face on DMT. Yeah, yeah, on DMT. I don't yeah. even know how you get that much of it. Yeah. I guess what you said. You they they make like it making it in their own kitchens. They, with they just make it some in their own kind kitchens. of bark. Yeah. Yeah. Or wild. seed, mate. I'm sure bark. probably right. Okay. I won't go too much into the whole process, but probably best we don't. Yeah, but it but it <laughs> They do, and it if they can cheap. do it in their kitchen, it's probably easy. Do you remember when uh when salvia became like a popular meme many many years ago? 
that's a drug. I don't even think they ever made that illegal because it's it looks like so little fun. What is it's also illegal to punch yourself in the balls? Yeah, it's no, there's, a, there's as hard as you want. Go for it. <laughs> Have you seen that viral video of like it's like two brothers sitting on a porch and they're like, "All right, come on, we're gonna take a big hit of uh, <laughs> salvia," and they both do it and immediately. Like one of them falls off of the, the, the stairs they're sitting on, and the other one starts going like, what, "What's going on? What's going on? Help! Help!" Like, and, it's, and it's like, and it doesn't. It looks horrible. At one point, like, they're the really video, doing it, or is it a skit? No, it's they're really doing it. Like you okay. can see videos of people doing salvia, and it it's no. it's it's a total dissociative. So like they forget who they are and what they are and what they're doing. They Stop no with memory. that! I want to know who I am. <laughs> and then like their dad came out on the porch clearly their dad and they're like both like high on salvia like barely functioning screaming for help and they're like god dang you boys again and then the video <laughs> cuts so they've been doing salvia in the All backyard right, so what over is, and over. Uh, what is kratom because i see like that shit at my oh, I, 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 I see that at the delta eight store i've never tried it but um it's supposed to be like like you put it in a tea and it tastes really bad but it makes you super relaxed and feel good I it's think similar it's, to I an think, opiate kratom is an opiate right I, maybe it is. I think it's supposed uh, it to do like something a, similar to it. They sell it at the fucking gas station in, in like bags. I th it looked like a green powder to me, but I didn't Wait, know. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like big bags. Dang Although yeah. they sell Delta 8 here. I don't know if they have Delta 8 where you are, Destiny, but like they have, when, when you go to my Delta 8 store, mm -hmm. um, they have, mar it's like hemp, but it looks just like marijuana and it's sprayed with Delta 8 and they, they've got like, 30 fucking pounds of it just sitting there in mm -hmm. a big fucking pile but then they've got like every variation of of, of uh, the ways to like intake it are you gonna try kratom fuck no i don't know anything about it like 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 I, I'm, I, I'm not really interested in a new drug right now anyway i'm not relaxed either. anyway i'm having a good time yeah you're still in uh, california right destiny no i actually just moved to miami oh miami what what triggered that um people in la suck uh, just change the scenery. Also, uh, st state taxes are way better here because they're not zero. existence. Yeah, I've never heard anyone say they like the people in California. Like that, it's really rare <laughs> for someone to think that California is filled with swell guys. And it, I, I'll give you a try. What's wrong with the people in California? I've rarely heard it described well. They're just fucking losers. It's just like all of it is. Um, <laughs> they're I don't know, like, like how much very wealthy, successful Silicon. No, Valley. that's not. Those people all live out of the city. Those people are living elsewhere. Those people live in fucking Lake Tahoe and shit. You're like, no, but like, I mean, there are those people. But like, when you are, this is the feeling that I get. It might just be the crowds that I run in. And I'm sure that you guys have played like the networking games and the fucking you know, whatever bullshit scene. Like anytime you go to a party, you're hanging out with people just constantly like, I need to talk to this guy. Like mm -hmm. I need to show off. I need to be cool. I need to, you know, I'm trying to climb. I'm trying to network. I'm trying to figure this out. I want to give you my business card. I want to pitch an idea. Like, like it's those types of like obsessively image focused people um, in, in every party you're at. Um, not to rag on, you know, whatever you guys are into, but like every girl is like massive fake boobs, massive fake face, tons of makeup, filtering everything. Mm -hmm. Like the guys are fucking cringy and crazy. And it's just like, not a good time. It, it, it feels like a Black Mirror episode, like the whole everything does. And just ugh, not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have. So I uh, every, for a while, I flew in California fairly often, this paragliding silliness. Uh -huh. And it seemed like the people there were very interested in stack ranking. Right. In North Carolina, there's more of a, hey, we're all into this really ridiculous thing. And mm -hmm. it, it's a like a bonding agent where people can become friends and talk to each other because we have something in common. In California, it was more like. Okay, we all know he's the best here. He's the second best here. Our self-worth, not self-worth, but our, our value as a person mm -hmm. is associated by how like cool we are, which is often tied into how well you fly. And that I was like, fuck, California's weird that way. Like, why can't we just be nice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Ugh. Well, wow. Miami's a good pick. You still get all the benefit of the weather, which would be like, was that a driving force? Do you? There? Yeah, but Miami's awesome. Have I'm you gonna... heard of hurricane season? Oh, there's, fuck hurricanes. They have one about... every year. They don't have any snow. <laughs> California's all the time. Like, the weather is beautiful and perfect. In my opinion, Miami is like hot and muggy. Like California doesn't, or at least in, at least like near LA, I didn't really feel like it got muggy that much to me. But in Miami, it gets muggy all the time. But my fiance likes beach stuff and outdoor shit, so that was a big plus for her is to be able to come here and swim at the beach and shit all the time. So. Yeah, I mean that's a big selling point for anyone, oh. or except for Kyle. Kyle, you said you you don't want to live near a beach. It's disgusting. I would love to be near the beach. That'd be so much fun. I liked I, it. I, I despise it. 
I don't like the sand, the salt, the water, the sun, or the people. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bad there's not a lot of pros there. You know what I liked? So it seems like everyone else in the world has this sixth sense of where north is. And it's not that I can't look at the sun and know the time of day and have a general idea, but I get a little mixed up sometimes, you know, especially if it's the, the, a certain time. If it's 4 p.m. at winter time, just how high is the sun supposed to? I don't know. When I lived at the beach, I always knew where east was. Always. It was my, like, northern star. I, I it just had a sense. It's hard to describe the importance of it, but I always knew how to get home. I always knew how to like head to the coast and go north or south. Mm -hmm. I always knew where east was. I always had this like sense of direction that in fucking Apex, North Carolina, I didn't have. As Kyle remembers. When did you yeah. move from when did you move to North Carolina? I was uh, 26. I wonder if maybe I'm catching maybe you weren't quite old enough, but I will say that cell phones have destroyed my ability to navigate anywhere. Because yeah. when I was a kid, I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska. You could give me an address and I'll tell you exactly, you know, you want to go to, uh, you know, 44, 52nd, you know, Northwest 102nd Street. It's like, oh, that's, you know, five blocks north of Maple. You go there, there, you go 72nd Blue. I don't know everything. I find anything with an address. Mm -hmm. I live in California for three years. I use Google Maps for everything. I don't know if I could have found the fucking grocery store five minutes away from my apartment because it's just so, it's just, just a habit for me that as soon as I jump in my car, you plug it into my maps and I just like, I'm looking at my phone, I'm driving. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody else has that experience with map stuff, but I, it definitely yeah. hurt. My I memorize to it remember. using like after I make a route enough times, I memorize it maybe five or six times if it's an uh -huh. hour or so. But, you know, it takes a while. Depends on the turns or whatever. But but yeah, after a while, I don't need to use it. But I still use it because Waze tells me if there's cops in the way or something pulled over to the side of the road and all, all the cool things that Waze does. And Waze has this stupid thing that's like it's got the candies from Candy Crush and it puts them in the road in my way. So I'm like Pac-Man. If I if I if I pull over, I don't get to eat another candy. So you got to keep driving. You gotta I, keep driving. You like you, I direction. will eventually learn a route. I'm probably slower at it. I, I learn routes pretty slowly because I there's like a weird kind of I'm not paying attention because of the GPS. I, it, it doesn't require mm -hmm. it doesn't punish you for failing to pay attention. It keeps it lets you know when it's coming up, and I learn pretty slowly. Uh, shit, I don't no, know. I, I totally empathize. Like I. I am directionally like the worst person I know. I've always been very, very <laughs> bad directionally. And like, it, I learn how to get places from my house. And so every time I move, I have to like relearn and like re input all that stuff. Cause it's like, I still know I'm going to the same highways, but it's like, no, I need to like ingrain this. And so, like, I remember when I was like 10 years old, like my, my younger brother, who's a you know, year and a half, two years younger than me, he's a, a directions wizard. Like while I was and my my parents were like, that's because like you didn't stop fucking talking. And he would just like sit there and look out the window as we were driving and he figured it all out. And there was one day we were like on the way back from something. I was I was 10. Now look at you, you're a professional. Yeah. <laughs> now look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> hey bro, you making any new maps lately? Yeah. How's that cartography career coming along? <laughs> fucking idiot. But uh, yeah, I remember it was just one day my mom was driving me and my younger brother. There's nothing really to do. It was like a Saturday. And she was like, Taylor, direct us home. I want to see if you can get us home. And my brother's like, Mom, please, no. And he was this? like eight. I was like 10. Okay. And, and he could get us anywhere in the city, drop of a hat. I don't know how he retains it so well. He'll be in a city for three days and he knows everything. And I was like, okay. And like, I immediately was like, I hope my guesses are good because at no point was I like re correct. She's like, all right, right or left here. And like I took I'm like left and like we get on <laughs> highway like 64 east. I live in St. Louis in, in 15 minutes. We are in Illinois. Yep. <laughs> and, and it's just a totally different state. I, I got like frustrated and and, and stopped Didn't giving directions. Have, like, so the they drove us home. Mississippi River as some sort of northern star. Oh, I, I knew as soon as I saw the river that we were going the wrong way. <laughs> But okay. I didn't know until then, you know, Dude, I, I, I like guess I could have looked at the arch. But <laughs> So I crossed it a couple times on the tat. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, this is undervalued. This is a pretty legit, like, people look at the two oceans, but the Mississippi River is neat in the middle. It's a, yeah. it's a cool thing. It's a and big, oh, yeah. it's huge. On the way home, it was filled with trees, like mm -hmm. legitimately like full size trees coming down the river. All I'm like, how do you drive your boat up river? Like you're not supposed to fuck around if you have like a person boat. It's like barges. 
in a lot of those areas are the only things there. Like every year, if someone yeah, there drowns, were no water skiers yeah. on the Mississippi River. <laughs> yeah, pe- people will. Oh, you don't want to. It's it's pure, just brown as mud. Its, I was about to say it's known for its crystal clear, clean <laughs> waters. Yeah, like the people, pearl of the United States. Tom Sawyer made it seem like a good place to swim. Uh, maybe he made no, it like, you, like seem like a good place to escape slave catchers. I mean, if we're being honest, like he didn't love it. That's why it was so good to escape the tumultuousness (laughs) of the water. Yeah, it's it is not a clean river. It's Mm -hmm. fast moving and you know, people drown in it every year when they try and swim across. It's like just take a bridge. Like what who are you trying to prove? Like you're gonna swim across a five hundred yard wide. If you're river. a swimmer, though, I think there's like tons of those little benchmarks that you want to like check off. Like, like I'm sure that's a whole class of fucking swimming, like swimming across rivers. But you don't want to get like smoked by a giant branch or something. Like you could be Would a you great know? swimmer because you're moving with it. You could. I, I know that people die when they try and swim across it. I'm sure people make it too. I think they get like Failure. sucked under. Their legs. I'm doing get it this summer. The rocks. Just don't fuck with you. <laughs> do it. I'm gonna ride my motorcycle to the Mississippi River and swim across. Swim across. Do it in spring, like after the rainiest time of year when it's just surging that might be what i saw it was june Mm -hmm. it's probably pretty good yeah Yeah, i would like to go um um after we this week after we do our fitness podcast we should talk about like uh, (laughs) (laughs) what if we do we start a whole other podcast no (laughs) no no. one listens to it absolutely not we'll we'll you know six dozens thousands i don't know why there's people listening to this y'all know that right like like, (laughs) y'all know this isn't just for fun (laughs) <laughs> we're doing the fitness podcast shirtless <laughs> oh i'm out <laughs> and for that reason i'm out uh oh we talk about addresses and like sense of direction salt lake city does something kind of cool Are you guys familiar with this no all the addresses are based on their proximity to the more to the mormon church mm-hmm. so it'll be like and it's in like some unit of measurement. I don't I don't think it's miles, it's more like blocks or something. But an address will be like 124 east, 567 north. And mm-hmm. to someone who knows the code, they could freaking pinpoint it on a map and know exactly where it is. Bizarre. It's yeah. a nice like it's such if, a if you say city. you live on sorry, 13 Asbury Avenue in some town, like that means nothing to anyone who doesn't know where that street is. But with this sort of directional proximity to the church, they could put it right there. Fair. I suppose so. Um, I guess you don't need your your phone to to use a system like that. No, but I would still use it. Yes. (laughs) Just to know that I... For traffic and... I I hate getting lost. Like... my, like, my, I like I, it. I'll, I'll get lost like driving sometimes and I'm with my wife and like she'll like talk me off the ledge because like once I get lights like the thing I'm so insecure about my inability to know directions and I like get lost and she's like it's okay you just got to double back here and I'm like fucking every fucking time I'm such a fucking <laughs> retard I can't figure out simple fucking directions an idiot a monkey could do this she's like Taylor please Please calm down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, you want your fucking retard monkey boy husband to calm down? He can't figure out where he, oh, yeah. And I, 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 I get so mad at myself for directions. And like, it's gotten to be a real thing where like, if I take a wrong turn now, I'm like, you know what? No, Taylor, let's, you're not, you're not a stupid retard for taking a wrong turn that you've done a hundred times. But in some level, it's like, but I am for, for fucking that up again. I hate it. I, I get so you embarrassed when I fuck up directions. No, you need some crate home. <laughs> I need some Kratom. I need these these opiates Destiny's talking about. Show me the fuck. Are you upset about getting lost because you're in a rush, mad about making a mistake, or is it about being uncomfortable being lost? I'm uncomfortable being lost because even when I know where I am, I'm not 100% sure where I am. And, but mostly it's like simple misses that I shouldn't have gotten. And it's just like embarrassing. And it's like, what what is wrong with you? How can you not remember simple things? I get I, lost I all know. the time, Taylor. I can hardly, like, I am so comfy being lost. I don't give a fuck. Most <laughs> of the time, twice a week, I'll go on a motorcycle ride, just like, you know what? Today, northeast, which I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you if there's a car in front of Woody, me. Woody, that's, that's slow. south. Bye. <laughs> oh, it turns that way. It just starts. I lose all sense of direction. And then it, it'll be like, all right, you know what? I think towns are interesting to drive in. Anytime I think a car is slow, I'm turning. And that's just, Okay, that's our rule set for today. And who and then I don't know, 45 minutes later, so I'll turn on the GPS and find my way home. Yeah, I feel like I, you just did the uh the ego lift thing. 
So earlier you're like, uh, people complain about ego lifting. Um, you, you know, well, when, when you're, you know, you're benching 315 or whatever, now you don't ego lift anymore. It's like, okay, well, good for you. There's yeah. probably a difference between like getting upset that you're getting lost while trying to navigate to the grocery store than when you're taking a leisurely, you know, cross country tour and you're Harley just having fun. And sure. yeah, uh, <laughs> probably a different feeling. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I'm getting lost, I'm not meandering about. Yeah. I'm trying to get somewhere and I'm failing. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> different. That's the part I couldn't relate to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, oh, I hate directions. I, I don't like I, it. It's you know so what I don't nicer. like? Like, like, like. I feel like this is some old man shit to talk about, but like, it wasn't that long ago before there was no fucking navigation, and I, I can remember one time, I a bunch of times printing out the map quest, yeah, like having that paper, yeah. having that map quest paper in the passenger seat, fucking like, and, and so like nice looking over there, like. 285 east or west east or west east or west it's a big difference <laughs> and if you if you fucked up you had to go into the gas station and get the uh, every gas station had mm-hmm. the 50 state roadmaps and you'd open it up and you'd start counting the mile markers to see where you fucked up or whatever and yeah mm-hmm. oh, what i don't sucked. like now is when people start giving me directions it like you know oh you're going to here you're gonna to want to head like one and a half maybe seven and a half miles something like that up this road <laughs> make a left you can't miss it okay first of all your distance is ridiculous second you vastly underestimate my ability to miss things right mm-hmm. i can miss it i promise you and uh it, can we just skip ahead to the address part or i can ask siri for it but yeah. the thing you're doing now talking about all the lefts and rights what is this the fucking 70s stop it describing what the journey is going to be like more than giving you directions like 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 i don't like i don't i don't get that either i I can't imagine people try to do it and i'm like well you know i've got a phone with navigation in it (laughs) yeah i'm certainly not going to turn right at the big house yeah. You know, like, can, you, can you fucking give me the address if you see a guy pushing a grocery cart turn left there slow down are you sure smell <laughs> you start to smell yeah, it's, it's bullshit no. <laughs> but but I, but that was awful I, I i i was driving from franklin county georgia to fucking alpharetta with map quest directions and somehow I ended up on the wrong side of the fucking city heading to Alabama at one point. It was awful. <laughs> it was so scary for like 18, 19 year old me. Fucking yeah. turned out directions. Navigation's wonderful. And Waze is so good. Yeah, Waze like is Waze. the best one. It might be better. I haven't given it a try in a long time. But Waze used to have you turn way too much. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> You know, like there's a 14 minute drive, and it's got you driving through people's fucking living rooms. Turn fast to save you 20 seconds. You're taking like three left turns to like avoid a stoplight or something. (laughs) Waze was super. It used to. Google Maps has gotten better. Waze. Google Maps has gotten better, but Waze was the thing that, like, for LA, you were always on Waze way back in the Mm -hmm. day. I say back in the day, like five or six years ago, you were on Waze over Google Maps because Google Maps will have you like a. It'll be a 37 minute drive. You you know you get on the five, you go to the four or five, whatever, and then you're there. But on Waze, like you said, it'll be like 52 direction. And if you miss any of them, you're fucked. But it'll have you like, there's a stoplight up here and you're going left and you're like cutting through this neighbor's yard and then you're coming out here and then you're out past the stoplight and it's like, yeah, the, the Waze directions were insane. Cutting through a neighbor's yard is only He's, a slight exaggeration. Uh, <laughs> may, I, maybe, I don't know. Some of those Waze directions were crazy. Yeah. It, it was, in, it was like, actually crazy. Relax. Like this is a person's neighborhood. Why am I? Why are you sending traffic through it? It gave me like three options usually, and I, you know, I could pick the one that's like, yeah, I don't care, just put me on the interstate, let's go. I don't, I don't want to save a minute to drive through a town, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I love it for just like knowing where cops are, so that I can drive a little above the speed limit and knowing if there's gonna be a slowdown or something like that. Yeah, you know, the cop thing's good. They, you know, what they need to do is they need to have advisors on these apps that tell you, uh, okay, there is a cop running right over here, but how fast do you have to go for them to pull you over? Mm. That's what I want to know because that varies from state to state. Like I, I, I haven't gotten a spinning ticket so long, but I remember sometimes I would. I got pulled over one time going over. Uh, I was going like eighty-five and a seventy, mm-hmm. and the guy's like, oh, you know wow. how fast you were going? It's like, well, yeah, I was going fifteen over. Like, is that is that what we're is that what we draw the line at here? Because there's a bunch of people going eighty. You don't give a fuck about you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the the figuring out where the line is on like how because in some place you go five over and that's it. Not a lot of places you go like 10, 15 over, it doesn't matter. And then when you get like twenty or thirty over it, now you're getting yeah. your ass busted if a cop sees you. But yeah. I always try and stay at nine over. Nine, I, always nine feel over like, I feel like nine number. is like nobody's getting pulled over for going seventy nine in a seventy. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll make it fourteen over. The idea being that so when a police has a radar gun, sometimes it has an alarm on it and they'll set that. To what they give a fuck about and my guess is they use 10 and 15 as numbers mm-hmm. so if i use 9 and 14 as my numbers then i'm avoiding 
problems. That's the theory. It might be full of crap. But, I drive uh, 90 in the city, and I use Waze. 90 and in I, the city. I don't know what the speed limits are, but not like in the city. I mean, like <laughs> like around Atlanta, like on the on the highway. Dude, like, I don't like, even know the, the speed limits. <laughs> like, like, I don't, it varies from like 285 to 75. I to drive 90 to, in the city, and I hope those are speed bumps. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, and, and like, don't think that I'm the fastest car ever. Like, like, like I've never seen anybody get pulled over in Atlanta for speeding. How I've often never do you get happen. passed by somebody? Every like every five minutes, like somebody's flying oh, past me I going real fast. A motorcycle. Like every five if minutes. I'm going ninety, if I'm going ninety, a motorcycle will pass me going so fast that it looks like that that's that transition from Star Trek where it just goes <laughs> and like disappears <laughs> and it makes a noise that's just like boom. <laughs> tour space time for a second dude i I love those guys like when you're on like if i'm on highway 70 like just going straight towards like kansas city and some guy on a bike blasts past me going 40 over it's like you are a king thank you so much Mm -hmm. because now i can accelerate to like 30 over and just draft behind you and eventually he'll lose me but like i get you know a couple dozen miles they're the canary in the coal mine because you know yeah. as long as they're ahead of you going fast enough, you're not getting pulled over. Yeah, yeah, we do that on our like every so often. On, on our bikes, we like to go fast, and uh, if a bait car goes by, we do just what you said: follow him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everybody does that. Like, like if I'm going 85, I'm like, all right, let's keep an eye out. This isn't too fast, but I could get pulled over. But if somebody passes me going 90, I'm like, Phew. follow the leader. <laughs> That's a pretty on, fast yeah. flight, Kyle. Are you, are you comfortable going like? over 80 and such now well i noticed that over 80 i call that mr freeze because i think it gets down to about negative I, where's absolute <laughs> zero <laughs> it's zero kelvin do i need to go did I, did I do this in kelvin um, <laughs> uh i usually keep it i usually stay off the interstate especially recently because it's so fucking cold and i've yet to buy winter gear so i mm. just throw um a leather uh jacket over my my like riding stuff and throw on like some like sweatpants under my riding mm-hmm. pants and fucking go but i don't ride for very long like maybe an hour and when i get back that's i shoot. i'm glad um, you're still liking it so much that's fun it's uh it's so fast like it, i i like just being able to like zip around and like use acceleration at like low speeds i really don't enjoy going like super fast or anything i just like cruising around and being lazy on it yeah seeing how much fun you guys have on your motorcycles like it it it's one of those things that i want to want to do it mm. you know like I, I don't want a motorcycle and i don't want to ride one but i want to want it like because well, it, it looks so much fun it's kind of like having a superpower like you're not faster than every car, right? I, I think Teslas are faster, and you know there's there's a few and far between. But gosh, it, it's weird that acceleration can be a safety feature when you want to get away from what's happening nearby. It's a twist of the wrist, and and on my bigger bike, good gosh, it keeps accelerating for so long. If you're going mm-hmm. 90 and you want to go 115, that's quick. Yeah. If I want, if I'm going 90 in my truck and I floor it you probably won't notice. And it has mm-hmm. 400 horsepower. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, and, and at 105, it's limited. That's as quick as it goes. Oh, that's lame. I'm I mean, interested. What I, guess, I guess how often are you going? 110 in your truck? I, I really only <laughs> went, it, it indicated 106, but... Uh, Home Depot's having a second. Although you it. did find out, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, uh, on the bike, though, like, good... I, I was like, is it really lurch forward at 90? Let's try it right now and see what's up. Yeah, it does. You twist your wrist at 90... And like it pulls you back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that uh, power to weight ratio can't be matched by anything outside of a motorcycle. It's it's pretty wild. It's it's fun. It's scary too. Like I scare myself every week. I mean, something happens. <laughs> well, no accidents yet. You're doing good. You had the one that's not the first day. <laughs> okay, okay. That, the, the the bike tipping over. That's that's not really an accident. Yeah, that's what happened. I just tipped it over a little. Yeah, I just tipped it over. Just we weren't in traffic. Just have you had any other? Uh, <laughs> I, you haven't shared them. Have you had any other incidents that were like um, off the bike at all? I've like entered some curves incorrectly, but and had to like maneuver out of that. But st- I stayed on the fucking road, and the bike hasn't fallen over. Like, okay. It, 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 some I entered too slow, and some too fast. And just have you ever had this feeling where like you enter a curve quicker than you should have, and you probably know intellectually that your bike is capable of making this curve. If you took an expert rider, put him in that situation, he'd handle it masterfully. Mm-hmm. But for some reason you feel like you can't ask it to turn that fast. 
So you go straight and lock up the brakes or something instead. Like, has that ever happened to you? Um, I think they really drilled it into us in that, in that thing that like the bike will just do so much more than you think. And Mm -hmm. even on those shitty bikes at low speeds, I was always shocked at just how far I could lay it over. So I've had to lay mine over like a lot farther than I wanted to before. And it just stuck. And I really try to avoid that because it's scary as fuck. But what I, what I've also tried to do is like get it into my head that it's like, it's a better wreck if I'm late, if I lay over too far than if I, uh, and ride off to where bikes aren't supposed to go. Like who knows what that means. If it's a guardrail, a house, a yard, a barbed wire, fucking fence, Ditch. like any of that shit would be gruesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. No, but it's, you know, it's fucking scary. At times. <sighs> I'm excited to see what your next extreme hobby is. Woody. <laughs> Paramotoring uh, won't keep you safe. He needs to do something with his fitness, right? There has to be like, like, I think he should take that into the combat arena. Street fighting. I'm thinking that thing where you hang from hooks. Just add that to the gym. Suspension work. Little suspension work. Little hook play. That shit is so gross. Now you're judging my kinks. Yeah, what's your problem? That that's gross. I'm not a big fan. When we had Filthy on, and Filthy was like, like talking about it, like as a. Because I think he said he did it, right? Yeah. He he mm-hmm. did the suspension. Ugh. I c- I can't imagine that. That doesn't seem fun in any way. Destiny, we're talking about where they take those metal hooks and they hook it like subcutaneously and then they hang from yeah, the I've metal seen, hooks um, on there. This was a, uh, what, Saw 4, I think, where they had that trap with the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They borrowed it from these fucking weird people who enjoy doing it. Do it that. for fun. And it seems painful. It can't be good for you. There's... Wait, what There's is this? No there way. must be more to this because all you're telling me is they're hanging themselves from these hooks. Oh, so, so they, they so scoop hooks underneath their skin and then they hang up on a big apparatus and they'll like have someone fish. like push There's them. Lots of, lots they'll of they'll be hung by it. different areas of their skin. And sometimes, uh, like, it looks like it's about to just rip right through. Apparently, they, they get a huge rush of euphoria. It, it I, I'm no one to judge, but it almost sounds a little bit like self harm in some ways, but mm-hmm. but different in others. And it, it can also it can be like a BDSM thing as well as like sort of a spiritual thing because I see people do it a lot from like trees or or from like various kinds of platforms, and I see it involved in like religious ceremonies and all sorts of like rites of passage, and like people are doing it for different reasons. There's clearly a lot of Americans who just think it's fucking cool to hang themselves from hooks, though, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's not, not for cool. me. There's okay. suspension bondage that doesn't involve hooks. Totally. Right? Imagine like boots with a little circle on it, like you'd hook ropes. a collar to. Uh, ropes, boots, uh, bracelets that are like, you know, big and sort of meant for suspension. Um, that seems like the way to get started in suspension play. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. want to, I, I don't even think they're the same sport, really. I mean, you're both. But in both things are hanging, but I think that the, the hooks going in is the fucking main point of that. I, I, they're like, what? You're you're clipping in? What a pussy! Like, like I, think, I, think I guess, like, like I don't know. In my head, like if you're gonna get started in water sports, you pee on your partner in the shower. This is where we we introduce this to the yeah. to the, to the play. Uh, and then when you get more advanced, you move it to the bedroom. And then mm-hmm. when you get when you actually know what you're doing, you go back to the bathroom because you don't want to be pissing in your mm-hmm. bed. Certainly not. That's gross. Maybe. I, I can't imagine that advanced water sports sports people are pissing anywhere but their bathroom or outdoors, right? You're just nasty. Or, if you're not or doing some that sort of in the piss bathroom. room that they created in their house with, <laughs> where the whole floor is tile and had. Rain. It's like a slaughterhouse. It's all <laughs> sluiced. Eight, eight water <laughs> fountains. We've, we've redone the master closet. <laughs> now it's just a big pee room. It's the pissery. Welcome. <laughs> I've always wondered for like the amateur porn videos. Now I know that a lot of porn is shot in hotels, so I'm not thinking of those. Mm-hmm. But a lot of amateur porns when the guy's trying to like jerk out like a big cum shot. I noticed that they don't give a fuck about just spraying down their bed sheets and stuff or their walls or whatever. They'll just let loose. Now I'm so yeah. curious for these people's houses. Do they meticulously clean up afterwards or are they just living in their own like cum soaked filth? A lot Please. of them are Airbnbs as well. Like, like oh, that could be. Lot. Um, they, 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 they'll do Airbnbs a lot. Uh, and then, um, a, a lot of them, I think is just like, they have a, a place that they lease for filming and, and, and that's what the place just does. They don't mind, but, but I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Cleaning. They're not cleaning it up. They're just mm-hmm. not cleaning it up anywhere. Uh, you, you would definitely want to. It just goes away. After the, it just goes away. <laughs> it goes it's away. like, it's, it's just... like, what did Ricky say about like burning trash? How it just 
floats up in the air and turns into fucking stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know it fucking works. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's Who said it turns into ship. stars? And then, that was, oh, that was a, and it's always sunny. Always sunny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, I, I get that nice smoky smell in the bar, that nice smoky smell we all love. It smells like trash, Charlie. <laughs> like, I don't know enough about stars to say you're yeah, wrong. Like, it's it, right. it, 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 it goes, yeah, see what do you say? The, all of it burns up, goes up into the clouds of smoke, and turns into stars. Like, <laughs> I that doesn't sound right, but I don't know enough about stars to dispute it. Like, <laughs> I need to I need to catch up on this season. I think I'm two episodes in. Um, yeah, I, I started watching the new, like just released sunny yeah. season. It's uh, it's past time they ended the show. So let well, me ask you this, Taylor. It's you, not if, funny anymore. If you oh no, open your mind to this concept. Do you think the show is worse or the show failed to get better? Because if you just release a show that's as good for fourteen years in a row, people are done with it. I, I think it like did what a lot of shows did, where like it had that natural kind of building crescendo. You get to like seasons four, five, six, like tremendous high quality stuff and then it's almost like there's been a consistent tick down over the past five years especially like season 10 on has been markedly like not as good and i think most of it is like they're just running out of ideas they've done so many episodes they've done so much content they're all fucking hilarious people it's, it's still probably my favorite show all time I've, i don't think there's any show i've watched more every episode than it's always sunny but yeah they're just they, i don't, they don't know why they don't i have refuse to accept it but i my reaction to that was that the, you know, peaked in season five and then there was that steady tick down is that we're describing your enjoyment level of it, not the quality of the show. But I could be wrong. Maybe the show got worse. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of it is because like they set the anchor point on what the show is and they set the expectations like season two and on with Danny DeVito and the silliness and the raunchiness and the like uproarious, you know, insensitive uh, comments they make because they're supposed to be like shitty people and like they just kind of miss that mark as the seasons get so into they, later. They ones. become better people. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're, oh, they're, they're definitely things. not as, as shitty of people as they were. They were reprehensible. And what like they did to cricket four. is a crime. What they've done to cricket is, is awful. And, and it's, <laughs> it's really funny to watch the seasons go on. Cause like that, that actor now, every time he's on screen, like as of like season five, it's like, all right, well now every time, you're on screen. We have to put on this prosthetic dog vagina on your neck to simulate that cut. You know, when, when he made a joke about how like dogs were trying to fuck his neck wound because it looked like a dog pussy. But yeah, they, they, it used to be a lot more silly. Um, and I, I think you're, you're definitely right in some way that I'm holding it to a like the standard of its peak now and it's kind of dwindling season or you've expected that bell curve not to have a peak in the center that just to go up all the because yeah, I, 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 I do this to youtube channels a lot like i i watch a guy i think he's great and then a couple years later it's like well at this point i could write his script for him and mm -hmm. you know it, it like, just kind of get worse yeah. no he didn't get worse he's, he's the same guy it's yeah just, it, for some stuff that's definitely true uh, for Sonny, it's not like it, it's okay. definitely worse. Like I, I know all my friends who are big Sonny fans like agree with me of like, yeah, that's just it's not terrible. Like it's not like unwatchable. It's just not like I was watching like an episode of the new season with my wife just last night and she was like, this doesn't feel like Sonny. Like, like all the characters are so wildly different. Honestly, mm. like Mac being as jacked and like tan as he is, it's not as funny. How's that held up? Uh, as a joke, it's kind of like been drilled into the ground. As a game, he still he still looks still, tremendous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looks very good. He, he's he's jacked, and it is good of him that he like worked his clear obsession with fitness and being jacked into the show. Like a perfect excuse to stay fit. But yeah, mm -hmm. they're 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 on their last leg. I can't imagine they're going to do many more seasons. Is there a um? Do you think there's a type of episode or thing to look for? when a comedy show is like exhausted its options and kind of going downhill. So what I'm thinking of for a comparison is this has happened to so many drama type shows where you're three or four seasons in five seasons. And it's, you know, it's kind of the mm -hmm. same old China trade training. And then you get the episode that comes where somebody dies, not anybody really important, somebody kind of important. They kill somebody. They mm -hmm. either commit suicide like in house or, they can bird notice like a guy's brother got killed. There's always like that death. And it's like, oh, we ran out of ideas. Now we're 
trying to tap the uh, the whatever little mm-hmm. emotional r- reservoir we have left before we get to the finale. Do you think there's like a similar type of episode in like a comedy where you like, oh, we're seeing these episodes now. They must be out of shit to do. I have an answer. In yeah. a family-based comedy, like the Cosby show oh. or Growing Pains or something, they adopt a new kid. If they oh. adopt a new kid and make it, because now like that adorable mm-hmm. five-year-old is 12, bring in a new five-year-old. And when they do that, it, it's usually a sign that it's, it's not good anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, I think like a comedy show, like a, a very well-known example is The Simpsons, where there was like, you know, obviously every show they're transitioning writers in and out, but there's usually like the core. There was like some like there's a whole documentary on on YouTube of a guy like breaking down like why The Simpsons got bad. And he's like, it all started like season 10 with like a writer change or something. And they took Homer from like being the character you know probably started before season 10 i don't recall and they make him like so stupid like he can't read anymore he's like retarded like they took what homer was which is like you know you, everybody knows who homer simpson is and they push it so far <clears throat> to the edge that they it, that it's no longer like endearing like now homer's like like mean spirited and retarded almost like he's not this guy who's like got a good heart for the most part but he's kind of a little simple the simpsons has a good one with that um what you just said described um to me and i had i didn't watch any of the seasons by season two but rick and morty that absolutely happened with the um mm-hmm. do you, have you seen any of these this show uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i've seen most of the new season yeah so jerry the father I, maybe this changed in a later season but jerry the father in season one it's exactly what you said like mm-hmm. yeah he's a goof and he messes up but like he loves his family they have a whole episode where they go to pluto or whatever and like mm-hmm. that that's really important to him and his, his relationship with the son and not being as smart as rick but you know still being a special dad in his own way and what are you telling him that and then in mm-hmm. season two he's just like this goofball dip shit idiot dumb fuck with no redeeming qualities and it's like just die like leave already you're so horrible and worthless he's so not funny because I, I feel like this is something that tv does to white men because it's totally okay to shit all the fuck over them it could be homer simpson it could be king of queens it could be jerry if there is a white male father i guess male father um i can there's a really good chance that guy's going to be a fucking dipshit before this show is finished. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like that, that is. You can see the same thing in commercials mm-hmm. where it's like, I mean, obviously commercials do that because the primary audience for every commercial is a woman. They're the chief purchasers in any home. And so, like, they're never going to have a Swiffer commercial where, like, a put together dad, like, offers a solution to a frazzled and oh, out of her league <laughs> mother. Like, it's always the other way because that's, like, the target they're going for. But I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, I on a related note, and, and maybe this is good for society, but you can almost hardly find a bad guy of color in Hollywood anymore. It's I, there was definitely a bit of an overcorrection, I would say. I could definitely see like the cringe in like the eighties, nineties, where every bad guy is either like Russian or Middle Eastern. Like, at some <laughs> point, it's kind of like okay, all yeah, Igors yeah. and Ivans. And- <laughs> yeah, I get it. All right, there another one of me on screen is a fucking terrorist. Okay, that's cool. I can definitely see it, but. I think the worst overcorrection, I think it could be seen on both ends. It's not even that like white people tend to be bad or whatever. It's that you actually lose a lot in, um, in, in a movie when the main character isn't allowed to struggle because you're worried about showing a minority doing bad at something. My, I, a really good example is, I don't know if you guys get triggered for superhero movies, but that Captain Marvel movie or like okay. the Star Wars movies with the one girl um, or, or woman, I guess. Ray. Where, yeah, where the, the character is never, ever, ever shown having a substantial failure. And it feels like the reason why is because they're really worried. Like, well, we show a woman failing, she looks weak. But then there is no, uh, like, you don't ever get that hero's arc. Then there's no like, character development. Yeah, and they're just, like, really strong, and they get stronger, and they're really strong, and they beat up everything, and they do everything the whole way through. And it's, like, it's so weird that in my childhood, I had really good women role models in uh, Sigourney Weaver in Alien, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Kiddo, Beatrice, whatever, in Kill Bill, amazing. You get these really good female characters that struggle and they overcome and they kick ass and that's like what the male characters do and the female characters do that. And then these days you get these women characters that are like unstoppable from day one. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay. And there's nothing at stake if the protagonist of any movie is unstoppable. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, so you've got an answer for everything. Well, I, I, there's no tension. Yeah. So... Yeah, I haven't seen those uh, those Marvel movies you were talking about, but yeah, I saw Captain Marvel. I liked it more than most people. Most people really didn't like it. Well, not I can't say that it was a super successful movie, but a lot of people had criticisms of it, and I didn't think it was as girl powery as everyone made it out to be. 
but I do think Destiny had a pretty good point. She went from good to really good to great. It's like, well, that's kind of an like, arc. <laughs> the movie opens with her getting captured on an alien ship, and she breaks out of everything all on her own and destroys everything and break and does everything. And at every point in the movie, I don't know if she ever needs help from anybody. She's like just <laughs> constantly blowing everything up, showing up awesome, blows Doesn't it up. Doesn't she lose it's... fights and she's psychologically manipulated by that guy to like not use her powers? Does and she, she eventually ever, sort of breaks through or breaks free from his suggestions. I don't think she ever loses a fight ever. All I remember, well, mm. I remember the movie. I watched the movie, but I, like right? I, I most there's some ties. <laughs> maybe like a maybe. training partner, dude. Okay, her tra- some guy. of the training flashbacks. <laughs> yes, she did. No, actually, even those were barely losses because I think there were parts where she was going to win, but then the guy's like, "You're not being responsible with your power or some shit." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that so they were she lost, but only because she didn't realize her true inner strength that she always had the whole time, and it's like, uh, I don't <laughs> you're know. right. Yeah, and then um, didn't she have some like stress period where she played little league baseball? And it turns out she like hits a home run. Do, am I remembering this right? Probably, yeah. Where she was always like, "Oh, look, you've always been special," you know. This yeah. sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. There have to there have to be stakes for any movie to be worthwhile. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, the like Star Wars one was especially like watching the first one where she has access to like every. I don't know if you guys see Star Wars a lot, but I've, I've seen the movies at least. I don't know any of the stuff. But she has mm-hmm. access to like every single special Jedi power immediately, just immediately right off the bat with no anything and it's like she didn't oh, have to like train the way uh luke did with the other no, she like picks up a lightsaber and she's just good at it and she well, like is that, that would even make like, sense yeah crazy powerful like force techniques that have never been seen in the whole show like at the, at the very beginning like as soon as she runs into a guy that's been training like his whole life or whatever and it's like okay well isn't yeah. the whole lore of star wars that like the most powerful jedi ever is luke skywalker right I think it was Anakin, I'm wasn't it? I'm not sure. Anakin? Okay. Because then I, okay. it wouldn't make sense for her to march in and be able to do a bunch of stuff that like uh, Vader and uh-huh. the other ones didn't. I'm not close to Star Wars at all. I haven't seen any of the new movies. Yeah, me neither. So I'm scared about getting this wrong. all as canon. I don't, I'd always heard that Anakin <laughs> was like a born of the force, like Virgin Mary. He was like the special, super powerful baby that becomes like Anakin. And then you, you might be him. right. It, it, the, it would make more sense for the most powerful person ever to be on the bad guy side, you know. Uh-huh. It, that keeps it interesting. <clears throat> the funniest oh. part for the last three movies was they did one director for the first one, a different one for the second one, and they brought back the first director for the third one. And it's very obvious because in the uh, in the first movie, there's a huge deal made about who's who raised and uh, parents were because you don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. this is a really important thing. And then in the second movie, they're like it doesn't matter. Anybody can have the force. And it's actually like, it's so cool. And like at the end, there's like some little boy stands up and it's like, anybody can be a Jedi. And then in the third movie, like, no, actually her dad was like Palpatine, the dark emperor. And it's actually, she actually has the most important blow in all time. Cause I guess the directors <laughs> had a differing vision on how they should actually uh, end the movie or, or what the plot line was or whatever, which is. I'm always dislike that. Kyle's going to help me with this word, but in Jedi's originally, like in the first ones, it seemed like it was a kind of Kung Fu that you could study and learn. And you just, blindfoldedly oh. get shot by uh lasers and stuff and develop your force kind of and then later there became a i'm going to slaughter the word for an assist there was like a mitochondria level blood. is what they okay. call it yeah all right so there's a midichlorian mm. level in your blood that determines how pure successful strong a jedi you are and here i am as a child like oh well, fuck, I guess my midichlorian level's probably zero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, so much for my powers. That whole thing, like, like I, I don't even like talking about Star Wars because it was just like, it was made to be another one of those bullshit movies, those sci-fi movies, and somehow George Lucas stumbled upon a few things that worked really well. The, the CGI, like the and the models like like being the main thing, like, like that just blew everybody Audio. away from back then. Really good. Yeah, but the acting is atrocious. The story is okay at best and it, it meanders the writing's awful and, and 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 but like the idea of fucking space ninjas is badass like like your space wizards is what they are and, and but then like going back and always like adding more to it and tinkering with this and that it's space just, cowboys kind of they're blasters they're more no? like space monks right like uh-huh. like like if anything the you know jedis but they the... don't mm. yeah the jedis I agree. I guess, you know, Han Solo is not a monk. Han Solo is a space cowboy. Also not a Jedi. I know, but his, uh, he's his, in Star Wars. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, there's lots of people in Star Wars, but the, the, the Jedi are what are cool. Like, like I don't care. Everybody's not aliens. Like, like Han Solo is just like white guy with a smart mouth who's like a rogue. You know, like they they cop they they copy pasted that one. I I just hate Star Wars. I just don't like anything about it. <laughs> they, they just never made a good fucking movie, and they never will. But the animated Clone Wars are excellent. Um, I uh, but but everything else is fucking garbage, and it's not even it's not a good story, and uh, they're hard to watch. The CGI is not even that fucking good anymore. And um, I, I hate it. And I, I hope that they stop. I hope something awful happens. I hope someone, <laughs> I hope someone like raise uses like wears like a Yoda mask and does something horrific. Like, like <laughs> someone I, I, commits a terrorist attack I, wearing a Yoda you said mask. That. You said that, sir, and that is uncalled for. All right, right, right before Christmas, calling for terrorism. I, I, I just don't know where you draw the line, sir. <laughs> um, but, but if someone did something, you know. Something that was Culturally pointed out to me with the with the with the Star Wars mask on. We could we could put an end to this once and for all. I remember reading a, it was either a review or a video or whatever. Somebody pointed this out, and I've never been able to get this out of my mind. It is so absolutely true. The Star Wars world, at least in the in the movies, the Star Wars universe is really small. Even though it's like a universe full of stuff, there's not really anything going on you ever actually really care about that much. Um, and I compare this to another childhood favorite one. It's Harry Potter. I love the Harry Potter world. I always felt like there were a million other things, a million other stories, tons of stuff going on. Like you could make like 50 million movies or books that are just off of like the stuff in the Harry Potter world. The Star mm-hmm. Wars universe though seemed so dead and empty in the movies. I know we went through a couple other planets. Like I didn't care about any of the aliens. It seemed like there were like four Jedis in the history of the existence. And like, and like three know. planets. They've yeah. got four Jedi, three fucking planets and enough mm-hmm. flying cars to make me vomit. I don't <laughs> care about your fucking toys, you hack. It's, it's not good. It's not good. Like, but and that Hayden Christian guy couldn't fucking act. I don't know. I love that the Mandalorian. Sucked. Like I'm, I'm huge Mandalorian fan. I've got Mandalorian fucking merchandise and shit, memorabilia, whatever the fuck. But like, and I'm gonna be down for Boba Fett too. I think that the direction they've taken that with the semi realism and just so much less de- Deus ex machina wizardry, like it's just better when you've got characters that are that powerful. It's hard to make stories for them. You have to yeah. do things like nerfing by exclusion, which is where like, oh yeah. Superman's cousin's birthdays today, so we gotta we gotta roll up our sleeves and handle this one ourselves. You know, you're always having to remove the Jedi from mm-hmm. the equation or find a match for him, which is difficult to do. I really loved the last scene <clears throat> in the in the most recent scene of Mandalorian, though. I don't know how many times I've rewatched it with different scores. Somebody was like, "Oh, it's so much better if you use um, Luke Skywalker's theme from the original trilogy." Oh, when he goes to the ship or whatever. Yeah, so I'm like, "All right, let's watch it with that. It's better." Better how that are you, way. How are you is. doing that? You just played it and synced it up with no, something. No, someone on edited it. Oh, There's nerds mm-hmm. out there to do this kind of work. <laughs> I haven't watched. I that. haven't rewatched the last scene in the Mandalorian. I bet there's a new episode coming out before too long. It seems like it's been ages. Boba will be the first thing I think. I saw that advertised pretty heavily, like you know the the spinoff, the Boba Fett spinoff. Hmm. And I'm down for that. I hope that um, I don't know who's behind the Boba Fett th- stuff. I hope that Jan- John Favreau has something to do to do with it, and it's still kind of gritty and fun and lighthearted at times as well with i like bill burr being in there usually i hate when they stick someone who's not like if you'd stuck a comedian into something else that i loved i'd have been so upset but somehow bill burr works because the mandalorian is so like sort of like i don't know like it's distracting how he's like from space boston He's from space, Not Boston. Me. I, yeah. I, to me, from the southeast side of the galaxy. Yeah, from the <laughs> <side>. <laughs> the uh, I don't think Bill Burr like does his stand up in the Mandalorian. I kind mm-hmm. of like that he's a genuine actor who does a fine job. I don't really mm-hmm. notice him as he's Bill doing, Burr. So I think he's a he's a decent actor. He's got this one note he plays very well, and that's exasperation. Mm-hmm. Um, it, Bill Burr does exasperation very well it's that what do you mean you're gonna make me do this and then you're gonna make me do that ah the humanity and like on and on it's it's really funny like like you can do that bit over and over they did it in the mandalorian i think like maybe when they're like driving the car to the place mm-hmm. i was gonna say something about a mask on mask off maybe he was fresh yeah he has, he has fun but then he, like he you actually got a little yeah. bit of acting out of him when he like kills the like rebel or the the imperial general or whatever the fuck um i don't know mandalorian's sick Car- clone wars is sick um i could probably watch watch that very first movie again but like you know the one from the 70s where like luke first starts off and empire strikes probably, back better i could probably watch that one um return of the jedi sucks balls that's the last one right yeah with the with you're the right i 
You guys like um, Pokemon stuff, maybe Taylor more, mm-hmm. because you were at the right age when that hit. Yeah. When Return of the Jedi's hit, I was down for fucking stuffed animal Star Wars a little bit. You no, know, I can like, feel you. No, you know. like, like that was cool for then. Like, like that was, I mean, like, I, it was pretty fucking cool. Like when I was a kid and I watched it for the first time, but it just, none of that holds up for me anymore. And maybe it's not yeah. supposed to, like, maybe that's what, we, what like people like me need to wake up to is that it is a kid's movie. It's, it, it appeals to adults, but it's primarily a kid's movie. Yeah. We need more like rated R sci-fi stuff. That's not just like and superhero. Horror. You know, what I just watched was Pandorum. That's one of my favorite uh, R-rated oh, sci-fi. Yeah, that's a good one. Movies so I, I, good. Yeah, Ben Foster and uh, a couple other actors. I can't think. Randy Quaid. You what didn't just the, see it for the first Randy time. Quaid? I've seen it many times. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. a favorite. What, what are the good sci-fi rated R's? <clears throat> Event Horizon, Pandorum. Obviously, to- Alien, Total Termin- Recall. That's all right. Alien Termin. Well, yeah, Total Recall kind of fits. Anything that uh, is it Philip K. Dick that wrote all that nonsense? The, yeah, he wrote yeah. the, the Blade Runner shit. Like, uh, what is it? The, the Android Dream of Mechanical Sheep or something. Um, I like I, I like sci-fi. I guess I guess Blade Runners are that's that's our rated sci-fi. But it's been a long time since there's been anything good. Um, what I don't want is another like PG thirteen Will Smith. Yeah, movie of any kind, I'm done with that kind of sci-fi. I think I like really gritty, dark sci-fi, sort of gothic uh, stuff involved. Uh, dark City, if you've never seen that, that might be one for you to go to. I've never heard of that. Yeah, not many people have. <clears throat> Don't look too much into it. I think there's a bit of a twist at the end, but uh, it's uh, it feels a little bit like The Matrix at times. Really good though. Speaking of the Matrix, that came out. Anybody oh, watch man. the new Matrix? So uh, b- before we talk about the Matrix, oh yeah, yeah got to hear from a couple of. Wonderful sponsors. Uh, Fall is here and we could all use a stiff breeze. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive, receive your prescription within days. The best part is it's all done online, so no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. We've got a special deal just for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the $5 of shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code PKA to get your first month free. Just the $5 in shipping is all you owe. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show. Thank you, thank you. They, <laughs> they put the thing in the, at the end to say thanks. But, um, yeah, you get, I believe, if it's the same as we got uh, a couple years ago, it's three pills for free. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. Use code PKA. You want a harder dick, and you deserve yeah. a harder dick. So go thank ahead you for and get sponsoring yourself the some. show. And thanks for what you've done for my dick. Yes, thank you so much for the penile benefits I've experienced <laughs> as a result of their product. <laughs> high high quality stuff. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Feels CBD. CBD isn't about what you feel; it's about what you don't feel. Stress, anxiety, pain, and Feels is a better way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will help keep your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free, directly delivered to your door. CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover and no addiction. Place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everybody's dose is different. In fact, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. Joining the Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash PKA and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S, F-E-A-L-S dot com slash P-K-A to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels dot com slash P-K-A. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash P-K-A. 50% off and free shipping on your first order. So that's a hell of a deal you should take advantage of and help you with your uh, your sleeplessness, your pain or nervousness, all with no side effects. 
Uh, this episode of PK is also brought to you by Smart Mouth. Everybody hates talking to someone with bad breath. That humid, awful smell keeps you from fi- focusing on anything other than finding an excuse to leave. Now just think of all the times you were the gross, smelly one and the other person was thinking about getting away. You probably can't think of any examples. That's because we rarely have an accurate read on our own breath odor. In other words, you could be walking around with trash mouth, not even realize you're grossing everybody out. That's why Smart Mouth was invented. Smart Mouth's clinically proven two-liquid formula combines to instantly eliminate bad breath and prevent bad breath from returning all day long. Rinse once in the morning for all-day clean breath and once before bed to prevent morning breath. Just two uses a day and you'll never have bad breath guaranteed. Whether the boardroom or bedroom, having confidence in your breath spells success. So go to smartmouth.com slash PKA now for a free coupon. You can find Smart Mouth products in the oral health aisle at Walgreens, CVS, Target, Rite Aid, Amazon, Walmart, or wherever you shop. Once again, that is smartmouth.com slash PKA for your free coupon. Click on their link. We know they like it. They all love when we click their links, guys. (laughs) So click on all the links. Um, And of course, Lock and Load. Lock and Load just got back in stock today or yesterday. So if you're tired of busting like a little bitch and you want to come like a man, it's time you start taking it seriously. It's time you start you start buying our cum pills off the Internet. You know what's happening to you guys. The story is as old as time. You video yourself blowing a load thinking you're going to send it to your honey and then you don't because it's an embarrassment. It's a bullshit load. And women, they, and you know what, you want to know what women talk about behind closed doors? It's the size of your load. That's, that's what <laughs> women care about. I've talked, I've talked to lots of women, lots of smart women who are talking about women. this. So, yeah, lock and load. It's a girl back asked me how many milliliters I was last night on Tinder. Right? I, no, she said millimeters. Told, I proudly told her nine and a half. <laughs> nine and a half mils. That's yep. a huge load of cum. That's, right. that's multiple spoonfuls. You're goddamn right it is. Yeah. Multiple spoonfuls. So and we're getting. Spoon I mean, out. how do you measure you that old Tommy wooden spoon? We're gonna make this weird. <laughs> how do I measure old tablespoons now? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, lock and load back in stock, and then uh, we are out of our um, sweaters. They're still sold out, but we still. But have if you want a good comrade, wonderful hats, <laughs> we have this scarf here, and you're gonna need it. Believe me. Okay. It's it's absorptive. Absorptive. See, we're out of sweaters. Absorbed. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Absorbing. What is it? I'm not gonna help you. What Absor- is that? Don't you Google, you fuck. I don't have, I have this in my hands. Absorb, absorptive? Absorption? It's got good absorption, but is there a word for that? Since when did Woody start doing the ad reads? He, 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 he can't pronounce words or remember things. Hey, I was going to get out of thesaurus, but be sure you, you get the, they are limited uh, time only. I don't, we're probably not selling them after like a couple you days know, from when you see this. All the PKA shit is, is low key limited availability. Lock and load was out of stock for like months. If you want uh, it, just buy it. If you yeah. really do want Andy St. Uh, the lock and load, you, you should buy like a couple bottles probably because it is going to go out of stock soon. We're, it's selling really, really fast again. Um, it really does work. Uh, my, my sales pitch is always really simple. There are other cum pills on the market. They're, they tell you to take one pill. That's easy, right? Like, like that's what you would, if you were making up a make believe drug, cool. you would tell everyone it's one pill. Ours takes nine pills a fucking day. Okay. Jesus. If we wanted to rip you off, <laughs> we would have told you to take one of our pills and we'd have filled them up with sugar or sawdust or whatever the fuck. We made a pill that makes you come a lot, like a shockingly large amount. And for fifty dollars, you can find out for yourself. If you don't care, then I'm sorry I wasted your time just now. Yeah. Yes. I, what is it? Okay, hold on. What is the story behind this? Why? Did uh, why indeed? <laughs> <laughs> it was the the fast forwarded story is Kyle I was born I, into the jizz biz. Okay. About, <laughs> it was probably a, a, about a year and a half ago or so that Kyle and I were texting, like one of us brought it up in our like group chat. That like, oh, I take zinc and a couple other things so that I bust fatter loads. And Kyle was like, I do the same thing. And so Kyle and I shared our our formulas for how to bust the most. And then we got in contact with Derek, who owns Gorilla Mind, uh, the, the, the supplement company. And so we gave Derek our proprietary blend. He did some research on his own. We figured out the most essential things to bust a lot. And uh, then we were like, it would be so funny if like we made this into a product. And so we made it into a product. Okay. And so yeah, we need to hook you up with some cum pills. You do you do you ever come and you're like, ugh, that's not what I wanted to see. I wanted more than that. Usually for me, I think it usually comes down to hydration and then time spent messing around, basically, and then time since your last ejaculation. But it sounds like mm-hmm. we could add another coming. multiplier to you. Yeah, we can standard yeah. range, right? You're like, oh yeah, when I come a lot, I do this. When I come little, I do that. 
my guess is you haven't seen what you're capable of. Yeah. <laughs> Most people haven't. Most people would be aghast at, at what they can achieve natural. I, well, it's not natural. I, but. This is my story. I've told it, but it's it's true. About a week in, I was like, I don't know why Kyle and Taylor say it takes like three or five weeks for it to work. I am clearly having bigger loads. And then like five weeks in, I was like, I thought that was a big load. <laughs> that wasn't big. There are levels to this game. Yeah, it's we've said before, it's going to like it's going to be like emptying half a bottle of wood glue on your fiance. <laughs> is this not to uh, break <laughs> into the proprietariness, of course, of the secret formula, or whatever. Is this based on the um, there was a post a long time ago about the cum stack. You mentioned like the zinc and stuff. Is it like is it related to like this, like these types of things? I, I'm sure it is. We I don't know the exact every post. resource the Internet had to bear. <laughs> OK, okay. True. We, yeah. we, we turned over. We left no stone. No cummy stone unturned. And, and it's uh, trial and error. You do nine pills a day every yes. single day. <laughs> nine pills at the, the proprietary blend. Uh, I was taking many more than nine at one point because I had. <laughs> first of all, I this take honestly like eight, simplifies it. I take like a, I like I take like twenty pills a day anyway for like my supplementation. But the with the cum st the cum stuff when I was like taking like oh yeah I want to add this part or that part it was a pill for each ingredient that and now there's all those ingredients just go into one pill so it, it used to be more than nine yeah. but now it's nine and... a little scary it says do not exceed nine capsules in a 24-hour period <laughs> don't do I it know what happens do my explode. explode does does she drown is there a drowning risk in this we're, like, we're, what will be held responsible for drowned <laughs> spouses exploding <laughs> prostates or, or any of the like if you have taken more than yeah. nine of these capsules at a See, time that, that's a that's another way you can tell it's legit we wouldn't put do not exceed the dose if it was like yeah just take fucking all of them who cares it's not, yeah. like, like on like, this type of product it sounds like the worst warning like imagine if there was like a penis enlargement and it was like if your penis has grown at least two inches stop taking them you don't know how big your dick will get like you must <laughs> stop at this measurement like i, I yeah. think the the reason for all, all that is, aside, uh, there's a there's a very high amount of selenium in it and the selenium is like what gives a lot of pearlescence to your cum and you don't want to go any higher than the 400 micrograms of selenium we have. That's already quite a bit. So it, it would uh, be like it. looking at the sun if you added <laughs> yeah. more whiteness to your cup. It, it becomes <laughs> bioluminescent. It would be <laughs> it's like a deep sea creature. <laughs> it would be like it would be like you'd start going bald. So don't supplement selenium on top of lock and load, and don't take more than nine fucking pills a day. Like like there's stuff in these pills. Like there's supplements in them, so you can't overdose. You some 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 things you can overdose on, and this is one of them. Don't do yeah, that. Th this Jesus. is not like, like we keep saying. This, <laughs> this is not really, this is way control. more extensive than I thought it was. Okay. Everything <laughs> in Gorilla keeps. Mind is like maximum efficacy. You know, their pre-workout doesn't have like a bullshit amount of uh, creatine in it or caffeine or whatever. Like he researches the most effective dose, and that is the dose in his thing. He doesn't have de minimis amounts of, of something just so he can mm -hmm. put it on the label. He has the maximum efficacious dose. Yeah. So ours is no different. It's real. I mean, anyway, maybe. And the, did we even say coupon code PKA? But that works on all yeah, this Yeah, coupon shit. code PKA. You can get whatever you want if on If you this want, site. like, a pre-workout that doesn't suck along with your cum pills, then <laughs> you can get that, I'm, too. I had to hijack this. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm reading yeah. through these now. Oh, we're all done. So, five-star rating. My wife divorced me after I left a super physiological load on her face. I'm going to my trend cycle and nearly drowned her in cum. She said she doesn't feel safe with me anymore due to how much cum I'm shooting. Would definitely recommend the product to those looking for high-volume loads. There's risks in yep. that. <laughs> yeah. might might destroy your relationship you that, might have that, you might have water damage in your that, home that man is running <laughs> that rant that man is running cattle test uh testosterone right now and he thinks our product is the most dangerous thing in his in his uh right now. That's, that's no i worthy. mean it, it's it's a high quality product we stand yeah. by it we need to figure out what just retarded thing we can do next what what's something that people don't need <laughs> just, just at all that we can first help of all with, with first Derek. of all i i'm i'm waiting in the wings with my cum flavor enhancing formula <laughs> and and I, for this one i have to ask that i be the sole owner because the product testing for this one was it, it took a toll all right and i mean but I you had a lot back. of wonderful guys to help now. you 
Yeah, I mean the team. Yeah, the, the, team. the yeah. team. The team. Kyle acts like he's the one that tasted his cum. I'm over here giving the feedback. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Why are you cutting me out of this? I I feel really used. It's, it's all it's going to be is a bunch you of bromelain. Weird. Like, like, like <laughs> we weren't going to test the product at all, and Woody was adamant. <laughs> adamant. I just don't way, know if people care about is, the man. flavor of their cum. I'm gonna make. What? How about, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. Pina camelata. <laughs> oh, pina no, camelata. No, uh, that's good. I, I like. No, no. That's. I'm. I'm entering in for the trademark Did I right peak? now. Did that, <laughs> that just stop there? Pina camelata. Yeah. Uh, can we can we get a, a Jimmy one. Buffett guy, like impersonator to do a whole song for it for the ad read? I bet there's a cameo guy that would do Jimmy Buffett for us. I'm on it. Or a Fiverr guy. We get an Indian guy to sing Jimmy Buffett. All right. for us. All right, let's finish this talk up on our fitness uh, podcast because um, it's, it's supplement related. Um, <laughs> let's we'll do. Let's start, a, let's start a yeah. fitness podcast. I'm gonna yeah, start. I, I that's mean, where my most obvious gains are. Mm-hmm. In, when you do fitness size. podcasts, no ejaculate size. Let's see. I mean, oh, got a little little <laughs> honest, abs. Some bigger honestly, biceps, yeah. Like, like I I put on like thirty pounds of muscle or something, but my loads have increased by like a thousand percent. Like it pales yeah. in comparison to any like sort of lean tissue gains that I may have made. Yeah. You, you're, up. you're hooking up with a girl and you're four weeks into your stack, your load stack. She's going to be blown away. Literally. Like she, she's going to feel like she did the best job in the history of fucking, but by, by the amount that you shoot out onto her. That so. aspect is hilarious. Mm-hmm. It's could, a good, it's a confidence boost for them. It's, it's, it's borderline a hysterectomy. If you give a woman a cream pie. <laughs> Yeah, she like gets a runny nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> coming out of their nose. Uh, anyway, All right, that's an upcom. Yeah. That's um, funny. <laughs> Dusty, I'm what getting have you been streaming lately. Oh, Kyle, did you? Want no, to- no, no. Go, go ahead. You talk about the streaming. I was going to talk about fucking food. What have you been streaming lately, Destiny? You used to do a lot of politics talk. Are you still? Yeah, I still do. That's my bread and butter. And then League of Legends, god awful game, but. Generally I feel though. like politics, uh, in the same way that baseball is just not as good without the Yankees in it, politics isn't as good without Trump in it. Thoughts? I mean, he he definitely had that entertainment factor. I mean, he was a reality TV show star, right? Entertainment factor? And, and I don't know that he was always... Entertaining makes it sound more calculated and purposeful. You know, when no, he, you can have a retarded kid that is doing some dumb shit over and over again and it's entertaining. That sounded bad. I shouldn't say that. But you can have a, there are, if I be mindful of my audience, there, you can definitely have entertaining stuff where the person's not trying to be entertaining, but they're very fucking funny to love it. And I think Trump yeah. put on that pretty well. I, 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 we'll see. I, I'm really interested to see how the next. I want him back. I want him back. I want him to win. I want Joe Biden to have, here, look. First of all, when I say these things, you should all know that I mean them from the bottom of my heart. And <laughs> second of all, <laughs> that in no way do I think any of this is good for me or the country. I just think it'd be fucking funny. I want Trump to, to go against Joe Biden again. And like I said last, I, I did this before the this last cycle. I think my dream, my monkey paw wish was that like Joe Biden have like a complete meltdown and like not have a senior moment, but have a senior campaign where it slowly degenerated to the point where he literally shit his pants on a stage. And, and like, it was, and there was no question that he, he like, he's like made a boom, boom. And like pointed at his pants. Like I, I wanted that level of meltdown <laughs> and for Trump to be also be a complete train wreck with all sorts of stuff coming out. But because his opponent literally pooped himself, like he, he just falls ass backwards into the presidency again. I would love that to happen. That I don't know what thing. happens to Kamala Harris during all of this. I'm th- I don't think I'm allowed to. I think everybody, I think around the world is wondering what the next uh, presidential election cycle is going to look like. There's yeah. Who do you see coming out of the primaries? I don't, I don't do any of that. P- some people will like obsessively follow people through before. I, I just wait until the. I think that's less interesting topic anyway. The most interesting side to me, shockingly, is the incumbent side. It, it's it's. It's does does he come back and try to go again? Does Kamala step in? Does she run, or do they look for somebody else on the bench on the on the Democrat side? Like there are people there, there are popular people there. Even and, if Biden was dying, I don't think you ever throw away your incumbent advantage. They I, I asked think. him. They yeah. asked him if he was going to run, and he was 
not like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. 20, he, he was like, well, you know, if I feel as good as I feel today, then, mm -hmm. then, um, he was, yeah. And, and they were like, would you like to, what if it's Donald Trump? He's like, why would I say no to that? Uh -huh. Oh, now you're real. Now you're getting me excited. Yeah. He, yeah. He definitely came good. across as iffy. But if you remember during the primary cycle, I think, or maybe it was after he won the primaries, he said he wouldn't run again. He was, mm -hmm. he actually said that resolutely. So it seems like he's going back on it. And it's like, that's I just, likely I, what he means. And this doesn't seem like one of those things where like, it's a big deal to do four more fucking years of this in another campaign. Like, For like sure. I, I bet he bows out. And no so like, way. it's just bet? to throw away that, do I want to bet on whether he doesn't run again? Barring, do I get to say barring any major health issue or no? No, no, that's, 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 that, <laughs> that's what, that's what <laughs> edges me in. <laughs> We're going to be dies. He's obviously not going to run again. Yeah, that counts. I win in that case. <laughs> You know what? I'll do a friendly hundred dollars. Oh on God! Him. Holy right. shit! That's Welcome high stakes around here. We we bet pennies here. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know if you were gonna bring out the because sometimes we're like oh five grand. You know, at least okay. Yeah, I'll do no. twenty bucks. Twenty bucks to heal absolutely. Even twenty is four times higher than we our standard. Five dollars. We can absolutely do twenty dollars that okay. Joe Biden does not run for president. Okay. I, I think that's the bet. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I don't think he will, and, and and I'm really interested to see who they go to because like, God, Bernie is ancient. Kamala is very unlikable, I think, um, it, within certain groups that they really need to bring along. Can I pause on that? It yeah. almost doesn't matter what you think or what I think. The, the data is what it is. She is unliked. She's the mm. most unpopular vice president since they started polling that. I don't know when that... It, Pence was more popular. Mm. So she's a very weak candidate. Yeah. So, and then you've got Hillary, of course. There's, there's so many bad answers to this question on the Democrat side. That's what's really interesting. And I don't quite know who the good answer is. I but, like Buttigieg, but I mean, the numbers are in. Not everybody does. Mm. Yeah, He's, I think he has he a real issue as, with African Americans. And he comes off as an elitist, kind of. I think like you're trying to get to the. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They made a huge deal during. Oh wait, I thought that was in response to me, but it was something else. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, he made a face, but I guess something happened in the background. Yeah, I think I think the the Democrats are definitely aiming more center leaning um, because that they have ran off in some cases in their messaging so far to the left that it's alienating a lot of different types of voters. And you're starting to see now where Hispanics are becoming less and less a guarantee for the Democratic Party and minorities in general that were like a sure Democrat vote um, are even though nobody likes to talk about this, they're a lot more socially conservative than a lot of white people in the Democratic Party. And I think you have to be mindful of stuff like that um, because these votes that were surefire votes, the black vote still is, the Hispanic vote, absolutely not coming into this next election cycle even before the presidential one, which is scary. I, In my head, the Democratic Party has not distanced itself enough from the overweight 24-year-old purple-haired cunt who virtue signals and tells you that you're bad about everything. And that to me is almost like the core of the party's brand. You know, some fat chick shaking her hand in the air mm -hmm. saying you're racist, you're white male, you're this, you're that. And everyone's like, fuck you. Like I didn't do anything wrong. And you're acting like I'm a dick. That's the democratic party. That's their perception problem. There's definitely a perception of too too much focus on social issues, but worse mm. than that, worse than that, which I would say is there, although definitely like a YouTube, like 2016, we, we saw a lot of that. But the two really big ones were ACAB stuff and defund the police and the socialist rhetoric. A lot of brown people coming from South American countries are not as hype on fucking socialism as you, a fucking college student at UCLA is, okay? You've never had to fucking eat a rat Okay, when your whole family savings He's is never wiped out because you paid a bill. Yeah, you, you liberal it, arts college student carry on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, so the the socialism shit does not run well with a lot of immigrants coming from a lot of brown people coming from South America because or they, from anywhere that is socialist. Ha, yeah, yeah. Unless you're getting these eighty year old people that are you know reminiscent of the past or you know like Eastern Europe or, or parts of Russia sometimes. But um, yeah, you, you, that's generally not faring well. And then also, believe it or not, and I know it's hard because a lot of white people online have never talked to a black person before or talked to a brown person before. They actually don't want a bunch of fucking crime in their neighborhoods. These people do call the police if shit goes wrong. Like they actually do like police in their neighborhoods when they feel like shit is fucked. Um, and that ACAP messaging and shit did not, 
play well with minority groups. You said ACAB twice, but I don't know what it means. Oh, like defund the police. ACAB stands for all cops are bastards. But these very hard line anti-cop measures that were trying to be passed in cities. And then compare it, you, when you pair the fact that like a lot of cities scaled back on police stuff and then the pandemic hit and then crime started to rise, a lot of those policies 180 so hard and it looked so bad for that group of people that were all like, get rid of the police, defund the police, abolish the police. And yeah, it just is a really bad look for the Democratic Party, I think. And I feel like it is hurts it them more than the Republican. I don't know about, I don't like the all cops, cops are bastards thing. Taylor was explaining this to me the other day. He was like, cops are like Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Not every Nazi was a bad guy. There were some great Nazis, Taylor says. There were some <laughs> wonderful. And Who's he, your favorite Nazi, Taylor? You were saying Goebbels, right? I, I, I think can. I said too too many to choose. Uh, that's it. <laughs> I think that's how our conversation, our, our yeah. real conversation went, right? <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. uh is the defund the police thing mainstream? Train loads of them. Rhetoric no, now. Too far. I don't yeah, think it did. It, so. it did. So this was this oh, is what I always thought because I used to tell myself so much like Why this is online shit. It's it. white Twitter kids. Who the fuck cares? Blah 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 blah. I I said that for so long for so many years. And I think back in 2016 it was. In 2020 it absolutely was not. That defund the police stuff. That was like a front and center. That was a huge. There was a one lady in Congress. The phone call leaked and she was screaming. Because her constituents were calling in with fears about like they're going to get rid of the cops and people are trying mm-hmm. to make everything socialist, like actually, and they're saying socialist and stuff. And um, I, I do think that those messages went very, very mainstream, especially on the backs of all the BLM protests and everything too. And the Democrats were also but you're really saying insensitive. defund the police is mainstream. Yeah, I, it absolutely was. Yeah, for I the call last bullshit. Election, I no, I, I like Biden, for example, is the leader of the Democratic Party, and his position is very clear. Correct. Don't be it, it was a more moderate one, but like you got to look at like Minnesota. I think the state, I think, literally had it on their ballot to like abolish their police department, and it didn't win. So Minnesota, the lost. state, had a failing idea. We cannot call that the mainstream of the Democratic Party. It, well, it, I'm not saying that it's the mainstream of the Democratic Party that the, the politicians believe it. What I'm saying is that it was it was pushed enough in social media and in activist circles that that became the perception that the Democratic mm-hmm. Party wants to abolish police. The majority of the politicians, absolutely not, because I did And the people. Well. The people and the politicians don't want it, but there is a loud minority that talks yeah, about this. Yeah, but that loud minority used to be only on Twitter, to where if I were to go in real life and ask a person, like, what do you think about Marxist-Leninism? They'd be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> but nowadays, if I go and I ask somebody, like, what do you think about defund the police? Like, no, the Democrats want to get rid of the police. I know they do. I don't like that. Like, it was making it into a lot of mainstream conversations off the backs of the BLM protests. To me, the Democratic Party has a perception problem where people mm-hmm. associate them with defunding the police, for example. But they don't have a reality problem. The reality is Democrats are like me most of the time. You know, the kind of in the middle not looking to be stupid like that not overly woke not any of that yeah but the, the the big problem that you're getting is that people in well, one of those and multiple problems but one of the big problems you get is that people in very safe blue districts can afford to be very very left-leaning but they have a national microphone so people in you know montana hear what aoc says and they're like, oh, you know, like she speaks with the Democratic Party. It's like, no, she's in, she's never going to lose an election ever. OK, she's You're agreeing with me. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It's just it's a it's an unfortunate problem because when it comes to politics, perception is reality because people vote yeah. on perception and that's all that matters. Yeah. It's happening on both sides because of the gerrymandering, you know, the, the, the safe blue and the safe red districts. The, the Republican politicians that I hear from mm-hmm. are Matt Gates, Madison Cawthorn, Donald Trump, I guess. Who's my girl? Who's the blondie from Georgia? The crazy one with the gun ads. That's oh, not oh Lauren um, Bobet. She or blows something? cars up and shit. She's great. She's, <laughs> who's the yeah, one? Right. Uh, Magic the Gathering. Every time I see her name, Marjorie Taylor Green. Marjorie. That's her. Yeah, yeah she, she, she can't like just she can't killer. just take MTG. Magic has that. That's not fair. <laughs> That is true. We should, that's that's, how, that's my involvement in politics. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, she's another one, M- MTG, that gets all the airtime. And she's a lunatic from the right. And I'm sure there are a vast majority of people on the right are more sane and probably agree with me on a lot of stuff. Her, on the other hand, like all she wants to do is call masks face diapers and say the vaccine is bullshit. And, she's got uh, memes too. I mean, like most, she most said, people are she, just normal people like you. Like she and, put a video of herself doing pull-ups 
saying this is my anti-COVID vaccine. <laughs> but the thing is, her form was terrible. She was Wait, doing she was, I, I saw ups. that. Yeah, yeah, she was doing the oh, kipping no. pull-ups, which yeah. you, that, can't, you, you can't count that. You can't that. vote for that. Like, if, if you're... It, I, I hate I, socialism, kipping pull up, it's but its own CrossFit workout, is where I draw the fucking pull-up. line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, Why? The, you, should, you should go dominate. CrossFit? Oh, my yeah. God. It, it looks dangerous. Just go you see how often I'd get injured if I did CrossFit? It'd be all the time. Yeah. Have you seen the way they clean and jerk? Just throwing their spines to the wind. (laughs) <laughs> like they no rigidity they're just as fast as they can and then run to the next i should thing. try kipping pull i don't know that i've ever done that like just sort of rotation style pull up I, yeah what's it supposed to do like as a difference from regular pull-ups i don't it's, know it's, it's real fucking easy and it looks stupid if um, you go to failure i bet it's exhausting everything you know? well, i'm sure like you're still doing a ton right? of moving yeah, right. Yeah. Like, like you go to failure reading a book, you're gonna be exhausted. <laughs> Touche. All right. All right. That's, that's All what right. I did. I go to failure reading. Taylor <laughs> thinks he's the retard on this show, but low key, I'm taking a spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what in the world those kipping pull ups are supposed to work. Uh, I don't. I don't either. I, I really like what I, do. I have back. Back? See, I'm back. sure it does something. I'm like, I'm just gonna we're we're, we're verging dangerously close to encroaching upon our let's encro- let's encroach. Hour you know, of, of information. I would make let's fun encroach. of the CrossFit people and the horrible form and the crazy shit they do. But to be honest, you walk into a gym and you watch anybody doing 85 percent of lifts it looks fucking atrocious. So I mean, you know, we, you, we can make fun of people that do the CrossFit stuff, which I think there's plenty to make fun of there. But goddamn, mm-hmm. if you look at people that step into a squat rack and barely quarter squat, whatever the fuck they're holding, or the the shaky, out of control shit, I watched. Um, oh my god, me and my fun- fiance were at the gym um, a couple months ago in, in L.A., and this guy was sh- first of all, he had a um, you know the hip thrust things, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a hip thrust thing on the on the bar for his high bar squats. Okay, so he loads. Right, so he's already going to be squatting with bad form. <laughs> Already in an empty area, so he loads up a plate. This guy steps Wait, back. I don't is... think that's crazy. This is the circular thing that I've heard it called a pussy pad that goes around the bar, so your back and neck doesn't. Yeah, you can encourage yeah. people not to contract their back correctly and just rely on the comfort of the pad, or at least mm-hmm. that's what like a weight coach told me in high school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry, Justin, you go ahead. Yeah, I was just, it's not it's not much, but yeah, this guy unracked uh, 135 and he steps back, and this guy looks like he's about to fall over. And he, and I don't know what he was doing, and he stands there for like twenty seconds breathing, and then he re-racks it, and he goes back, and he one at a time, he just starts loading up the plates. And this motherfucker's got three plates. He's squatting three fifteen. And I t- talked to Melina. I was like, record this. This dude's about to fucking kill himself. Get his phone out, get a camera, whatever. It's gonna be a good fucking video. Um, yeah. And he he unracks it. He takes a step back, and I would have to take out my protractor to measure how little his his actual knee bent before he did that, and then step back up, and he fucking re-racked it, and he took a deep breath, and then he oh. took all that. I was like, okay, yeah. So, yeah I've gone the long. other way. I remember working out. Uh, my wife and kids went somewhere. Like they, maybe they were visiting her parents, or something. I don't know, but. Uh, I'm lifting all by myself and I'm doing squats. And for whatever reason, this day I sucked. It was a weight I had lifted before, but I got down into my deep squat and I didn't have it to go up again. Mm -hmm. And I just like I'm nose diving. This weight is going to land on the back (laughs) of my neck and decapitate me. But I'm in a squat (laughs) rack. Yeah. So instead it gets caught and I'm like, thank God for this. And uh, I've been that guy. Yeah, you end up like Christopher Reeves. You take one of those. Yeah, yeah. If you're I, lucky. I people squat without safeties, and I'm not. About I feel it. like for That's a so squat, stupid. you can always just roll it off your back. No, That's what I always learned. I would I, going forward it seems scary, but rolling it off your back is just like it falls, it makes a noise. That, that's how I learned too. Yeah, just maybe roll it off if your back. I didn't have the squat rack, I would make sure that was the failure method. But because I do have it, I can just try until I fail. Yeah. Huh. I mean, well, it, it is it, it it's embarrassing failing in your own gym. Like the times <laughs> I've failed in my home gym alone, and like the clang is so loud. Like I know my neighbors know I just failed. <laughs> it's like, in a basement too. <laughs> it's it in traveled a through the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I uh, I think last week I failed a, a bench press, and uh, and mind you, I'm not all that. Like failed the eleventh rep or something. I, I thought maybe I had one more than I did. And uh, but it's great. I'm in the squat rack. It just catches it. I I'm going rest to... up, and then uh, I can just press it. You know, I just get back under it. 
I'm going to uh, get a bunch of my uh, weight stuff from my dad's house and put it in my garage. Like I've got like basic stuff like squat nice. rack and bench press and stuff. And I think I'm going to um, like since I can do that at home, like spend like, like turn some of the, my exercises into really, really, really high volume stuff. Like maybe like, I don't know, 20, 20 rep sets, stuff like that. Just like three by weight. 20 uh like five by 20 five by 20 oh. yeah you know what you might consider before you do it is uh buying rubber mats for the floor i heard that oh. horse stall um oh. mats are good for that and cheaper horse. than you, you need to uh like let those settle for a bit because uh like a lot of people say you need to like buy them and then let them sit outside for like a month or so so that a lot of that smell goes away because if you place them like right away that rubbery smell apparently is un unbearably bad the reason i bought gym mats even though it, it costs a little more I, my whole room was like 700 dollars. it wasn't like super expensive but uh is that reason they don't continue to leak that rubber old tire smell oh okay yeah but i mean it's made for horses so you can do whatever you want with it you can fuck on it you can get <laughs> fucked on it you can <laughs> you can do all well, sorts of like, massive what? I, I, 90 like, millimeter loads or whatever on it. And I'm yeah like <laughs> Do whatever I want on all surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big boy. <laughs> I'm a big big boy. boys do what they want. <laughs> big boys do do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> see me on hardwood, like, dude. Every every so often, like being an adult just rules. Where you're like, oh, you know, it would be cool to have this, and then you're like, oh, I'm I'm a grown up. I can just buy it, and it's yeah. just here. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> you know like, what I take offense to kind of went like i see it on reddit they'll be like you know what now that i'm 24 i've realized that no adults know what they're doing everyone's out here confused with no game plan with no concept <laughs> of how to succeed in life i'm like what the fuck that's not true i absolutely had like a career an aspiration a work towards a program a, a degree i was chasing or whatever like this idea that everyone is bumbling around blindfolded through life as an adult having no idea how to handle things you don't have your shit together and you've normalized it get your shit together <laughs> i was gonna say i actually no, I, I, think I think that right. is kind of true but that advice because that's true one of the most attractive things that you can do as a guy for a girl is if you're a guy that has his shit together it's actually like puts you so far ahead and i don't mean have your shit together like mm -hmm. you're making a ton of money but i just mean like your apartment is well put together you have more than just like a chair and your computer desk you can do the dishes you wash your clothes you fold them and put them mm -hmm. like as long as you have like the basics down you're actually ahead of like 85 percent of the field it's unreal how many people like live as glorified children or just children i guess yeah just yeah. children we we like they just that way. have, have have piles of laundry or all right or just then, don't be talking about my laundry sink. i was about to say have health insurance and i'm like don't say it <laughs> okay, let's not get too crazy there okay i can have health insurance or an audio starting right, to feel okay? personal not... <laughs> this is an intervention this is entirely inappropriate <laughs> what is, actually yeah, you don't have to answer this about the laundry this might be too personal, Woody, but what do you pay about for health insurance for your family? Do you have you ever given a ring? Twenty-six grand a year, something like that. Twenty-seven grand a year. Jesus, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've got a, insurance. I know a guy, family four, and it's like two, three thousand dollars a month or whatever. And it's like Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah, yeah. that Thank sucks. You. That's a huge car. <laughs> That's a new house in some places. It's no joke. Yeah, yeah that sucks. It's a new pl house I, in almost all places. It's a two thousand twenty-six a month grand. Mortgage. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, all right. I did two hundred fifty thousand mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a two grand mortgage or, or, or like a, a two grand car payment. You can have just about whatever you want with really as long nice as you car. don't get silly. <sighs> Who wants a two grand car? She is not car? being easy on your dishes back there. Yeah, I, if I were you, I, I, hey, Mel, yeah. I love you. She said I can close the door. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she was being too rough with your, your wares. Your cutlery. Uh, I, 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 I was down. worried about your cups. I was going to get chipped. That, I kind of like that code. Like, hey, Mel, I love you. She absolutely <laughs> knew what you said. Like, like Girl, <laughs> I mean, we've been, we've been together for three. I'm sure you and your wife are you, right? Wait. Yeah, I wonder what I would have said. Okay. It, not just I love you, but like, I, I would have probably been more direct, but also like super 
over the top nice like sure. honey, that's coming through on the mic or so, you know something like that i wouldn't I, I would have said like what did the dishes do to you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she would laugh and we would she'd know it's supposed meant. to be like your thing right yeah. <laughs> isn't this supposed to be one of those core competencies i read about in the 1951 marriage manual <laughs> what to expect as a man everything uh. yeah. <laughs> My when I first started dating, Jackie would iron my shirts. Uh, I had a job that required a button-down shirt, and Jackie would iron them for me. And her mom bought me a book about how to iron shirts. <laughs> a whole <laughs> and book. I read it and I learned, and uh, I still iron them pretty well. The implications of ironing in the modern world. <laughs> like, <laughs> what what the fuck could you write a whole book about with ironing? I, I didn't know. Like I, for starters, I always use the pointy side of the ironing board. When you do like the sleeves and hang like the back over the ironing board, you want to use the big square side. It's it's yeah. far better. For, uh, everyone knew that but me. Okay, nineteen year old me was like, "This is a good book or picture." <laughs> oh, no. You're like sitting awake, and Jackie's like, "You need to go to bed. You have work." No, but I'm gonna find out how to iron underwear next chapter. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't go to school or church if we didn't have our shit ironed. So we learned. Jackie, early wake up! You're not gonna board. believe what I learned about polyester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what are what are the the chores around your house that you guys hate and that you put off? Because, like, oh, for example, like modern like, times, like dishes, like yeah, modern day now, like oh. dishes, cleaning the kitchen. I don't mind that at all. Like, I do that pretty much every day just to keep it spick and span. I, I I will let it like go for a day sometimes just out of like like I've, I because I cook and I do the dishes usually so like I'll just like, I'll do that tomorrow and it might go a day but I really don't mind like loading a fucking dishwasher there's nothing to that um I hate like mopping floors though I I feel like like that's the worst one because I'm never quite sure if I've gotten all that sticky fucking residue up mm -hmm. and uh, I get OCD about it so I end up mopping for like three goddamn hours and after a while sticky floors don't seem so bad. That's a good one. Mopping sucks. Jackie Mopping have a sucks. Weird dishes thing. I put the clean the pull the clean dishes out and put them on the shelves, but not all of them. It's weird. I'm like almost resentful of some of the bullshit that is in the clean. I'm like, what is this squishy thing? Is this a lid to a baby cup? We don't even have baby. That one stays in there. You can put that away. I don't know where it goes. All I would be doing is hiding it on you. So I empty like 95, 98% and there'll be like one or two items left in the in the clean dishes. She puts those away and then puts the dirties in. I also am the chief laundry pusher through her. That's the term we use where I load the uh, the washer and the dryer and she's the folder. Oh, that's, that's a good, a good deal. Yeah, yeah. The, the folding takes a lot more time. Especially the socks. If she's behind on the folding, I'll intentionally hit her with like some comforters and towels and shit to make life easy. <laughs> <laughs> Strategically loading the uh, yeah, yeah. Line there. you're it's backfilling like, the the workload to make it a simpler. It's about it. volume. Like if I'm trying to get through this, and there's two ways you can you can do all the socks and underwear and t-shirts, and that's a folding nightmare. Or you can hit her with a comforter, and it's just like, ba all right, baby, yeah, I, I can see you're struggling. This is what we're getting. I usually clean if there's a woman coming over. So like how much I'm getting laid is directly proportional to how clean my house is. Mm -hmm. and, and there are times where this bitch will sparkle. But every now and then it's just <laughs> like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I just I just don't care. And it can get into a rough spot it can get in a rough spot. But like I'll, I'll do those like clean. The other night I told you guys, I was like, can we end the show right on time? Because I have to spend like I have 90 seconds to clean my house. Like after the show. <laughs> You can make an impact. 90 seconds is tight, but oh, if you happen. have like six minutes, you can make a material difference if you hustle for six minutes. I imagine Destiny, the one you hate, would it be vacuuming? Because you used to work for that carpet cleaning company, right? Oh, yeah. I don't have a... The one thing, the best thing I learned about cleaning carpets was don't ever have fucking carpets. What a god-awful fucking thing. Get a rug, <laughs> okay? But otherwise, fuck. Just fuck everything about carpets. They get fucked when you roll chairs over them too much, when you walk over them too much. They suck to clean. Just everything about carpets sucks. Um, I, hate how, I hate how carpets suck all the sound out of a room and you don't get that nice echo. 
Yeah, well, listen, that's why I ordered a rug, okay? Mr. <laughs> listen, you guys want to do this today? All right, I said I could do it in seven days, and your fucking chiz guy or whatever was screaming at me for setting it up, so, okay, here I am. All right, be fucking grateful that there's an echo instead of nothing at all, so. <laughs> your fucking chiz guy. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking for simplicity, all hardwood is the way to go. Mm-hmm. It's Dude, comforting walking around on the carpet. carpet. It's nice and soft. Yes, yeah. I think carpets are going to make a comeback. I don't know why hardwood floor is pop. This house is hardwood everywhere, so I'm talking as a hypocrite. But carpets are nicer to live in, and I get it, Destiny. There's some unseen fucking oh. skin flakes or whatever that exists in the carpet. I don't care. I don't care. I'm very comfortable in a lot of dirt, more than you might guess. I like so. It. <laughs> yeah, carpet barefoot. I, I'll fucking lay around that. When you get a brand new carpet, I just want to lay on it. It's it's like the floor is comfy and it's cuddly. Great. It's fantastic. As a kid, I really thought shag shag carpeting was cool. I was it like, oh, cool. I, I you were right. That's what cool I would like run had. my fingers through it like a dog's fur. I, I thought that <laughs> cool adults had shag carpets and water beds. They did. You're right. Well, Whatever happened in the water beds, man? Those things got popular and unpopular for it seemed a very narrow point of time. We figured you know what out that I don't have but want. I don't, I don't know if Kyle has someone in my life has this the heating and cooling beds. There's like a little sort of mini split next to the bed and you can control the temperature of your bed. It's always amazing. That sounds incredible. Get it I nice and like cool. I, I've looked at it a few times. I think the king size one is like thirteen hundred dollars or something like that. And they could be. A, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just haven't wanted to risk thirteen hundred dollars on something I might not like. But everybody raves about them. Dude, that's not that's that bad like for a mattress. cheap version. No, see Taylor, that that is a like uh the equivalent of like a feather cover for your thing. Like it will turn your bed oh, for 1400, okay. but but if you get like the the mattress sort of built into it grand version, it's much more. 2500, 5 grand, something like yes. that. Like it it's pretty expensive. That better be incredible. For yeah. 5 grand. But I could see like I could see splurging on like a really really good mattress. You spend like a 30 year life on it. And yes. how many times do you wake up? Like, I need the covers on me to sleep. I need to be protected from demons and devils, you know, obviously. And so like, even if it's very hot, I at least like need like part of the cover on me. That would never be a problem if I had an AC mat. In the winter, I use a weighted blanket. Now, I don't know if you guys have had one and some people hate them. Some people feel trapped. There's this like almost like a suction type thing that happens over your legs mm-hmm. and your feet where you don't build the tent that you might be used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some people don't like it. Me, when I got my weighted blanket and it goes by your own size. So I have the biggest, heaviest one. Um, I was, I liked it so much, so much. This might be like my fucking autism coming through. I was like, like Woody finally got a thunder blanket. Thank God. <laughs> I got this weighted blanket and it was like, oh my God, this is the, gr- like, this is real life. I get to keep <laughs> this. It was like when you get a six-year-old, a dog and, and they're like, oh my God, is it, is it really mine? We don't have to give it back. It was, I like my weighted blanket so much, but I can really only use it in the winter because it's warm. Yeah. They're unbelievable. My grandma got me one like a Christmas or two ago. And I, I used it once or twice and it was it was fine, but it is un unbearably hot. Have so I can't ever, imagine it being an all round, all year round thing. I'll open the window. Had a January. hand uh like knitted blanket, like 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 mm-hmm. one of those gigantic ones. Like my grandmother, one of them anyway, the the the, the shitty one, not the good one, she would make these <laughs> enormous fucking quilts. Uh, that, that she would make and like give them to us like we gave a fuck like i got a that point. bitch what do you think i'm shivering every night till you came along and and those <laughs> things like when you fold them up they weigh like 30 fucking pounds they're so goddamn heavy and i'm just like do we have to keep this is, is this gonna ruin every closet i have for the rest of my life can't we throw this away or give it to some someone who needs it or th- throw it away keep them for some reason I don't want that fucking blanket that old lady made. I'm the opposite. My mother made I'm well crafted. My mother was <laughs> is a quilter. She doesn't quilt anymore. But um I, my perception of time as a kid is obviously going to be a little fucked up, but I remember it taking forever for her to make a quilt, like 4 years or something like that. Oh. But, that's 
Oh, that's a. I think I think those. Are, the thing I'm talking about is like um, it's like crochet like, almost, like, like an yeah. knitting. No, no, it, this it, is a quilt where she yeah. would buy like. I'm making it up, but I'll say like 26 different fabrics and then put together this pattern. And it was really well done. She did like yeah. level quilting. Yeah, this ain't a white trash blanket. This is That's what I was she, talking about. She was in a uh, quilting club and sometimes people would come over and they'd quilt together on this masterpiece that she built. And I loved it. I wore out that blanket to where nice. like it, it, the fabric went thin and it wasn't a blanket anymore. Yeah, you remember that Dolly Parton song, The Coat of Many Colors? Yeah, not like that song. It makes me cry. <laughs> well, why do you listen to it? I like to cry sometimes. But the same There's reason a... people take a, a salvia or whatever, right? It's like the, the same reason. <laughs> the same reason same people reason. like to take seven hundred fifty milligrams of Robitussin or whatever the fuck. Of do they call it Robo tripping. Yeah. Yes, they do call it. Robo -tripping, yeah. <laughs> I love when these things have silly names. Uh, what were they talking about the other day? Candy flipping. Yeah, oh, when you do um, MDMA and ecstasy together, I think. Or no, MDMA and LSD. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do you know Sounds White like Wine in the Sun? This Christmas song, White Wine in the Sun? Never heard it. <sighs> That's one to make you cry. Oh, I'll skip that, that doesn't one. doesn't sound like a sad song. It sounds happy. Dude, I listen to this song on Christmas a lot. It, I don't know. I guess, So usually in music, I want music that uplifts me. But in entertainment, I'm impressed by music. I'm sorry, by entertainment that moves me. Right? It, I, I've mentioned it many times. That's that um, Robert Redford movie about cheating. Indecent proposal. Uh, thank you. Indecent proposal. I left that movie feeling bad. I didn't like it, but I was impressed because it really made me feel something. Right? Mm -hmm. you, usually, you just soak in entertainment and you leave. But if it moves you, it did a thing. This song, even though it's sad. Kinda, it moves you. White wine in the sun. What are uh, some movies that give you that same visceral feeling? Like off the top of my head, like I can think of like three instances throughout the Lord of the Rings series where, like, as it happens, I'm like, Whoa, like, amped. The, like, the oh. final battle scene in Endgame does it for me. And I know superhero movies, people are gonna say it shallow. Dude, I watched it today. Today, the last time I rewatched that scene was a few hours ago. I love it. Captain uh, America with the fucking hammer and I'm into it. It's uh it's the scene the scene that makes me feel a lot is the scene from Sling Blade when Carl and the little boy are sitting by the pond and uh It's a great scene. He, he's he's like he's like I I love you Carl. I love you too, boy. I kind of want to put my arm around you and he like puts his arm <laughs> around him and everything and it's so fucking sad. <laughs> it's so fucking sad. It's just so, like he just has told him that horrific story. And they're bonding over. They both sh just shared like awful stories mm -hmm. about their lives, and then they're bonding over it. It's real sad, and that always makes me cry. Yeah, that's a that's a great movie. I want to watch it again. the The funniest scene in that whole movie is like the end, where he's like, "I'm going to stab you with it in the no, head." What you doing at <laughs> lawnmower blade, Carl? I I, I, I plan to it. kill you with it. I am yeah. to kill you with it. No, my, my favorite scene is when the, the abusive boyfriend freaks the fuck out. And he's like, he's like, I want all the cripples and faggots and retards out of my house right now. Because there's like a gay guy, mm -hmm. a retarded guy, and a guy in a wheelchair in his house. And they're all hanging out. He's just like losing his shit. A borderline beating up the poor guy in the wheelchair, like shoving him around in his chair mm -hmm. against the wall and stuff. And it's funny, though. It's so ridiculous. That's a good movie. I love that movie, Sling Blade. It is. It's sad, but we it's watched also it in the uh, Discord like maybe six or eight months ago. We did like a big group watch because so many of them hadn't seen it. I cried then. It's fucking sad. Yeah, <laughs> Green Mile. I remember. I haven't watched that movie in ten years because it makes me so sad. Percy, when Percy fucks that rat up, that mouse up, that yeah, that, like. Uh, you know, Creole speaking guy just wanted to hang out with. That was so sad. Yeah. The Mr. black guy who is dead in real life now. He yeah. did a great job and he's Lar so sad. Large man McBlack was his name. Michael Clark Duncan. No, it's Large Man McBlack. Well, Large Man McBlack was he killed it in that role. Yeah. <laughs> and he is a and like I didn't know that like you know the main guard who has like the white hair. Yeah. He and Michael Clark Duncan were the same height, so all those oh. videos, all those like uh, clips of like Michael Clark Duncan like towering over him, 
it's like they did like Lord of the Ringsy style like angles, to do that, which I thought was. I always think that's neat. Yeah. Like just little details like that that would be so important. Like, did you realize this actor who looks like he's seven foot five was actually the same height as the other protagonist? It's like no, and I never would have guessed. Have you seen because they the, did it so well? There's a behind the scenes part on Lord of the Rings where they're sitting at a table mm-hmm. and they have that forced perspective table that they constructed for it. Yeah, where, like there's uh there's Gandalf sitting in the the forefront and there's Frodo sitting like eight feet behind him and they both have to like look at a piece of tape on the wall as they're talking to make it yeah. seem like they're in the same uh, plane. Really it's cool. Very cool. Yeah, they they did a great job. But then with the Hobbit, somehow they're like. We made everything neon, then use low cameras, and they, like they just did everything so poorly in the Those Hollywood. movies don't exist. I did, it, it was it, also it, Peter it, Jackson. It, I know the, the amount of time that he had from Lord of the Rings to Hobbit is night and day. Like like he had like years and years of to prepare before they even began the first movie. Yeah, like, with Lord of the Rings, like years, and then the Hobbit. They were like, we're gonna need three of these Hobbit films. Like Monday or <laughs> yeah. Sunday? I know it's a weekend. Like, like, like he had to go. go, go. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> you were talking about years lead up for Lord of the Rings. Like they literally for a year built up the Shire and Hobbiton and like and, and all the Weta workshop little, shit, yeah. like all the armor Isn't that the that crazy wore. what kind of budget and timeline they had before? Mm-hmm. I can't remember many like new universes before Lord of the Rings. Like it now. Universe is like a hip thing. If you're mm. like, hey, I've got this thing. We're doing the Bobaverse or whatever. Like that, people might invest in it. Mm. Back then, it was a real risk. Yeah, and I, it just, it rocks. I need to rewatch Lord of the Rings again. I love that. Have movie you seen it so much? I've seen it yeah. a couple times. <laughs> I think <see> that too. <laughs> I, st- I, c- I wish I could remember exactly the text conversation I had that I shared with you a few weeks back, where like that girl had chosen to watch Lord of the Rings with her brother instead of me. And she was asking me yeah. questions, and I, and I was like giving her like this long winded nerdy explanation. And at, at the end of it, I was like, "Next time, watch with somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking about instead of your redneck brother." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking no, you'll you know where the olifants came from. You said it, what you said was actually more charming. It was like, and this is an example of why you should have watched with me. It's oh yeah, well, I, well, I wanted to have more sex with her. So yeah. <laughs> I. I, I but next time she comes over, make her watch it and pause it every 45 seconds and railroad wrote her with the fun facts. When I watch, <laughs> I, I do, I, I do pause That's like how you get when I watch them with people. I, I really watch them. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's how you get pussy is you want to watch a fantasy movie with a woman and make her feel dumb for not knowing all the minutiae you do. <laughs> I want to, I want to recreate that. Have you seen that meme where they're like in a baseball game and it's like yeah. a guy and a girl and he's just like, He's yeah. clearly in yeah. like a position to tell her how it is. Like, like <laughs> he's mansplaining the fuck out of like. When in reality, I bet it was like a. I bet she was just like. I, I bet it was innocent. I bet, I bet he wasn't mansplaining baseball to her or whatever. But it looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks like. Yeah, I wonder what the is. truth is. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but the, I know the picture you're talking about because he is like grabbing her by the back of the neck, like doing that like statesman hand of like this is I got to tell you how yeah. pitching works. Or whatever the fuck. Did I any do, of you guys see? Or go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I was gonna say, have any of you seen recently? There was the Nicolas Cage movie Pig. I, I have been big it. on Nicolas Cage recently. That's the one I haven't seen. I watched the uh, the one where he fights the animatronics. I love and I like that. I like Mandy, and uh, and now he's got one that's coming out called like the incredible burden of being amazing or something crazy like that. Yeah. Essentially, yeah, yeah, where he plays himself. Um, so that looks funny too. Yeah, um, I, I'm so glad that he apparently has money troubles because it is just fueling a, a lot of indie film that that is that is really creative and fun to watch. Is uh, is Pig worth watching, Destiny? Uh, absolutely, I think it is. Absolutely, it's a very interesting movie. Yeah, is that the one where his prized truffle pig gets kidnapped and he goes to rescue it? Kind of, yeah. It would have to be. <laughs> or, <laughs> have no, to. no, that's the that that's. He's in two pig centric movies. That's Truffle no. Pig Rescue. That's a different. That's a operation. No, yeah. um, he's been making a lot of wacky shit. He made another one where he like, uh, like some guy straps bombs to him and makes him go somewhere to like rescue his daughter and some sort of action nonsense. And then there was the Color Out of Space, uh, like a like right after Mandy, with all the wacky special effects and yeah, color that Mandy, stuff. And, like I'm enjoying the more esoteric films he's making. Just kind of I weird. love Mandy. Mandy's one of my favorite movies now. Um, 
I, we should have watched Mandy on acid. Next time I'm, if I, if I ever do acid again, I'm going to watch Mandy on acid. Yeah, give it Actually, a go. It'd probably be good. I, it, it's part of the movie, though, right? Like, that's the whole premise is that those mm-hmm. bikers like, had some, like, crazy, bad, scary acid that turned them into monster people. Or, like, whatever the fuck they are. That's a great movie. Acid is definitely a drug I could see wanting to try. Yeah. I've never done it, but it, I, my friends who do it and have done it all, and a lot of these are the same guys who did like high doses of shrooms, and they're like, if you're going to do a hallucinogen, just skip the shroom shit, go straight to LSD. And yeah, I trust them on that. Like apparently it, you're more apt to, or based on what they said, they said they had a lot more like, you know, freaky or borderline freaky experiences on mushrooms than LSD. Mushroom is like a plant and it's like natural and people look at it and then LSD is like acid and it's got a crazy chemical name. Mm-hmm. It seems so much more scary. Mm-hmm. LSD is so much easier and you're so much more in control than you're on mushrooms. It seems like it would be really? the opposite, but like the way that I've always heard it explained and I think it is totally apt is that when you take mushrooms, you are going to go wherever they send you and you don't have much control over that. And if there's some dark shit that you want, you're there. You're absolutely there. Mm -hmm. Whereas for LSD, you are, the come up is way smoother um, and you're so much more in control without ending up in scary places, in my opinion. And I've heard that pretty ubiquitously Mm -hmm. through people that do both. I think LSD is like a way Mm -hmm. more fun experience. Yeah. I mean, without telling the whole stupid story again, like my, 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 experience taking a lot of mushrooms ended with me like having a panic attack and, 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 uh, like passing out on the floor in a public place. But with like LSD, I had a great fucking time for like nine goddamn hours. Just looking at shit. I've taken yeah. mushrooms and never admitted it. It was this year. Uh, I was on a motorcycle trip. I'm trying not to like dox the people I was with, mm-hmm. but I took one gram, which apparently is a pretty small dose. And, uh, it was, a really good time. Things were super funny. Uh, things that aren't interesting were more interesting. Like the, it was smoke at a campfire. It looked mm-hmm. like it had purple edges or something. And uh, mm-hmm. um, it would, but mostly I just really enjoyed my friend's company that, that it did that as an enhancer. And that was my experience. I wasn't out of it. I, I did make sure that I had all my shit together before mm-hmm. it kicked in. My tent was up. My, like clothes i changed my clothes the fire was started like you know i I got all my shit done before it kicked in but um so all i had to do was sit in the camp chair enjoy the warmth keep the fire going and enjoy my friend and it was it was actually pretty awesome it was a super good experience and one gram is mild like i said Mm -hmm. and i assume it goes by the size of you like any other drug so i don't think for psychedelics i don't know if it does okay Oh, I think because that's... it's because it's like a it's like a blood or it's like a brain like neurotransmitter thing. Like I think it's like like alcohol is a body weight thing. Mm-hmm. I think amphetamines are body weight things. But I think when it comes to like LSD or mushrooms or DMT, I think that like I think the same amount of similar effects of people. That's what I've heard. I hope that's true because the small guy was being a real bitch about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> out of my depth, guy. and I've never been any other size. But uh, it was a. Uh, it, it was like a super positive experience. Oh, and by the way, there was no downside on the other half. Like yeah. with um, alcohol, for example, you have a really good night filled with laughs and you wake up in the morning feeling like shit. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not hung over, you're not sharp and good and happy. Yeah, you're not where you want to be. You're like, yeah. oh, I'm not at 100%. <laughs> and you exactly. know you've like either taken on a lot of calories or you have you know beat the shit out of your liver a little bit. Like the crazy thing about mm-hmm. psychedelics is two huge things. One is um that the, they're relatively safe like that we're not even relatively like, they're very safe dude. probably even compared to most mm. foods you eat <laughs> they're pretty safe mm-hmm. right you eat them you process them you have a fun time you're done the second thing though is oh my god it the entertainment to dollar ratio compared to traditional drugs is unreal when i did acid for the first time and i was like ten dollars for two tabs of acid and i'm having fun for 12 hours <laughs> and i live out in la if i want to go get drunk it's 15 dollars a mixed drink this shit is unbelievable with no downsides like that's like that was the craziest thing is how yeah. cheap these things yeah. are it's and then how much five you have. it's five fucking dollars a hit mm-hmm. and like i i mean twenty dollars will send you to a to a real fun place oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, for a long time for I was, all night i, I want to say this i was with subject matter experts and uh, they call it set and setting. 
I wish mm-hmm. they called it mindset and setting because that's what they mean. Mm-hmm. But um, you, it's important that like you're having a good day and you're having a chill time and you're like wherever you are, it's okay if you go times three on it. If you're yeah. pissed off and that's where you oh, start yeah. your mushrooms and that's not a good that's not a good time to do it. And then the setting, someplace safe, someplace Walmart. happy. <laughs> In my case, it was camping. And uh, you know, it says get your set and setting right. Dude, do a low dose, it, it, especially if you're new. I, I had I mm-hmm. did a, a low dose that you might consider a pussy dose, and I really had a positive experience. Yeah, you can't take pussy dose people seriously, where they're like, "Oh, you're not, you don't have a huge problem with mushrooms like me." <laughs> I, I ego, I ego <laughs> dose my drugs, bro. Yeah, I I ego ego. That's, that's why. That's why when I drink Everclear, no chance. Everclear. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I want my my stomach like lining, burning through. Yeah, yeah that, I, I didn't even get like that like feeling of euphoria you're talking about. I've only done mushrooms once also, and I don't know how much I took because it was my roommate freshman year of college who just gave me some off his desk. It was mm-hmm. definitely a low dose, but like, I don't remember feeling like joy or anything like that. I just remember like sitting there in our dorm. It was like a Tuesday night or something. And like, I was watching, it's always sunny, like season two or something on the DVDs he had, he introduced me to the show. And I just remember like sitting there and like the TV kind of breathing at me. Yeah. Like, like kind of moving towards me and pulsating. But like, and I thought it was going to get more intense than that. No, it was really like, okay, colors, maybe those are more vivid things. Or if I focus on something, it starts to manipulate and breathe. I, I took what he gave me. I have no idea. I didn't even know like how, how it was dosed or anything. Yeah. I, I hadn't, I took mushrooms before. I'd, I had not smoked weed at that point in my life. How did you but, take it? Like what? what? I ate it. Like it was, so it, in, it tasted rough. Uh, mine was on a, um, I think it was on a spoon and I chased it with water. Like, so it was grind. It was ground up to be mm-hmm. almost dust. Mm. And I ate that off a spoon and then chased it with water. He, his it wasn't even ground up to like dust. It was like, like almost like he would mince an onion, like yep. that size oh, okay. of it. And mm-hmm. I just ate it and like, that's how I've had no, it. Didn't I, even I, do I, all of it. He had I a started, tool that would do that. I started with whole mushrooms. Um, and, and just. You're muted. Oh, you're Kyle. muted. Okay. Well, he started with whole mushrooms. You know is. that much. The whole mushrooms and chopped them up with a knife, and then just kind of like rolled them together in a somewhat ball that then starts like falling apart and growing, like doing that thing, like when you oh, when you, but when you put water on a straw paper. Yeah. Does a uh, does acid taste like anything, or do you not no, even see no, it? No, so so like I I I've only seen it on like the little tabs, the little pieces of paper. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it's such a tiny piece of paper, like way smaller than you think there's yeah. there's nothing in my world that is that small that i could compare it to that gives so. you that much and if you look at it the first time it's it almost seems like you're getting like kind of pranked like you have a, a microscope not microscope but a very 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 tiny square paper and then you put it on your tongue and it almost square like a, that's square, funny square centimeter maybe yeah. but i don't think so maybe less when i i didn't do it in high school i've never done it but it was described to me as the size of a postage stamp oh no way smaller like, like if you have a postage stamp, changed, we've got enough for or, the party. Yeah, postage it, stamp is like you've got like 20 hits of LSD there. <laughs> Could it have, I wonder if it changed crazy. or like maybe it's more pure now and it's shrunk and it's like. Uh, there's a whole story with like the production of LSD because like, and I'm no expert, but I want to say that this guy at one point made like a hundred million fucking doses or something like that. He was and, like the world provider of LSD. for a long time. Like like all the LSD in like the the seventies or something was was his LSD or, or whatever the story is. Good but it's a tiny tiny bit little piece of paper. It's hard to just get one because you're just like like two people are like pulling it off. Not ends. that small. It's not like it's a. My fingernails aren't precise enough to like carefully grab like this thing. It's how, so small. How long is uh, how long is the come up? I know Destiny said it was like smooth, but is it like an it's, hour after you take it? I think uh, like an hour. I knew an hour in. I knew an hour in, and I was like, I want more now. And they're like, Well, let's wait a little more. I'm like, No, let's go ahead and start with two now. And then like every hour, uh, I added another one. Jeez. Um, until I was out. I think on LSC, <laughs> I think you're peaking at around three hours, and then you peak mm-hmm. maybe for like thirty minutes, and then you glide down based on your dosage. That would be like one tab about. Yeah, it was. Um, okay. But but the only like crazy stuff I saw was like everything breathed, you know, it did that sort of pulsating mm-hmm. thing. And uh, colors would sort of do this, I don't know, inversion kaleidoscope thing where like the center of, of the color would revert to the the sort of shade that the uh, 
perimeter was and 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 that that would like revert back and forth if that makes sense like rosy cheeks on a painting like the edges of it were darker and then the, mm -hmm. the center was darker and that would go back and forth if you stared at it the my, clouds were fucking moving so my tiny mushroom dose had nothing but positive and good vibes did your lsd dose do that did, did anyone ever kind of wish they could get off this train uh one person seemed <laughs> uncomfortable but almost like they were feigning discomfort to be funny, which is probably why I was being yeah. so mean to them. Because um, you saw I, through the ruse. I guess it's like, stop acting like you're the only one here doing something for the first time. We're all trying something new, and you're ruining it for everyone. You will <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you piece um, of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but I just felt like he was being like white girl with her first wine spritzer high, and it was annoying. But that, that was probably just me being an asshole uh, on and, and and like maybe uh maybe that was appropriate maybe it wasn't but fuck him for ruining my high but uh but yeah it was a good time uh, i like lsd i like watching like uh would like you do it by and, yourself oh yeah oh yeah like there's you no would. fear there's no like oh i could do lsd and make a silly phone call or walk outside naked no no more than you could do either of those things when you had three beers like mm -hmm. see i wouldn't do mushrooms by myself now probably people would disagree with me and do but enhancing the good vibes of the people i was with was kind of what it did for me oh mm -hmm. ideally i'm with people ideally i'm with a girl we're having sex because i think sex on lsd would be the tops but uh um i would do it alone i guess is what i'm saying but i would prefer to be with friends and or even family or anybody that you like that you can hang out and chat with and shoot the shit and joke around and just generally laugh about how the desk over there moved a little did you see it i saw <laughs> it look at it I'm, right, I'm going to look away. You look at it. You tell me if it moves. <laughs> Maybe like, it's my looking at it that caused it to move. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like I've heard of this. This this has something to do with quantum yeah. entanglement. This is a Schrodinger's yeah, is. table. Yeah. This is a Jedi thing. <laughs> so it's Neil, like... I, Neil I know, deGrasse Tyson told me about this. So like... I, I, know I don't lots even of know people if that's right or wrong. Who, who really enjoy <laughs> acid. But like... You never hear about them like taking too much like over like a week. Like, like it's sure they might trip too hard but i mean like like if someone trips acid it's not like the next day they wake up and they're like i gotta get back in the zone and then they dose again like, it seems this. like a rarer experience i was told initially that like because of whatever it's doing to your brain chemistry that like you need to wait a couple weeks to like reload before you do it again or it's going to be mm -hmm. diminishing returns for sure and i do know that that guy from channel five you know the all gas no breaks guy who interviews mm -hmm. the sturges and stuff he did a ton of uh, acid as like a 13 year old. And I can't remember what it, what the consequences were, but they're permanent and life changing. Like, I can't remember what's wrong with him. Like he always like, he has some kind of like tinnitus or there's something wrong with him caused by the years of mm -hmm. like acid abuse as a child. Um, oh, okay. Well, that's not good. There's So there's something called HPPD, which is hallucinogenic persistent, hallucinogenic peripheral persistent disorder which means you like, you'll see shit in the corner of your eyes or you'll mm -hmm. have like a, um, I don't know if this, might, some people have it naturally, but if you look at a wall and it's dark, it's not actually dark. There's kind of like a white, um, like TV fog over everything, like on a staticky channel over everything naturally. You can develop that, I think. That's, that's terrible. Y'all don't all have that? I do, but I don't know if I have it from doing drugs or if I always had it. And that always, that kind of worries me. But yeah, so like if you're in a dark room and you look at something or even just a normal wall, there's like kind of like a TV fuzz over everything, right? Well, yeah, I can't process walls. Y'all can? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Is it just a solid color for you with no noise? It's a lot of noise. And I mean, I, I guess there's some I noise I can't choose there. one color. It's mostly gray, but there's darker bits and it's uh -huh. all random like clouds. Okay, well, I guess I've never actually thought about this. Yeah, there there are bits. Close your eyes and tell me what you see. We got like twenty more oh, minutes. Uh, blackness, <laughs> solid blackness. Now I'm picturing Kyle naked. All right, all right. Yeah. Am I am I excited? You're more excited than you've ever been. Painfully so. Painfully <laughs> so. People's dilated, ready to are, fuck. Are, are are do we do we lock eyes? Are we looking at each other or? No, I'm looking inside your rented home. You don't know I'm there. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, is this one of those, like, you've been living here for a while, or or, or you're like an intruder tonight kind of scenarios? I'm I'm uh, plotting. Oh, okay. You're yeah. just here to, like, I'm scoping out the valuables. Land. I'm waiting for you to take another tab so then I can come in 
still your is DNA. it the valuables you want or is it something more i want the most valuable your anal virginity that's right Jesus. that's right yeah that's right which i know you don't already have but we can pretend of course not no well this is all role play anyway so why i mean of course <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny that Woody did mushrooms. I didn't expect that. Yeah, Good and he always him. leaves when we role play. He doesn't like it. <laughs> he doesn't, it makes him uncomfortable. It's like the whole point is to make people uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he hates the daddy son role play. I can't imagine why. <laughs> I, I told I him I'd be the daddy. <laughs> and that doesn't sweeten the deal at all. <laughs> yeah. We set it up for him. Kyle and I were going to be his two dads. <laughs> and he was going to come in and, and watch us. Th- well, whatever. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna take us both to the parent-teacher conference? Yeah, is that gonna be embarrassing for you? Do you remember what all your the friends stress gonna say? leading up to parent-teacher conferences when you know you had been like not great in class? Dude, my mom taught at the school, and my dad worked. Oh, well, you were fucked. Worked a thousand meters from the school. They knew what was going on, and I knew that they knew. They let me know, and they didn't get like on to you. Yes, yes, yes. There was, I mean, what, what, what am I to stop? Like, like I was just being me. Well, because I know you didn't really give a shit about school. Didn't try too hard. I, I mean, I made sure I got out. That, that was the goal. Mm-hmm. Was, it, it, as, long, as long as we survived, that, that was the main thing. The idea of prospering never came to me. Were you a good student, Destiny, growing up or not really? <sighs> um, I just, I am just incredibly lucky. Um, I was a horrible student, but um, I, growing up, it's a very narrow sliver in history where video games got really popular, um, but they didn't have voice acting yet. So mm-hmm. I was very good at reading because I played a lot of role-playing games, so I could read very quickly. And honestly, I think that's like 90% of being good at school. Yeah. So I was in like all the AP classes. I did some dual enrollment in my senior year. My GPA was, it survived. I think I came out with like a two, like a 2.8 or whatever uh, because of all the waiting and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I got lucky that I was just a really good reader from all the video game shit that I played, and then that kind of carried me through basically. Yeah, that's fortunate. Were you were you a misbehavior in school? No, I was a super good kid. I just I don't really play games and shit. I didn't want to like the worst I'd get in trouble. I went to an all boys private Jesuit high school, and the worst trouble I'd get is I'd try to skip mass because we'd have like church every yeah. Tuesday or something, and I'd go into the band room and hide in one of the practice rooms with a like a was it a PS2 or an N64? And I try to hmm. play games in there sometimes. So if I got caught, I got in trouble. That was a nice little hustle. What what is the what is like the the core thing of Jesuits that makes them different than like normal Christians? Catholic. Jesuits are the it's the teaching order of the Catholic Church, and um, they're just like pretty chill. They're like pretty like liberal. They're not like hardcore fundamentalists. Okay, so because I was kind of imagining like the Hasidic uh, Jews, like, like, no. like some sort of a scarier version. Yeah, but the I'm, Hasidic no. are hardcore. Yeah, I see them, but I don't believe them. <laughs> the way that I would like phrase it is that like um, I'm very atheist today. I'm, I'm not religious at all. I would never. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sending my child to a Catholic grade school. I, I think I would send him to a Jesuit high school, though. It's a really good education. Those people are good. They, they care a lot about that shit. Like, you know. yeah, a lot of the times, like if you want the highest quality education, you have to go with like a private school. And Sometimes, along with yeah. that private school comes some some religious nonsense a lot of the time. But mm-hmm. like if it was a choice, like and I had a kid. And I was like, all right, he can go to a dog shit public school or he can go to a school that's going to be way better. And he also has to learn about God. And it's uh-huh. like, you know, what? Uh, we can just keep an eye on him with the God stuff and, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and make sure he doesn't go whole hog into like doing what I did as a kid, like like laying awake, sleepless nights at the age of eight, horrified, having nightmares of like my grandparents burning in hell because they weren't good enough Christians. And just get rid of that. Get rid of that yeah. angle. Get rid of the hell angle. And it's all good. I like the hell angle. I think we need, you know, some consequences. Keeps in line. Yeah, but those are some intense consequences, man. Yeah, I guess. God needs to fucking chill out. He is he is quite disciplinarian. Yeah. He's a fucking dick. Like, he made all of us, and he's going to be mad that we didn't turn out the way you wanted. Did he, like, design? Oh, I, I was going to ask you this. If you saw the, um, I think, I think I saw a thing on Reddit the other day, and it was images of angels as they were described in the bible oh. the, the huge ball of like fur and then the thousand uh, wings and the, the eye and eyeballs yeah yeah mm-hmm. that, that, that's why whenever somebody's just like oh yeah and I, like first of all we don't become angels bitch we don't get halos that, that, that's another creature that god made up all all to his own and and like we don't know what they fucking look like but apparently they look like eyeballs wreathed in wings or some shit that was terrifying yeah yeah god made sure to make all the the angels really scary 
even scarier than the demons in some ways. Well, the demons are angels. They were. Yep. Yeah. Fallen angels now. I love made up things. Yeah, I like made up things too. This is like it's like an even deeper world than Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's it's it, it's. I think it's more fun if you think about Christianity like it's a uh, Tolkien's second project. Yeah, and that way the plot holes. You're like, well, he was an old man. You yeah, know, like, like, <laughs> I mean, you know, like this pretend, god character like, pre- used to treat, be really treat, hardcore. He, now he's a bitch. <laughs> treat treat Hebrew like another one of Tolkien's languages he made up. Like like the whole thing. Like like you totally learn it then. Oh yeah. I'd break and, out the Torah right away if I thought if it was like the Cimmerillion. I mean, I bet there were people like when the New Testament was being written. Well, I guess, yeah, they, they were definitely these people, the Jewish people. They didn't like yeah. it, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But uh, he, he, if you're used to a God that's super intense, telling you to like beat your slaves and subject women and everything, and then he comes around and starts lightening up on all that. Big time. Think it's probably natural to be like, whoa, whoa. So all this shit we've been doing, the shellfish, the whole thing, it's all been for nothing. <laughs> all of it. Like, um, no, fuck you. We didn't do nothing. We we, we did this because it matters. So I've never had an oyster. <laughs> As if you they were like readily the available. Christianity quote, the cosmic Jewish and zombie thing. I'm familiar I don't with it. No. Yeah. Christianity. The belief that a cosmic Jewish zombie who was his own father can make you live forever ever if you symbio- symbolically eat his flesh and telepathically tell him you accept him as your master so he can remove an evil force from your soul that is present in humanity because a rib woman was convinced by a talking snake to eat from a magical tree. I mean, I'm going to... L. Ron Hubbard's starting to make a little sense, ain't he, boys? <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping both feet into every religion the second I develop a serious disease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting just, for just cover my bets. What, what happens if I'm wrong? I look it's like an same idiot. Thing Who that cares? If, well, you, you just are wrong. You just are wrong. So yeah. It's fine. Well, I mean, that's one of like the flawed arguments that they presented to us in high school, at my religious high school, where they're like... Like the, the some square where it's like they literally said, like, if you believe and it's real, you go to heaven. If you believe and it's not real, what do you lose? It's if you a... don't believe and you, and it doesn't exist, who cares? If you don't believe and it does exist, you're going to hell. And it was like, I don't remember the name of it. It's called name? Pascal's Wager. Pascal's yeah. Wager. That's it. And like, even at the time, it's like. This doesn't seem like a convincing way to like get us on board. With this. And this like, is how you'll live a, your a lives. veiled threat. <laughs> yeah, I, all the all the threats in the religion. Just imagine I don't like a that. rock over your head for all. It, come on, <laughs> like, the whole thing is nonsense. Um, yeah, and even but, if like heaven's real and we all go there, who's to say God doesn't change his mind a ten trillion years in and switch things up? He's never done that before. Yeah, notoriously consistent that that God. <laughs> but. Do you think he'll want us to call Religion's him like Yahweh so or something? Like, like, will he have like a name when we show up? Will he think it's weird we call him God? Muhammad. We're like, oh God, it's you. He'll be like, hey, ah. man. Um, that I think he'll, he'll, he'll ask us. Parents call me God. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him <laughs> Mr. Christ. Out of Mr. respect, Christ? Mr. Christ. I call him Pro- Jesus because we're so tight. Professor Christ. What if you get there and he's like, uh, like, like, like he's like a basically an infant. Like, like, like he's, he's just a pouty child. Like, remember that Twilight Zone with the... Yeah, I, mean, I would hate that. The little boy who's like the monster. And they're like, that's a real good thing you did, Timmy. That's real good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great like, Twilight Zone. But, yeah. But yeah, I, hopefully he's full grown Jesus. I want... But not, I, not, not old Jesus. I want in, like fresh off the cross Jesus. Oh, I prefer infant Jesus. Still jacked. No, I, I like that infant Jesus, like from um, the the Will Ferrell movie that they were t- Talladega Nights. So, like mm-hmm. when we're playing poker, like sometimes you get all in, and the other guy calls or whatever. A little bit of money might be on the line. You want the cards to go your way. So, my friend Fish, he starts praying for me in Arabic, uh, presumably to Allah. It wouldn't make mm-hmm. much sense if he used Arabic to talk to Jesus. Uh, and uh, yeah. and then at the same time, I pray to baby Jesus, like the infant Jesus in the you know, swaddled up in the manger and everything, doesn't understand poker at all, but but I pray to him. And it works out, like, more than you'd think. We've gotten some pretty good cards. It can't hurt. It literally can't. The only way it could hurt is if you prayed to the wrong God and the right God knew that, and then he fucked your hand up as, like, 
recompense. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's quite that petty to like inter- he intervene in my is. poker he, game. He turned those Lot's wife into salt. He did, but she did look. She turned around, and he told her not to. You know, so when like, you're that's right, not you're petty right. at all. <laughs> it isn't bad. Yeah, the God of the Old Testament's kind of a bitch. I mean, I like the part right before that where Lot, the hero of the story, was offering his wives, to, his uh, daughters, to be raped by a mob of angry people in in place of these two strangers he just met. Yeah, yeah, trying to like settle things down by letting his daughters get raped. Two thumbs down, and he and, and that's the guy who got saved. God, I'd be. How horrible was the rest of that? City? Does he do that anytime somebody causes like a ruckus in the neighborhood? Like, calm down, girls. Girls, get out there and see if you do something about that. <laughs> Fuck. Right. He was like, just running hard. I'd just be outside Lot's house just making trouble all the time. <laughs> bagging pots and pans but, together. I like shaking the dumpster. Don't Come worry. Just, just, wait, watch. You won't believe it. Yeah. Here they come. Here they come. Yeah, he strips them naked. He doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's one of the worst story. Well, Job is the worst story of the Bible. Probably. Uh... The one, what's the one when, uh, when I, I thought when Abraham was gonna fucking sacrifice his son, like, like straight up stab his son, <laughs> for based God. On, based oh, on, I, I, I saw the end of that one coming a mile away. That that's some petty shit too. That like, oh, ho, ho, good luck uh, having a conversation over dinner tonight. Yeah, you, you don't have to kill him. Yeah, you're good here. And then then they, Dad, are you for real? There's got to be a Family Guy where that happens, right? And it's like he, oh, I'm sure there probably is, but it's like <laughs> where the son he, is like the fuck. <laughs> like he he made him do that to see if he would actually go through with it but it's like he knew the whole time he would like, like why maybe, it's just it, an it, exercise in cruelty to carry yeah, it out a, a decent like he just wanted the the emotional torture to be inflicted upon abraham clearly because an all-knowing god would have known that abraham was going to do it or he could have just watched him as he like picked the knife out and sharpened the fucker up and like took his son to the altar or whatever i'm imagining an altar yeah, yeah, it was definitely an altar there. And then at the last second, he says, just fucking with you, like cut that shit out, hand. go to this bush, there's a ram in there, tied up in the bush, and then he went and killed the ram. Yeah. Can't have a good day go by without murdering something. Does he, like, magic those rams into existence, or did he? Did God, like, thief uh, a ram from a, a, a less obedient farmer? I think it's it's largely magic, magic. when he does stuff like that. Or maybe not, because he probably wouldn't want to kill a magically conjured animal. He'd probably it, want it, one with like not much like of a, a emo- emotions family. It would need to be one of his like like animals to like get across the whole like sacrificial thing, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. would make more sense because like, if you sacrifice somebody else's animal, that's no sacrifice at all. That's just theft and animal cruelty. At least I'm told. I mean, all they like you read about like the Jews when they were in their you know Exodus period. Yeah, it Diaspora, was all, I believe. It was all just fucking killing animals. They were like starving and had to have manna fall from the heavens to feed them. Yeah. But like they were still expected to kill sheep all the don't time. Don't they call that the diaspora? Do I have that right? I diaspora don't know. Is one of That's a vocabulary word like, for you. Manna exists outside of Magic the Gathering? Oh, yeah, it's yes. real. Yeah, manna from heaven is when all of the the Jews they were they were traveling around the desert forty years in the desert, mm-hmm. uh, and forty years is just like a number forty is a number used in the Bible to mean a very long time, not necessarily a specific amount of time. But the only way that they got food because they were in the desert was the Lord would send like pieces of bread from heaven to fall down on them, and. I mean, That's obviously, pre- it, it only it, it, it does most make li- sense that it's most a likely it Lord didn't of the even happen. Yeah, they most likely didn't happen. Magic bread. Yeah, I would give it like 50 50 best. <laughs> there's a chapter. I, I love that there's a chapter in the Bible called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and we just accept it. Like, like, yeah. like, 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 like that's okay. Wait, what? Because that's never, what it was. It was, it was just food falling from You don't heaven. know about the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs movie and, and children's book that's very popular? Sylvia oh, Platt, a sequel. maybe? Huh? Sylvia Platt, is she the author? I don't know I'm not the sure. author. It's a joke. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I remember like I would get so hungry during church that like when they would teach us about manna, I'd be like, I imagined honey buns. Like, and yeah. I thought like, man, a ton. You didn't like honey buns? I kind of white trash, if I'm being honest. Oh well, I loved honey buns. I always, I always found them to be below me. Okay, well, fuck you then. The yeah. the, the honey buns are good. 
They're a high quality gas station snack. And I'm I more of a zebra. Those... I'm more of a zebra cake kind of guy. Only the yeah, best. Pinky up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking zebra cakes. Couple ho hos, you know. I'm not gonna be some low. Class. I can't rip you. Actually, the zebra cakes are better than than honey buns. They're fucking good. Like Tasty cakes honey are buns. not national, but they're better than anything Hostess has. Raisin, I like the raisin cream pies. Anything with raisins. Ew. Raisin cream There's pies? like two types of people. Yeah. Wait, how, how are we? How do we feel about raisins here? Are we all I love raisins? raisins. I like. I, I like. I, I like rice pudding because it has raisins in it. I, I, like, oatmeal, I like oatmeal raisin cookies. You know like, what? Raisins are gross, but I'm so jealous of you because every time there were like kids eating lunch or people getting a Halloween candy or whatever, you were probably the kid that everybody gave their nasty fucking raisins to. You were just I mean, look, I like raisins, but I want Snickers. Like, like, oh, like, like, right. like I'm not a madman. <laughs> right, right. I'm with Kyle. Yeah, no, raisins are a great addition to trail mix, cookies, uh, chocolate, rice pudding, chocolate. Yeah, raisins are a great little mm, variety. I like the yogurt ones too. The little white ones are covered with the yogurt. That shit's good. Anything the, raisin. Uh, I'm no. looking for consistency. Like, it, you know, it breaks up something that's otherwise homogeneous. And in, in I like raisins feel. before before they hate crime them when they're grapes. Mm -hmm. Raisins are, are a decent snack. They're fine. They taste good. But when you bring a raisin into the dessert realm, it's just it's it's lowering the quality. Do you I, remember the I don't California want raisins, raisins in a cookie? Yeah. You remember the yeah. little figures? Yeah. You know what doesn't get enough attention? Craisins. Kind of racist. They weren't craisins. That racist. I can't craisins? remember what craisins taste. Those like. are cranberry raisins. They take cranberries and and shoot them with the same ray. They they shoot the grapes with to make raisins and they make craisins. And they're uh, like a tangy raisin. Tangy raisins. They're kind of oh. dark red. If if you put uh, raisins on peanut butter on celery, it's called ants on a log. Yep. If you put craisins mm -hmm. with peanut, it's called fire ants on a log. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. for the risky diner. Yeah, who, who wants something a little more, you know, cosmopolitan <laughs> in their mouth? Yeah, no, ra raisins, they ruin cookies, they ruin desserts. True. They are a decent snack, but they are not, they are, they cannot stand side by side by a chocolate chip. The to worst, even say so is a ridiculous. And the worst thing about raisins is sometimes they're, disguised as chocolate chips where sometimes you get a cookie mm -hmm. or a muffin or something like oh this is about to be awesome and you take a bite into it it's something <laughs> raisin. oh my god that just ruins your day i like i like raisin bran anything oh raisin. man the oh, raisins yeah. are the best part of raisin bran yeah they, they cover those it's in, that in like prisons yeah i like them i got a big like thing of raisins i put them in everything that's hmm. shocking i didn't i haven't had a raisin in years they're great <laughs> You're missing they're not out. bad. Good for they're digestion. Good. Like simple carbs. Mix them with your cereal, with your cream of wheat, your cream of rice, all that nonsense. No, I just need. I've a heard bananas pound are about of to get wiped out from the planet. Are you guys familiar with this? Oh, not. What? All right, that can't so, be true. I need them. Apparently, back in the day, I don't know when. I'm going to say 1860 because I vaguely remember. Oh that. my God, you're so off. There was a different kind of banana that was like the popular sort of like dominant banana. And it was a little bit better. I, I saw a guy on YouTube taste one and he's like, I think it's better. This is a better banana. But I don't know if I'm just saying that because I'm primed to believe it's better. <laughs> I interpreted that as it might be a little better. When we eat artificial banana flavor, like some sort of banana flavored whatever, they are not modeling the current banana. They're modeling the old one. Oh. You've probably seen bananas of all sorts of shapes and sizes and varieties blue ones red ones etc the popular yellow one we have is actually this the successor to the first banana bananas are made in a monoculture which means every tree every plant etc is just like the one next to it there's no variety mm -hmm. in it and when this virus fungus whatever it is that destroys crops went across they developed a new banana the one that you're used to and it replaced all the bananas that were existing because it was resistant to this plague, I'll call it. Anyway, there's a new plague, and it's knocking out the bananas that you're used to. We're hoping the next bananas are an upgrade, not a downgrade. So oh, what no. are the, I, I'm looking at the 10 types of bananas here, and their names are all real dumb, so I'm not going to go into it. But I know about the plantain. That was the only other banana I knew about. It. There's like 10 here. The I want Clavendish is the one we're used to. Zach just posted something similar to humans. Ban bananas are facing a pandemic. Nearly all the bananas sold globally are just one kind called the Clavendish, which is susceptible to a deadly fungus called tropical race four or Panama disease. If not stopped, 
Tropical Race 4 could wipe out the $25 billion banana industry. The way I heard it is it is going to wipe out the $25 billion. Like there's nothing that can stop it. There's no way we can prevent it. It's just on its way and you can expect it in the next like four or five years. What I interpreted, given that a $25 billion industry is pretty important, is they'll probably just replant with something new. There's the these apple bananas that I'm looking at seem to be the sweeter of the bananas. I'm oh, yeah. going to go I, to I'm that. good with our yellow ones. This is devastating. No, what how would you feel if there was a tastier but like red banana? I would switch to it. Yeah, if it, if it tasted better, I would. I've never even heard of a red banana. I've seen and those. We would hunt ones. down those yellow bananas and we would Infect exterminate them, them one by one. Race four. Bri- you, you've got to. Well, I can't do a Nazi's joke this close to the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I have a whole thing about purity and it was the purity a- of the bananas. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, look that, at this. Okay, b- blue Java. That looks like a tasty banana. I'd like that to looks try ma- that. That's a cartoon banana. That can't be real. So it, the apple banana be looked like our current bananas. I was really hoping it would look different, like the blue Java or the red banana. It's shorter if, and fatter. If people look at this, the Clavendish in the top left is our current one. The apple banana is in the bottom right, and I can barely tell the difference. I think it's just a bad picture because the apple banana I saw was shorter and much fatter. The Gros Michel banana, which is kind of bottom center, was the original banana that's been wiped out that supposedly is the model for all our artificial banana it, flavors. If that Gros Michel variety is the one that's responsible for artificial banana flavor, it tastes like ass. Artificial banana is the worst fucking flavor. It's hor- and I love bananas. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Hey, I don't artificial know, I- banana? Oh, it's t- oh. Have you ever had a banana runt? I mean, that's literally what I was thinking of. It's I would rather very good. die. They're good. I would suck a banana runt before Kyle's new cum enhancing flavor. You guys are insane. Pina camelata. <laughs> yeah, pina camelata. Um, yeah, that's probably enough of that. Yeah. Um, Destiny, thank you for coming on so much. I had a good time with you. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to talk about the serious issues tonight. For sure. Get to the bottom <laughs> of some, some core uh, bananas. <laughs> Thank bananas fitness yeah um <laughs> come all those things is there anything mm. you want to plug or promote or mention or send people to uh no my youtube is uh destiny my twitch is destiny that's about it all Check right all, well, right, all of our uh links are down below this is your last chance to get the hats and scarves uh get your cum pills while you can be sure to stock up uh my america's card room referral code is raf dash m o g h all right pka 575